Welcome, welcome, everybody. I am Lauren McLaughlin, along with Dominic Catalano, here at the 2021 APP Tours second stop, the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. It is Sunday, the final day of our tournament here in Delray Beach, Florida, and it is Pro Mixed Doubles Day, Dom. We have had an absolutely fantastic weekend here so far starting off the tournament thursday with our pro singles day we had all amateur events on friday so we were off the live stream and then yesterday we had our men's and women's doubles day which was an absolutely fantastic display of athleticism and some of the best pickleball that you can see anywhere in the world dom it was a fantastic time have you have you been enjoying the tournament so far? Yes, we've had some incredible matches all around, uh, especially here for us on Championship Court. And uh, we're about to get another good one uh, on Championship Court right now with Anna Lee Waters and J.W. Johnson taking on Corinne Carr and Dikel Barr. Um, Excellent. Anna Lee and J.W. just defeated Mom Lee Waters and Kyle Yates. 11-3, 11-3, so to reach this point, this is a third round match, um, kind of cruising so far, um, but I think some of these matches now are going to, uh, they'll, they'll get a little longer as we go on. Absolutely, and it's going to be a fabulous day of mixed doubles all day today. We have two uh, streams, two courts available to watch as we have the whole weekend, uh, however, if you missed it yesterday, as we concluded our amazing day of men's and women's doubles, we're going to give you guys a little quick recap of how yesterday went. What an amazing little highlight video there put together by our very own Steve Taylor. What a fabulous day we had Saturday, yesterday. It is uh, cool again this morning here. Uh, the wind is, you know, a little breezy, nothing crazy yet, but uh, good cloud cover. And it's a little cooler, so it'll probably be really nice for the players as they get going uh, before it warms up a little bit here today. Just want to remind everybody, uh, our final is currently scheduled for 5 p.m. Eastern today. Of course, uh, like every day, it'll depend how the bracket plays out, how long it takes, um, you know, whether matches go to three games, quick two games, etc. So uh, as of now, it is planned for 5 p.m. Eastern this evening for our mixed pro doubles gold medal match. So keep that in mind today. Hopefully you're watching all day, though. 
And we just want to remind everyone, this is just our second stop here of the 2021 APP Tour. So many more amazing tournaments to go still Dom this year. Let's take a very quick look at our tour schedule, highlight just a couple. We are headed to Cincinnati next, May 13th through the 16th. An amazing group of people there. Headed to Indianapolis next in June, June 4th through the 6th. And then we head to SoCal for our Los Angeles Open and SoCal Classic. I believe all four of those tournaments are currently open for registration on pickleballtournaments.com, the official software of the APP Tour ran by Melissa McCurley. So definitely go to apptour.org to check out all of the stops for the rest of this year and uh, mark down on your calendar which ones you're gonna be joining us at because we would love to see you guys. I know we love having you guys watch online, uh, but if you can be there in person, either playing or just watching some of this amazing pickleball, we love to meet you guys and see everyone in person. Come say hi. Take Come a selfie hi. with us. Absolutely. I did get asked to take one picture, Dom, this weekend. So it's one? it's up from nice. zero, and I'm, nice. I'm uh, slowly progressing. <laughs> Beautiful. We have uh, a really cool new software that we also wanted to just remind you guys about. It is livepickleball.com. If you go to livepickleball.com, you can sign up for free, completely free. If you have a favorite player or someone that you're just like, oh, I just want to watch this person, when are they going to play? You can get notifications about when that favorite player is being live streamed. Right, like on like Saturday or mm -hmm. on, no, what was it? Was it uh, Friday? If I wanted to watch Kyle Solinko play, exactly. I could just type in his name yes. and go follow him around to the courts I mean like when he played mixed doubles on Friday. Yeah. You, I could you have done that. You had to get notified because it, he was out so quickly. Oh, so, but it would have been early. That you would have missed it. It would have been it. real early. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, I mean, uh, yes, that's a great example, Dom. But okay. You don't want to miss right. your favorite player. No. So we're going to get back to the action here, though, on center court, guys. As Dom mentioned before, our very first match of the day, we have Anna Lee Waters and J.W. Johnson. Looks like they're going to be on the near side court to start us off here in game one. They are taking on Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr. Should be a really great match. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us, everybody. Of course, we're streaming on Facebook and YouTube, so you can watch either of our courts on either of those platforms we have both the streams on both facebook and youtube shout out to morgan evans and ari shanock who are our commentators for court two but we're into the action here for pro mixed doubles day That's Ooh, a good shot by nice. J.W. Johnson holding that. This is a treat for all you guys. This is the first tournament that Anna Lee Waters and J.W. Johnson are playing together. So um, this could be a, a team for the future that they play a lot together. They do live in the same area, practice and play a lot together. Um, so this would be a very good young team. And they've already won first two rounds, and this is round three. Great job by Barr. Annalie Waters with that forehand right down the line, and that was going to stay in. That was going to be mm -hmm. on the line, Dom. So Barr made the good decision to defend that shot, and they got the side out. So the game plan early here for Waters and Johnson is to isolate Corinne Carr and then eventually every once in a while go behind Barr. We'll see how long this kind of sticks to that game plan. Oh, <laughs> he's just too he's big. He's so big. Sometimes yeah. it's like you can't <coughs> avoid him, but an amazing uh, poach attack there by Dekel Barr. Puts them up 2-1-1 one, one here in game one as we kick off. That's a good shot there from Annalie Waters going behind Barr. 
got him reaching. Good spot. What's really funny is Corinne's got that two-handed backhand, you know, ready to go. And Deckel's base, they're basically right kind of in front of each other as he reached over and ultimately took that with his forehand. We should also mention on our court, too, we have another pro mixed doubles match going on. Altoff Merchant and Leia Jansen are taking on Martina Coakley and Rob Nunnery currently. So Barr's just intimidating there for J.W. Johnson by standing in the middle. And then you think you can go behind him, and Barr will actually jump the kitchen line there and attempt to Ernie that. Mm. Yeah, got away with that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, I think this is our youngest pro mix team right here. Annalie Waters, just 14 years old. J.W. Johnson, 18. Oh, good leave. That's a very good decision. That's an easily playable ball by Annalie Waters, but decides to let that go, and it sails out by a couple feet. Now we're all even. You get a final from that court over there? I believe Martina Coakley and Rob Nunnery have prevailed. They have. They are victorious. Oh, that's yeah. a great move by J.W. Johnson. Jumping the kitchen line and getting that Ernie. A little smile on his face and everything. You don't see much of that out of J.W. Pretty stoic. He, he is pretty, pretty neutral. Not an emotional player at all for the most part. Good hands there by Barr with that little mini onslaught from J.W. Johnson, neutralizing it and getting the side out. Three, oh, missed serve return there by Johnson. Quick point there for Barr and Carr. Mm, clips the net on that and sails long. Four, five, two, Corinne Carr serving. And look where Deckel's at, Lauren. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's just a nice backhand flick from J.W. Johnson. This is great to see. Usually, J.W.'s very quiet, timid, no smile, no emotion. Seems like Anna Lee's kind of bringing out the fun in JW <laughs> this exactly. match. Exactly. Anna Lee's always got a smile. She's a competitor, but she's always kind of smiling. It seems like she's bringing it out in JW. They're having some fun out here. Obviously, they won their first two matches. Mm -hmm. Puts a smile on your face. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Annalise is like, I don't care how big you are. <laughs> I'm Jekyll, not afraid of you. I am not afraid of you.
I love it. At 14 and 18 and having a game plan and sticking mm-hmm. to it, I mean, they are experience-wise, I mean, this is incredible to see them just execute their game plan to perfection right now so far. Not go away from it. Stay with it. It's great to see. Yeah, you see Barr, like you mentioned, mm-hmm. you know, firmly planted right in the center of the court. It does leave him slightly vulnerable down the line, which Johnson and Waters are aware of, and that's why, you know, they keep pulling him out wide there. Mm. And uh, it, he has mm-hmm. got caught a couple times. He yeah. gets pulled out wide, and then it opens mm-hmm. up the middle, or he's not able to come back and cover. And they're definitely... Keeping him honest. We have a side out here for Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr. Four, seven, two here in game one. Might not have been the time to pull the trigger there from Annalie Waters. She knows it as soon as she hit it. But still doing a good job of executing their game plan. Yep, Bar and Carr kind of had a couple really good points early on in this game. And uh, kind of went away from a little mm-hmm. as, as Waters and Johnson kind of got into a bit of a groove. And now it seems... Uh, Car and Bar have settled in a little bit. Got a couple points there on that serve, bringing it within one. J.W. Johnson serving now, several yeah. times Dom he's he's got that forehand just you know loaded up there he's gotten the shot he just hasn't executed it yep oh JW great job of anticipating and staying with that gives him a 9-6 lead here in game one Oh, JW just closing off that middle. Great point. Good execution. And we got a timeout from Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr at 10-6. So, I'm, Dom, what's your suggestion when we're talking about Corinne Carr, Dekel Barr? What do they need to do? The, it, it seems like they've had some missed opportunities execution-wise. Um, you know, Waters and... Johnson, real like you mentioned, you know, sticking to their game plan. They're really kind of grooving right now. What kind of adjustment do Corinne and Dekel need to make? I, I don't think it's a major adjustment. Um, there's a couple that um, Barr has gotten that he's wanted and he's just kind of missed. And I think just execution on his part. He's trying to do everything he can to insert himself. But again, you have to tip your cap to J.W. Johnson and Annalie Waters who are almost eliminating him from play for the mm-hmm. most part. But when they do see him kind of creep over a little bit, they'll keep him honest mm-hmm. and push him to the side um, and just keep him there. 
Um, so it's to more make just sure it's really some missed opportunities is more probably what's made the difference. Here. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right. Well, we're back from this timeout, and we have a game point here in game one on Annalie Waters' paddle. See if they can get the job done here. See both Johnson and Barr hugging that middle, wanting to come in, get that. Uh. Oh. Well, there it is. You know, he Barr had it. He had exactly yeah. what he wanted. And yeah. once again, just wasn't able to execute it quite the way he wanted. So game one goes to Johnson and Waters. We're going to take a very quick break, guys. We'll be right back for game two. Well, we'll see you later, Irina. Bye, Natalie. I got it. Man. Thanks, Arena. And that's how you did it, Patrick. Ah, rip it. Take a little cocktail. Thank you. Oof. We need a new sound guy. Are you kidding me? Oh. I got some. Enjoy. Everyone here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center, which has been transformed into three beautiful pickleball courts, two of which are being streamed simultaneous right, right now from Boxcar Productions. You can find it on Facebook mm. or YouTube. Mm. Woo woo. All right, game two, Corinne Carr, Dekel Barr on the near side now after an end change. Annalie Waters, J.W. Johnson on the far side. Yeah, Barr just seems like, I mean, it's not, it's just a little off. He's mm -hmm. just a little off right now. Not completely on his game at the moment. And they've played one match. J.W. Johnson and Annalie Waters have played two. Wow, I that think was that ball was wide. JW did not it. call it. I mean, it was clearly wide. I saw from here. I was like, what? Oh, he's okay. Yeah. I think he knew it. I think he knows it, Dom. I mean, you know, after that point, he pointed at the sideline like, why did I play that? <laughs> We've seen that a couple times this weekend. That's too good from J.W. Johnson. Good setup and good finish. Bar so long, that reach right there. It's incredible. He's getting that ball you know, two, three feet from the net. A little skip off that w kitchen line, it looks like. Yeah, JW got jammed up a little bit. One, one, one. Ah, nice hit. job by Carr. Yeah, and Annalie and JW end up hitting end of paddles as they both went for that ball. A little too much. A little too much there from Barr. I think, I mean, I'd like to see him, you know, he's big, he's intimidating, of course, kind of like still stay planted in the middle, but kind of 
you know, let Corinne take those a little bit more when it's, you know, just an easy dink shot or something, and he doesn't need to be overextending himself so much to that side unless it's more, you know, something he can really put away. Without a doubt. All right, so Barr inserting himself in a way that he did not in game one um, with a more of a power game and attempt at the beginning of game two here. So we'll see how long that lasts and uh, if it's going to work. And so far it has. Oh, oh. nice little inside out by Barr right into that back corner. Catches Johnson off guard. One, four, two, water serving. <gasps> wow. I can't believe he got that job. <laughs> oh. So Barr is obviously a big man <laughs> and covers a lot of court, but JW's not as big, but covers just as much court with his athleticism mm -hmm. um, and then his power, too. He hits a very heavy ball just like Barr, so it makes it very difficult. That's a great job there. <laughs> Good hands from the 18-year-old JW Johnson. Nice job by Carr. Pulls the trigger on that right up to Annalie's right shoulder area. Jams her up a little bit there. Gets the side out. 4-3-1. Oh no. That's a good attack from Corinne Carr there. Haven't seen much of that today, but uh, she gets on the offensive right there. Attacks at J.W. Johnson and end up with the point there to double up their lead. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Good time out here from Waters and Johnson, 7-3 lead for Barr and Carr. All right, everybody. I'm Lauren McLaughlin along with Dominic Catalano here on our championship court one. We, of course, are streaming two championship courts here in our stadium and uh, you can check out either of those streams on Facebook or YouTube at the exact same time. I'm Put them up on two TVs. I'm not being rude looking at my phone. Yeah, we're looking at the camera. bracket. We're I'm trying to see bracket. what's going on. <laughs> trying to see uh, what's I, we see over on our championship court two, Zane Navratil and Andrea Coop are playing uh, Sari Lee and Scott Fiegelman. Excellent. So that is on our court two stream right now currently but right here on championship court one we are in the middle of game two we are coming back from a timeout we have corinne carr about to serve along with her partner dekel Barr, playing against annalee waters and jw johnson Shit. who won game one so Barr and carr looking to take us to a game three this is a good shot of corinne carr and her app visor it is Look quite good. beautiful. <sighs> mm, a little fire fight yep. between the ladies there. Corinne Carr comes out on top there. Out to a five point lead here in game two. Oh. 
There's that little high pitch come on from Annalee Waters. Got Mom Lee Waters courtside here, watching intently. That's two big uh, points there for a side out for J.W. Johnson and Anna Lee Waters. See if they can put a run together here and get back in this game too. See, I think that was what made them successful in game one was actually going behind bar every once in a while, and it seems like they've gone away from that a little mm -hmm. bit this game just to keep him honest and change the pace up. Oh, hey, Karim Carr. <laughs> oh, oh and, no. and then that <laughs> one. <laughs> what a get on that overhead smash from J.W. Johnson, though. That's why you don't quit, Dom. You don't quit till the point is over. Oh, that was very close. But it is called out by Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr. So 5-8-2. That's a great return by Barr on a good serve from Annalie Waters. 5-1 here in game two. If Carr and Barr win this game two, we will be going to a game three. Great spot there by Barr. Tough ball there for Annalie Waters to try and go cross court on, cross court on to Barr. I'd rather her just flatten that out to Corinne and maybe go on the next one. That's a much better ball there. Ooh. Oh no. <laughs> Bar First with time, yeah. bar has been a little fired up this yeah. match. With the ATP on the roll dink from Anna Lee Waters. Puts them at game point here. They are looking to go to a game three. Oh. <laughs> no, no. Anna Lee has other they thoughts. Well, they have one more shot still down, at least on this serve. Dekel Bar for our second game point opportunity. And there it is. Game two going to Dekel Bar and Corinne Carr. So we'll be going to a game three and uh, they will switch ends at six here in our game three. So it'll be interesting, Dom. We've both on singles day on Thursday and men's and women's doubles yesterday. One, s one side of the court certainly seemed to have a bit of an advantage throughout the day mm -hmm. uh, as we watched people sort of switch ends and play differently with the wind condition or whatever the case may be. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll, we'll see if that rings true today so far. So far um, in our first match it has. So mm -hmm. the team on the near side has won both uh, games so far. So we'll see. Uh, Anna Lee Waters and J.W. Johnson will start on the near side, but mm -hmm. uh, Barr and Carr will end up on this side. So we'll see how it kind of plays out in the beginning of this third game. Absolutely. And, of course, uh, we saw someone ask on the live stream, we will be live streaming the finals today. Uh, we will have every single match that we can bring you guys all the way to our gold medal match today here on our live stream. So currently that's scheduled for 5 p.m. Eastern time here in Florida. Um, again, if the bracket goes really long or there's a lot of game threes, uh, it might be a little later, but fear not. We will have it whenever it ends up being played uh, right here, either on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, we will have it here on Championship Court 1. But right now, we are in the middle of a round three mixed pro doubles match here between Anna Lee Waters and J.W. Johnson, who will be on our near side, as Dom mentioned, to start off game three. Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr will be on our far side. They will switch ends at six. And ultimately, we will see who is moving on in our winner's bracket. 
at the conclusion of this game three. All right, here we go. Waters starting us off, 0-0-2. Zero, zero, A little too much there from J.W. Johnson on the reach. A good reset there. Bar and car out to a 1-0-2 lead here. That's a good jump from Barr. And he's looking for that looking for his opponents to reset that and go to his side and he's looking to jump and grab that works there 202 oh, oh wow grip and rip there from Annalie Waters on the high ball, she goes cross court for the winner to get a good, a big side out there. And we're at 0 2 1. Oh, she does the same exact thing. Like an instant replay right there. And putting Johnson and Waters on the board. One, two, one. Here is where in the early stages of game three. Oh, a little clip off the net from Annalie Waters. Corinne Carr couldn't pull her paddle down. And we're all squared away here at two. Great decision by Barr, ultimately deciding to go right back at J.W. Johnson there instead of trying to find a little bit of that open court on the right side. Definitely kind of knocked him back <laughs> off balance and ultimately uh, led to that pop-up and put away. It's just too hard there for Anna Lee to try and go middle when you have Barr sitting there at 6-4, clogging up that hole. We already have quite a few people in our stands here in, in the stadium. They are getting ready and settling in to an amazing day of mixed doubles ahead of them with three championship courts to watch here in our stadium. What more could you want, Dom? Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Deckel does an amazing job doing a little screeching halt before taking out our ref. But nice Ernie there. And brings us to 4 2 1. Corinne wants that one back. That's a good setup there. She doesn't miss that very often. Again, that presence of Deco Barr in, her, in the middle, just causing J.W. Johnson to try and be too perfect with that and ends up in the net. Ooh, 
some quick hands, a little right. firefights, and that brings Corinne Carr and Dekel Bar to six first. So the end change will happen now. You can grab a little drink, take a moment. Um, it seems Dekel's kind of taken over here in game three where he wasn't executing necessarily as well in game one, Dom. And now it seems sort of all the things he was trying to do in game one, he's eight, he's doing now. The execution's there now here in game three, and you're kind of seeing, like we mentioned, we you know, the near side has been playing, or at least the teams on the near side have both won their matches, but now, mm -hmm. you know, it seems Corinne Carr and Barr have been able to switch the script on that a little bit, and they came out ahead on the far side, and now they're... Here on the near side, we'll see if they're able to keep this run going. We're going to get back into the action here in game three after changing ends. And it is 6-2-2. Two, two. Bar serving. Again, that pressure of Bar sitting in the middle gets J.W. Johnson dump a ball in the net. That's twice this game for two points and we're at 7-2-2. Two, two. Oh, oh my. <laughs> I think he tried to go for an Ernie and mm -hmm. tri tripped a little. Just, just wide there. That's a good shot though from Corinne Carr and call that, that's a 7-2 shot. You're up 7-2 right there. Mm -hmm. You try it, if it works, you're up 8-2, it doesn't, you're still up 7-2. Oh. oh. <laughs> Oh my God, Aww. Corinne Carr almost lost a head. <laughs> <laughs> she literally had to physically kind of get out of the way of that. Someone asking where Mr. Barr is from. He's from Israel. He still uh, does spend, I think, about half of the year there and half of the year in the States. I don't think he has a dedicated home here in the States. Um, I know he's in Florida a lot. Mm -hmm. He's down by travels, us a lot. Travels some. So I would probably say Florida is maybe where he's most. based the most in the States when yes. he's not in Israel. Yes. Just seeing a different player here um, from bar from game one into game two and three here. I mean, Corinne Carr might still be rattled a little bit from when Deckel side-checked her <laughs> out of the way for the that hip, overhead. The hip check and almost <laughs> losing her head. Quick side out there for Waters and Johnson. Luckily with no more points on the board for Carr and Barr. So Waters and Johnson going to hope to get a little something going themselves here in game three to keep it alive. Oh, Corinne is so good at that. Oh, that's mm. a nice cross-court wow. angle there from Annalie Waters. After the firefight, and Corinne Carr able to check that up and started a, a reset there. Annalie with the cross-court winner. Oh, that's too good from Annalie Waters stepping in. <laughs> Lauren over here, you guys can't see it, just putting her arms in the air going, what, what? That's just that's too Come good. On. That's I mean. too good. And five seven one still on first server. Ooh. Mm. They're closing the gap here a little, putting the pressure on for sure. That that seven two lead is now just a two point lead. Five seven two. Water serving. Great job by Corinne Carr covering for Barr after that Ernie that clipped the net. And then ultimately good eye letting that one go with the side out here. It's seven five one bar serving. Oh, 
Deco realizes that singles was on Thursday, right? <laughs> <laughs> because he went from sideline to sideline mm-hmm. on that last point. I don't know. I don't <laughs> maybe no one told him, Dom. <laughs> he had forgotten. He almost did forget because he did almost rip Corinne's head off with a forehand. Dom, someone was asking if J.W. Johnson has a sponsor. So, yes, J.W. Johnson, the whole Johnson family, Julie Johnson, J.W. Julia's mom, J.W. Johnson, and Georgia Johnson, who is J.W.'s sister, are all sponsored by Power Balance. You notice on his shirt. Oh, and we have a match point here, Lauren. We sure do. So it looks like uh, I'm not sure we can stick to our early hypothesis that the near side of the court is going to be the advantage because Barr and Carr have been on the advantage on both sides here in game three. Waters and Johnson not too far behind, but they've been playing catch up the whole time. Current car has a second match point here. And that'll do it yep. with that long serve return, unfortunately, from J.W. Johnson. They will drop down into our consolation bracket as Curran Carr and Dekel Barr move on. Dom is going to be down in the studio chatting with Barr and Carr right after this. And then we'll have another fantastic pro mixed doubles match coming up after that. Don't go anywhere, guys. strike just right until the ball sings until the other guy blinks until the court's clear and the sun sets until you see it in your sleep and wake up swinging go again till you can't miss until you can't lose go again and again for over 40 years, Papico Sports Surfaces has been providing expert service and supplies for any court surface, from resurfacing to building from the ground up. The growth of pickleball is doubling every year. Court equipment for private residences, court seating, and court maintenance from tennis, basketball, tracks, and now pickleball. We're actually doing indoor, private, um, public facilities. There's, there's really no limit to what people are converting now. Official court surface of the APP Delray Beach Pickleball Open. PapicoSportsSurfaces.com. So this is one of my favorite paddles, the V530 Power. It's a great paddle. It's perfect for the transition when you're a tennis player. One of the features that is so good about it is the fact that it's so close to a tennis racket in terms of shape. It's not circular, as you can see. It's more rectangular a bit. For me, it was a, um, a game changer for my serve, for just so much power generated because it's a bit heavier in the head. And then when I go um, to the net, I have a good good balance here and I can be aggressive. It's so good as well for resets and for dinking, but mostly to put away the ball, you know, to create a lot of power so it's just a perfect product. We're all pretty obsessed with pickleball. We want to grow pickleball into all areas of the country. When you're in person, they can actually see you and they can analyze what you're doing wrong and, you know, correct it right on the spot. We do a pre-video and a post-video so that you can actually see yourself practicing something and put it into action. It's just internally very rewarding. It's money well spent and if you want to get better, you have to do this. Pickleball is an easy game to play, but it's a difficult game to master. There's so much you can learn from the camp, the correct way to hit a dink, the volley, the serve. 
each skill that we develop within the students' games is then implemented into life play. They can take home easy, simple ways to remember how to execute a shot. Everyone is going to have a great time. It's going to be well worth their while. All right, guys, I am here in studio for the first time today with Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr. I'm trying, Dak. I'm trying. I'm trying. Getting there. We're getting there, right? Congratulations on your win. Uh, it's your second match of the day. Um, was their third match of the day. Going into that match, playing against two teenagers, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, and you guys are not old, but uh, do they make you feel old when you're playing against two young, guy, young guns like that? Uh, to be honest, I kind of <laughs> forgot JW was so young, too. I know, right? But, so thank you for <laughs> making me feel so old. <laughs> right, exactly, exactly. But no, going against two players like that, um, fiery, um, very athletic, but uh, they may be 18 and 14, but two of the top players in this tournament right now. What's your game plan going in against them? Um, we kind of changed it after the, the first game. Um, Annalie definitely really loves her angles, mm -hmm. so we tried to take that away a little bit more. And mm -hmm. Deckel is massive on the court <laughs> so he you know got involved and uh, made his presence known a little bit more and I think I mean I've been on the receiving end of that and it is intimidating <laughs> yeah, and, and he did make his presence known especially yes. you know, after game one deck it seemed like it wasn't that you were off but there were a couple that you had that you just mm -hmm. didn't finish but in game two and game three that wasn't the case and especially one point where Corinne almost lost her head <laughs> on a ball that you put away. So we did notice that, but uh, no, it, seemed, no, it, seemed, <laughs> it seemed like you kind of uh, got in your groove in game two and three. Yeah, uh, a little off shots in, the, in game one, and they played really well, both of them. Uh, mm -hmm. They were very aggressive and uh, really, really fast hands, uh, and at least with some really great angles. Uh, so yeah, like Corinne said, we tried to give them less angles, which also helps me get more involved. Um, and yeah, it worked. So. Yeah, and uh, it, it was, a, they seemed to have a game plan, uh, mm -hmm. trying to go to Ukraine as much as possible, um, and then every once she in a while. She was a wall over there. Yeah, and, and it's just, it, it seemed like, you know, you can handle that. You know that. You've, you've been in that situation before. My whole pick of you know, all playing with, <laughs> playing with Simone so many years, uh -huh. it was always that way, but... Uh, you know, it just seemed like, oh, well, it was always Simone, 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 but it's like, okay, well, Corinne gets 90% of the balls. And it seemed like that was the case in this match, too, where they were trying to single you out and then ev eventually try and go backdoor on you, Deck, uh, to keep you honest. But you guys figured that out after the first game and uh, kind of cruised away within game two and three. Um, so congratulations. Thank, Thank you. Um, you guys are moving on. So third round. Um, hopefully we'll get you guys back here in the booth again. So. So. Get a little rest, and uh, we'll get you guys back in here later on. All right. Thanks, Dom. Thank We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back with our next match. I was playing eight days a week, playing tournaments all over the place. On June 8th of this year, I had a heart attack. I knew that I wanted to get well as fast as I could. I was talking to a friend of mine. He sent me a sample pack of the stack. Now, even a post heart attack, I love being able to compete with the kids. The jigsaw products, I think, are what are allowing me to do that. Anybody that wants to have hydration and endurance, they should be taking these products. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. New Pepo Pickleball Paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Pepo Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long-time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level.
Welcome back, everyone, to beautiful Delray Beach, Florida, here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center. I am Lauren McLaughlin, here with the APP Tour on our second stop. We have another fantastic pro mixed doubles match coming up right now. It is going to be Steve Deacon and Catherine Parentau versus Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt. We're going to get right into the action here, guys. Ready to get going here on Championship Court 1. Of course, we are streaming two courts at the exact same time. Morgan Evans and Ari Shanock are our commentators for Court Number 2, where we currently have a senior pro mixed doubles match going on over there. We're going to get going here. Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt are going to be on the near side of the court to start. Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon. On the far side, Hewitt starts us off, 0, zero 2 one zero, 2 Ooh. Parento tries to let that go. Couldn't get her paddle out of the way. A quick two zero two 2 here starting us off. Hewitt still serving. Parental starting off their serve, zero two one. Mm, bit of a miss hit it sounded like off of Deacon's paddle on that one. Parento quickly loses the sweatshirt. Deacon serving here, zero two two. leave. Dominic Catalano, of course, with me as always here. And uh, we're seeing a little, uh, I know a lot of times people in mixed doubles, they stack differently, Dom, depending kind of what the strategy is. Mm -hmm. Nice overhead by Deacon. We're seeing Ansbury and Parentau going head to head here, the way they're currently stacking. We'll see if uh, they mix it up at all as they're going. Well, the reason being is because of uh, we got the odd guy on the court, which is Rafa Hewitt. He's left-handed, so mm -hmm. Ansbury's going to play more of the left, Rafa the right, because of uh, keeping their forehands in the middle. Mm -hmm. So it will put that matchup of ooh, Catherine Parento and Sarah Ansbury head-to-head -head more often than not. Do you think Deacon and Parenteau will will switch it up at all to try and change it or just kind of no, go I go straight up to start yeah, and see how yeah, it goes? Yeah, I, I think they're going to play more head-to-head -head and see how it mm -hmm. goes. Um, I do not think that Sarah is going to shy away from, like we were right here, sure. going away from Deacon. She's going to play her game. That's what's nice, though, is that Sarah will ab be able to attempt that Ernie mm -hmm. and know that Rafa's forehand is protecting middle there. So it almost gives her a sense of protection, having his forehand in the middle there. Again, one of the best in the game right here at dinking, Sarah Ansbury. Oh, what a great shot from Catherine Parento. Going left shoulder on Ansbury and getting it down the line. Two, three, one. Here in game one of this Pro Mix Doubles match. 
Ooh, Deacon just Ansbury popping that up just a little too much. Deacon taking full advantage. This is just a round three matchup again, just like we had our last match. And we're tied up here at threes after a, a quick lead from Ansbury and Hewitt. Yep. But uh, Deacon and Parental have come back now. Both of these teams had tough last round matches. Parento and Deacon took down Becky Ryan and Brendan Long, 11-9, 11-8. And Ansbury and Hewitt took down Andrea Coop and Zane Navratil, 4-11, 11-7, 11-9. Wow. It's a very nice win for Ansbury and Hewitt. Yeah. Rafa tries to go middle on that, which was a good idea, Dom, but mm -hmm. Deacon was ready for it, more than ready, and uh, easily dismissed that, that attempt. And that makes it 5-3. Oh. That's a, mm -hmm. a good little reach in there from Rafa Hewitt. I think kind of catching Deacon and Parento off guard. I don't know if you, did you mention? Because I, I came in late because I was running for my interview. That, and that they're that both medal winners? Is that where yeah, you're? That, that, is, uh, that is correct. Oh, I already knew what you yeah, were going to say. You didn't even have to say it, Dom. We're so connected. Sweet. I love it. <laughs> yes. Uh, Steve Deacon, bronze medal winner in men's doubles yesterday along with Dekel Barr. And Catherine Parento, a gold medal winner in women's doubles with Simone Chargin. Wow, the work that Rafa Hewitt just put in on that point, getting three putaways back from Steve Deacon to get back in that point. Great work, Rafa Hewitt. Ooh. It's a nice. Deep serve by Ansbury there. Parento with a bit of a short return kind of setting up that exchange. And it is 5-5-1. Five, five, <laughs> Rafa with that two-handed backhand. Going cross court there, a little fist pump. They take the lead, 6-5 here. I think if they get one more point, we might see a timeout from Deacon and Parento. She looked pretty frustrated after that last point. All right, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't have to take it. An <laughs> awesome thing right there, Sarah Ansbury, just a veteran move. I don't know if anyone caught that, but her serve, she dropped it in the near corner knowing Parento was switching and had to run all the way cross court because of the stack. That's a veteran move from Sarah Ansbury. Oh, wow. clips the net. And it managed to stay in. Now, we saw Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury on championship court to start the day. Mm -hmm. um, and they were playing really well that match. Mm -hmm. They have continued that role here into round three. They are playing very well right now. I mean, Rafa Ooh. has such a bounce in his step right now. It is great to see. I felt it when Catherine Parento just smacked herself with her paddle. Is that what that noise was? I didn't even <laughs> yes. see it. I just heard it. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's going to leave a mark. And there's the timeout. Uh, 
I think perhaps a couple points too late, Dom, but you know, better better late than never. Correct. Um, so it's going to be 9-5, Ansbury and Hewitt up here in game one when we come back from this timeout. Uh, a visibly frustrated Catherine Parenteau. Um, just, you know, a couple unforced errors these last couple points and, you know, shots she, she knows she can make and does most of the time. Just not happening. So um, we'll see if they can just kind of cool off, bring it down a notch. Uh, mentally, just kind of know, you know, it's not done yet. Uh, you know, it's only 9-5. Certainly, bigger deficits have been overcome. So uh, we'll see if this was a good time out and they can kind of stop this run that Hewitt and Ansbury are on. Get a chance to get that score a little closer. Otherwise, Ansbury and Hewitt are on their way to win game one here. Nine five one, back from the action. Back to the action, I meant. Wow! Look at this great ATP defense by Hewitt. Just gets low. Game. Oh, that just took a funky bounce. And that uh, brings us to the conclusion of game one, going to Ansbury and Hewitt. We'll take a very quick break, guys, and we'll be right back for game two. I do feel like... Game two, about to kick off here. Catherine Parentau serving along with Steve Deacon on the near side now for game two against Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt, who took game one 11-5. We'll see if this uh, change of ends fares better for Deacon and Parentau. I mean, I'm we're seeing... Probably one of the most dialed-in teams we've seen early on this morning with Hewitt and Ansbury. Very much so. They are just dialed in, rolling through right now. Oh, Ooh. good leave. That's Someone my fault. asking where uh, where Catherine Parenteau is from. She is from the Montreal area in Quebec, Canada. Quebec. Quebec. Team Canada. Eh? Hey. As is, I mean, Steve Deacon is also from Canada, mm -hmm. but the Vancouver area. So we got a little French Canadian, a little regular Canadian. <laughs> <laughs> is that what we call <laughs> them? Mixed together. They're just, I mean, they're just regular I Canadian. I think they're just Canadian. <laughs> 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 Someone from Canada want to wanna let me know if they're called anything <laughs> else? <laughs> you just called a regular Canadian. Just good old-fashioned Canadian. Oh, oh, they're oh. just... They're just dialed in yeah uh, look at someone's calling the cops on them Ooh. you guys can hear that behind us i hope you can or else that was a bad joke oh all right they needed that break one zero two 
Karen Toad just seems she's a little off this match. Um, I think her confidence has been rattled a little bit, not being able to kind of execute the shot she wants to and normally does quite beautifully. Yeah, I think you're right, you know, Lawrence. A just a little off. Mm -hmm. Now, 9.9 .9 players out of 10 will take Catherine's off day over their game all the time. Oh, I mean. <laughs> I'll take her it. Her worst day yeah. would still just crush my best day ever. <laughs> right, so we'll all take Catherine's off day. But, uh, yeah, she right. She probably isn't happy about it, but. And she had a long day yesterday, too. She did. <laughs> Rafa's like, no, and Sarah's like, I'm playing it. <laughs> it's happening, Rafa. <laughs> oh, but that's good communication because mm -hmm. then Rafa's ready knowing she's playing that. <laughs> Sarah just not getting her feet set and hitting that ball, so... I kind of pulled her away from it. Like we mentioned, Amsbury and Hewitt are just, they've been on fire so far. Both times we've seen them here on championship court one. Oh, nice job by oh. Parento. Oh, that was beautiful. Great recovery. And Sarah just, Sarah Ansbury just trying to do a little too much with that last ball. Do you think, Dom, that that was the right time for Catherine to have pulled that trigger? Yes. Um, she saw Sarah kind of leaning sideline. I just think she needs to get it down a little more. She mm -hmm. hit it too far up into Sarah's wheelhouse. You got to force Sarah to have to hit that from below her waist. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Two, two, one. Nice deep serve right on that baseline. Rafa Hewitt with his two-handed backhand dinks. Great attempt by Deacon. Be, you can see down the replay here. Went for a <laughs> bit between the legs. Almost it almost was a little precarious it there. Was almost a flashbacks. Colin <laughs> flashbacks. S. Nice pick up by Catherine. What is going on <laughs> over here? Rafa Hewitt just all over the court. And the easy one with his feet planted, he ends up missing. Great point, great scramble by Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon just to stay in that point. Yes, you are. Well, I'm here now. All right, we're all squared away here. job there from Deacon going inside out.
four two two. Deacon and Parento. Oh, with a little. Good timeout here from Hewitt and Ansbury. Before this one gets too deep. And you're letting Deacon get too warm. Mm -hmm. Kind of calm him down. And, uh, I mean, so far we're playing into the near near side court, having seeming to be doing a little bit better, which is which is interesting. Dom. I I don't necessarily think it'll play out like that all day because it's not super windy. You know, the sun is shining on the entire stadium, so I don't necessarily think one side versus the other has any sort of advantage per se. But no, it's pretty calm today so far. Um, not very windy. Mm -hmm. It's a little cooler this morning. It's about mid-70s here in Delray Beach, Florida. We say cooler. I've been in Florida too long when I'm saying mid-70s is cool. <laughs> I'm barely surviving. <laughs> Great defense by Steve Deacon, and then good eye by Parento letting that go. And their run continues, 6-2. <gasps> Great job by Deacon. Pulls that forehand right up to Rafa. He was right shoulder and caught him a little off guard. 7-2. Rosemary in the 50s in the mm -hmm. villages? That's way too cold. I don't go outside in the 50s. Oh, no. Wow. Just a little off here yeah. for both Ansbury and Hewitt over the last, like, three and a half to four minutes. And it's got them in a deep mm -hmm. hole here in game two. That's a good side out. They're going to do anything. Got to make damage a damage was yeah. done, though, by I Deacon and Parento. Got to make a little bit of a run here. Oh, that was beautiful. I feel like confident Catherine is, is showing her face again. 2-9-2. Mm -hmm. Ansbury serving here in game two. Oh. Nice job by De I mean, Deacon was playing singles that point, as, mm -hmm. <laughs> as we <laughs> mentioned. Def Hellbar was uh, the last match. But you could hear, even fully over on the right sideline, Catherine said yours to Steve as he, as he was over there. So well played out and great side out. Hewitt was backing up for that ATP defense. Oh, oh he had it, just he hit sure it did. just hit it too hard. Mm -hmm. And we're on a game point here in game two for Deacon and Parento to take us to a game three. Nice. What a beautiful wow. backhand right down the middle put away by Deacon to finish us off here in game two. Let's just say uh, insert Steve Deacon uh -huh. in game two. He kind of took that game over, almost noticing his partner Catherine struggling just a little. Steve inserts himself a little more, takes over, 
and that in turn got Catherine a little more confidence. Mm-hmm. You and could now see it they building are as the game went along. Um, it just kept growing and growing. The more shots they made, the better they were feeling. The more confident to attempt more shots, more aggressive shots. You can hear, see some of the replays. Um, we're going to a game three now. We'll uh, start off with uh, Deacon and Parento on the far side to start us off. And then uh, starting over on championship court three is another quarterfinal match between Jocelyn Duvier and Regina Franco taking on Lauren Stratman and Patrick Smith. So some really good matches happening all over the facility. And we have a, oh, <laughs> I was like, what's happening? Oh, it's Randy. It's Randy, Randy. Coleman. All right. We also have a senior m- pro mixed double match on game two. I'm sorry, court two. We're getting going here in game three here on court one. Deacon and Parento on the far side. Oh, I think Sarah with the wrong decision there to be to go cross court to Deacon when she was standing out of bounds. Rafa was covering the middle and it just left that sideline wide open. Deacon with the tweener. Oh, to stay in that point. Second server here. Oh, Rafa takes one off the leg from Deacon. Patrick Sullivan Jr. finally waking up on the West Coast in Arizona and joining us. About time you get up, Patrick. Come on. We've been here for a while. But glad our West Coasters are waking up and able to join us here. Nice. Okay. Great defense by both Ansbury and Hewitt. Oh, a little miss hit. I love, you can always tell when the player just stares at their paddle. (laughs) <laughs> or the court, or the ball. What just happened? I always tell my students, they look at their paddle after them. I hope there's a mirror on there. Because <laughs> it had nothing to do with the paddle and everything to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> Tough luck. Oh, great job by Catherine. Wow. Oh, she had it. Just kind of pulled it a little bit there. Yeah, you said that right, right there, Lauren. Great defense there from Catherine. Just keeping the play alive on an onslaught from Ansbury and Hewitt to get the side out. I'm sorry. One, one, two. Get the point. Mm What is Hewitt doing? It's so good. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I mean, he is wrapping that He's two-hander. He's like ripping Sa- those digs. Sarah's laughing almost. Going like, how are you getting that? That's incredible. He's wrapping those dinks around with the two-handed backhand incredibly. And he, those are not soft dinks, Dom. He no. is just – he's almost coming over the top of them like he's hitting, you know, a volley. My goodness. All right. We got the side out, though, after Ansbury dumps that serve in the net. (laughs) (laughs) Ah, That's two dumps there from Rafa Hewitt. 
of Patrick saying it was a late night, too many pickleball cocktail cocktails. <laughs> I see what you did there by adding that second mm-hmm. cocktail. Mm-hmm. Uh, nice setup by Catherine, setting up herself. Catching Sarah, pulling that trigger down the line. Ended up popping it up, and she put it away right at Hewitt's feet. Wow. Four two two, Parento serving here in game three. Oh, nice job by Parento with that cross court dink. Such a great angle. Caught Hewitt unprepared and a little off footed. Yes. As I've learned from you this yes. weekend. <laughs> Wow. Ooh. And that brings us to six. So as much as we talked about Ansbury and Hewitt being on in the first game, um, let's uh, give you a little Steve Deacon in games two and three mm-hmm. where he's just literally taken over and overpowering Ansbury and Hewitt with that forehand. It's incredible. I mean, he's he's hit some of those forehands so hard that Ansbury and Hewitt haven't even been able to block those back over the net. It's incredible power there from Steve Deacon. And again, Catherine Parento feeding off of that momentum from Deacon. And uh, it's rubbed off on her, and they're cruising here in game three. Yes, and I mentioned yesterday uh, Steve Deacon, a belated birthday to the young man last week. Turned a spry 47 years old. And... uh, In case you didn't think once you got to that age you could hang with with the young kids in the open pro division, Deacon says, let me prove otherwise. Yeah, spry 47. Oh, yes. (laughs) All right. Okay, okay. We see you, we Rafa s- Hewitt. <laughs> we see you working, Raf. Nice. Look at that replay. So good. Big shout out to Boxcar Productions, running our whole production all weekend, mm. crushing it. Mm. Ah, free point there. Can't have those here in game three. Again, great work. Rafa Hewitt taking over now. A little mixing it up there with a little lob serve followed by a oh, 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 oh. Crash, <laughs> crash in the net attack. <laughs> All right, first, first body shot of the day goes to Rafa Hewitt. Oh, no, that's, that's a second missed serve from Ansbury that we've seen. This match gets the side out for Deacon and Parento. Oh, oh excellent attempt by Catherine Parento. Let's watch. He takes something on the off it here. here. Mm-hmm. She Ugh. almost dove on the court.
big point there for Deacon and Parento to get off six. They've been on six for a little bit. Mm -hmm. Perfect That's it. placement yes. by Ansbury. Saw that middle. That's that placement over mm -hmm. power. Sarah just hitting that about 50% down the middle through the hole. Four seven one Hewitt serving here in ooh, game Just long. three. Deacon tries to call Parento off that ball, but she hit it and just sailed long. Again, placement over power. Mm -hmm. Rafa not trying to do too much with that. Finding the hole in the middle. Watch it here. Just backhand flick down the middle for the winner. Within one here. I think this might have been a good timeout opportunity for Deacon and Parento to kind of just try and throw some water on the fire of Hewitt and Ansbury right now as they're They've gotten the last couple points, but great leave there. Yeah, if they get one more here on a, say, an exciting point, mm -hmm. I think you might sense a timeout. Well, there certainly should be one, Dom, if that's the case. Ah, nice. nice. Put away by Deacon. Put a good amount of power and angle on that. It's going to be really hard for Hewitt to get to, so they got the side out. Managed to maintain just the slightest lead here at 7-6 in game three. And Sarah just so good, such a veteran. The sport of pickleball, if we can call people veterans in the sport of pickleball. Sarah is one of them, just knows the game, knows where to put balls. Oh, how do you leave that? You're playing that, aren't you're, you? You're good. You're playing that, aren't you? I probably yeah. would have got suckered into that, <laughs> Dom, uh, yeah, yes. Yeah. It's <laughs> just, it just hangs up there. It's so juicy. Right. And that's why they're pros and I am not, Dom. <laughs> oh, just long on that serve. Wow. Catherine just kind of hanging her head a little bit. See, when this happened last night, Simone was in her ear. Mm -hmm. Let's go, let's go, let's go, firing her up. Deacon's a little different as far as coach-wise goes. Oh, man. Did that clip the net? No. That's just a clean winner. But I think Catherine I think she thought, thought it was going, it was going to. to. Yeah. Because there was that slightest little flinch right, right at the end. She was almost it ready was to cock so her. so low. Right. She was almost ready to cock her paddle up, mm -hmm. anticipating it clipping off the net. Mm-hmm. And now they're within one. All right, and here's the timeout we were talking about, Dom, that uh, Parento and Deacon have taken here in game three as we are very close. It's going to be 7-8 when we come back, Hewitt and Ansbury serving. Uh, this is a tight, tight yeah. game three, Dom. We uh, like these, though. We like these. It's been kind of ebbing and flowing for both teams, getting hot, cooling off a little, mm -hmm. couple point streaks here and there, so... Yeah, couldn't uh, have put I, it. I think it's anyone's g anyone's game for sure at this point. Yeah, couldn't have put it any better than you did right there, Lauren. It's kind of up and down with both sides. You know, uh, Deacon and Parento looked like they were in control. 6-2 on the changeover. Mm -hmm. And now since that changeover, um, you know, it's been a, 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 what is it, two, carry the one, five. Multiplied <laughs> by multiplied seven. By. It's been a 5-2 run <laughs> since <laughs> the changeover, so. All right, Rafa Hewitt serving as we get back in here. Seven, eight, one. Ooh. That's just a great spot there from Sarah Ansbury. 
Absolutely incredible. Watch this angle. And we're all square. 8 8 1. Eight eight two here in game three. Ansbury serving. This is a round three matchup. Good hold out of the timeout mm -hmm. from Deacon and Parento. with those just crushing overheads it's like it's all you can't you know you're just trying to get them back over the net which ultimately kind of just leads to more overhead opportunities and it's like what can you do Doug? Mm -hmm. Just it, it is Lauren. I, yeah, again, I'm repeating what you said. The ebbs and flows. Mm -hmm. You're just not seeing the confidence in Catherine at the moment, but you did see it earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, midway through this match. I think Deacon. You know, several shots before the end of that point, Deacon has the right idea. He would spin, you know, with that drive and then kind of crashing the net. And if you have the opportunity to hit him on the run up to the net and kind of put it low, you're going to have a better chance to kind of mm -hmm. catch him out of position. Excuse me. 8-8-1 eight, eight, here. Still tied up. Game three. So close. That the was idea, a lot closer. <laughs> the idea I thought was brilliant from Parento. Great spot. She just mi missed that back corner. 8 8 2. is a absolutely man, on fire. A man possessed. I mean, look at that. Backhand, two-handed backhand, cross-court put away. My goodness. And now with the serve back. I mean, just he is just, he, he is full attack mode on every shot. It's like he couldn't slow down if he wanted to, Dom. Uh, and Deacon, I mean, uh, that, that worked out, but honestly, if I'm Deacon and Parento, I'm keeping it away from Hewitt <laughs> as yeah. much as possible. Even when you speed it up, he has proven time and time again he is ready and he's just going to whip that back at you. So I, I feel like any time they're going to Hewitt, you know, you're taking a chance. I mean, look at this man. He's a crazy person out there. Great 
sweet set up there. Great point. Great construction. Sarah got what you wanted. Timeout 8-8. Eight, eight. I'm just feeling whoever Ooh, gets wait. this ninth point yeah, is going to be in mm -hmm. major control. Even though it's going to be a one-point lead, whoever gets this ninth point first is in the driver's seat. And we've had side out after side out here for a little while. No one's been able to get there. I don't once think we've get seen over those, that hump. those couple runs of just a few points here and there, but when you're at eight, you only have a couple to go before the end of the game. So if someone gets hot and gets, you know, that next couple, that's the game. There, There is no opportunity for the other team to sort of go on their own run. So it's going to be Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento serving when we come back from this timeout here. Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt receiving. Inching our way closer to the end of this match as we are in game three, eight, eight, one. There's that ninth point all set up by Parento. Oh, yeah, there it was. Great read there by Rafa Hewitt to come over and put that away with the forehand. Big side out here. There it is. They do not want to let him get to 10, and they didn't. Held it there. Let's see if Ansbury and Hewitt can answer. Just heard Hewitt tell Ansbury, let's get off this eight. That's a great reset from Sarah Ansbury on that. Let's watch the reset drop in and Hewitt able to come over and finish that in the middle. That's why I said, Dom, you can't. It's like. Don't let Hewitt come anywhere near the ball or you are in trouble right now. Great effort by Ansbury. Ansbury just going inside and out, just carving the ball wherever she wants. And we have a match point on the paddle of Rafa Hewitt. Wow. And Sarah just standing in the back going, Rafa, take it over, I buddy. Was like Rafa Hewitt's going to take care of business because that was unbelievable. Rafa Hewitt playing better than, I mean, I've ever seen him play. Not that, you know, he hasn't played that well somewhere else. Maybe I just haven't seen it yet. A but man that possessed. Was, that was, my goodness, quite a display. A big congrats. And, of course, Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento will drop down into our consolation bracket. Hopefully we'll maybe see them later, but Dom, go, see if go he's chat got any, with if them. He's got any energy left? I mean, did you see? Him? He's so jacked up right now, Dom. He's just gonna be like running laps around for a second. Part All of right, the crew. we're gonna take just a quick break, guys. We're gonna be back on center court with another amazing mixed pro doubles match. Dom will be in the studio, and we'll be right back. is an easy game to play, but it's a difficult game to master. There's so much you can learn from the camp, the correct way to hit a dangerous ball or to serve. It's skill 
that we develop within the students' games is then implemented into life play. They can take home easy, simple ways to remember how to execute a shot. Everyone is going to have a great time. It's going to be well worth their while. I think it's 120 milligrams. Let me check on that really quick. It's 125. Oh, it's 125 milligrams. UPS or FedEx for this one? FedEx. They deliver on Saturday. It's three minutes on high. It's pound, then the number. Orange evokes energy and vitality. Black shows soft. How does he know all this stuff? Strength. That's always right. Yellow shows unknowns, things that are unclear. We need to, we need to dive into the yellow warm. Ansbury and the man possessed, Rafa Hewitt, who was just on the phone with his daughter. Was that who you were talking to? Yes, both of them. All right. I mean, they could have stayed on with us. That's fine. <laughs> um, congratulations, guys. I mean, that is an incredible match for us to watch. Um, we commented first um, because you guys opened up on center court uh, this morning before the live stream started. And I was, sit I was sitting courtside watching that match. And I'm like, wow, Mike. These guys are on fire right now already, right out the gate, and that's just continued. Um, what's been the, the, the recipe for what you guys are doing right now? Um, you know, this is our thir third tournament, I think, it, it that. And so mm -hmm. um, we have really good chemistry on the court. I think that's such a huge factor. Mm -hmm. um, we've been able to spend a little more time together. Across our first tournament, we, I mean, we literally got on the court for the first time the night before. So, yeah. uh, and that was the APP and Pucha Gorda. And we still, I mean, we felt like we did pretty well there, but... Um, you know, we've been working on things. Rafa's been working on his game a lot, which is amazing. And, you know, he's uh, he's got a little quicker and his body's a little healthier and stuff. Yeah, so that's yeah. great. So, but, you know, I think it has a lot to do with us just um, being on the same page the whole day. Yeah, and, and Roth, I mean, you're, you're a, like, I, like I said, a man possessed. We joke and kind of laugh about it. But in that match, I mean, you just, you, you took over. You know, it's not that you were pushing Sarah off the court, but Sarah was, you guys had a game plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Sarah was almost halfway off that court right there looking for that kind of jump Ernie, um, yep. and you were taking over the middle, and it kind of helps uh, that you are left-handed, and Sarah can do that knowing that your left hand, your forehand's right in the middle there. Is it something you guys talk about and plan? 
Uh, yeah. Absolutely. You know, I've, I mean, we, yeah, we've talked about it most definitely. I'm giving him room to, to move, and I, I can be there to to play defense if he's if he goes too far or something like that. But I trust his shots, and you know, I love the fact that he's a left-hander. I love playing with left-handers. It puts me on my comfortable side, but it, it allows us to move really well together. And you're gonna it, have the two in the back and on yeah. the other side. So when they want to go down the line, take it. Yeah, and, and that like leads right into my next question. That two-handed backhand that you got going with that cross-court dink is incredible. It almost looks like every time you hit it, I'm like, ah, it's going to – no, it's not. Ah, it's going to – no, it's not. And it's just – it's money. And is it something that you've been working on? Yeah, yeah. It's uh, been lucky. He's moved up to uh, Coeur d'Alene and been training with Tyson, Kyle, and uh, Leia and, and Matt Gold. Yeah. So that good P&W grind, you know, every single morning. Yeah. Good. That's literally what I thought the first time we played together. I was like, I don't think that ball is going over. It's like, went over. <laughs> and, and every time I watch yeah. it up there, I'm like, oh, that's not going. Oh, that's good. Yep. Oh, that's not going. Oh, that's yeah. good too. That works too. It, it just gets better <laughs> and better. I don't want it to be high. So. <laughs> well, that's awesome. that is absolutely awesome, guys. Congrats on the win. Uh, big it. win against Parento and Deacon. Now you're moving on to the semis. Um, you called it earlier this morning. Someone was saying, "Rops, like I'm meddling today, baby. You're on your way, brother." All right, so congratulations. We'll uh, hopefully get to see you guys again later. Thank you. Thank you Take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next match. We're all pretty obsessed with pickleball. We want to grow pickleball into all areas of the country. When you're in person, they can actually see you and they can analyze what you're doing wrong and, you know, correct it right on the spot. We do a pre-video and a post-video so that you can actually see yourself practicing something and put it into action. It's just internally very rewarding. It's money well spent, and if you want to get better, you have to do this. Practice makes perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans, and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out coachmepickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership. For over 40 years, Papico Sports Surfaces has been providing expert service and supplies for any court surface, from resurfacing to building from the ground up. The growth of pickleball is doubling every year. Court equipment for private residences, court seating, and court maintenance from tennis, basketball, tracks, and now pickleball. We're actually doing indoor, private, um, public facilities. There's, there's really no limit to what people are converting now. Official court surface of the APP Delray Beach Pickleball Open. PapicoSportsSurfaces.com. Well, just in case you have not had enough amazing pickleball yet this weekend, we have more to come. It is nonstop pickleball action all day Sunday here as we wrap up the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. I am Lauren McLaughlin with Dominic Catalano. Coming up next, we have Corinne Carr, Dekel Barr, taking on Simone Jargine and Ben Johns. Gorgeous, beautiful day here in Delray Beach, Florida. The sun is shining. The clouds are clearing up here in the stadium. 
which has been transformed from one tennis court into three beautiful pickleball por courts. My goodness. I can talk, guys, I promise. We're getting into the action here. Simone Jardine and Ben Johns on the near side starting us off. Dekel Barr, Corinne Carr receiving, 0, zero 2 Good little flick there from Barr, surprising Jarjean. 1-0-1. One. Looks like coming up next on our court number two that is being live streamed at the same time, we have Zane Navertil and Andrea Coop taking on Annalie Waters and J.W. Johnson. It's gonna be a consolation bracket match to 15. So that's gonna be on our championship court number two. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. inside thigh. Inside <laughs> thigh. We're all, we're all traumatized on behalf I mean, of Colin geez. Johns from last night. So it's been a lot of close calls already today. Oh, uh, that think, ball just. I think uh, Simone hit the line there. Skips off it a little bit. Bar going behind Ben Johns there. Several times. Yep. Before uh, Johns ultimately gave him exactly what he wanted, was an attackable ball. Oh, and a serve into the net from Ben Johns. Two, one, one. One, two, one. Here in game one, Ben John serving. Simone Jarjim clipping the net and getting Corinne in the body. Ben trying that little two-handed backhand roll. Good job by Barr coming across and taking that ball out of the air early. Wow, the fact that mm -hmm. I, I feel like the only reason Ben Johns got a paddle on that was because Deco crushed that directly at his paddle. <laughs> I feel like the next one he didn't make the same mistake. Oh, miss <laughs> it there from Corinne. Corinne kind of laughing that one off, like, "What? What did I just do? That was crazy." A little shout out to. 
my kids are watching right now, so Aww, I'm going to say hi to A kitties. Aiden and Aubrey Joe who are watching right now. They told me last night that they were going to watch, and so I told them that I would say hi to them. Oh, excellent. <laughs> Wow, excellent communication between Bar and Car there about uh, calling Corinne to go get that lob, which she did. Bar slid over, covered the other side of the court. Ultimately, just didn't get a paddle on that next shot the way he wanted to. Bar saying, "Nice job, CC." He's taking over for Adam Stone. Mm -hmm. But Adam Stone calls Corinne <laughs> CC. Adam Stone is, however, watching from the sideline. Oh, excellent job by Barr there. Chargin. Getting out of the way because she thought it was going long, but it dropped in about six inches in. Oh. <laughs> that, <laughs> pretty sure Ben heard that ball go past his face, but luckily sailed out. No harm, no foul. Five, two, two. Oh, Simone, great job of reading that. Corinne hits that a little too hard on the cross court and Simone able to go around the post for the winner. Ben just showing a little bit of frustration, mm -hmm. letting out a how many. I mean, how many times are you going to do that right now before he makes the adjustment? And he makes the adjustment by, instead of trying to drop that ball that's three quarters of the way back, driving it, forcing the block, and then getting the drop from a little closer. So that's just Ben making in-game adjustments as he goes. Even though Carr and Barr did not win that point, I like the decision by Carr to be going inside and out there. Uh, she just missed hit her dink. No problem. Easily fixable. But I like her changing that up a little bit. Just like that, we're tied up here. Of course, uh, Johns and Barr, they play together very often. They own a business together. They do indeed. <laughs> oh, and again, um, inside, inner thigh. <laughs> and there's the timeout from Bar and Carr as uh, Johns and Jorjing have pulled ahead here with a score of 6 5 here in game one. We'll uh, take a little break. Mm -hmm. But well uh, in the in the mean yeah. yeah in the meantime, um, the timeout coming at a at a good time. Don't want to let it get away again, obviously. Um, but I think Deco Moore just a little frustrated with mm -hmm. the fact that he's been hit by Ben Johns twice in the leg. Uh, so <laughs> let's stop that right away. Not get Ben Johns any more confidence, and uh, we'll go from here and uh, see if we can stop this and get the side out.
good side out there from Karen Carr and Dekelbar. Great jump there oh, by beautiful. Barr. So long. And, and the angle was right. so sharp. I mean, the power and angle co combination, there's, there's nothing even Ben Johns can do about that. Bar ready for it, the attack from Johns, but just gets a little too bit too much over the top of it and dumps it in the net. And now uh, Corinne <laughs> Carr with the with the leg tag from Ben Johns. Ben just mad that his brother got hit last night. And he's sticking know. up for Big Brother. <laughs> He certainly thought it was funny last night. Deckel saying don't. He reached for that. That would have been right on Corinne's two-handed backhand. I think Corinne would have had a better shot at that ball. I think Deckel knows it too. Oh, oh beautiful. A ball from the other court comes in about... One second too late. Look at that, just disguised down the line. I mean, nothing you can do but applaud that. Nice Ernie from Corinne Carr there. Mm -hmm. Nine, seven, two. We are on a game point here for Ben Johns and Simone Jargin. Just like that. And there it is. Game one in the books. We'll take a very brief break and we'll be right back for game two. Game one of this pro mixed doubles match going to Ben Johns and Simone Jargin 11-7. We have switched ends now. We're about to get back to the action here in game two. Corinne Carr, Dekel Barr will be on our near side. Starting us off. Oh, we got a paddle change from Mr. Barr. Quick check from the ref. Corinne Carr starting us off, zero, zero, 2 game two. And again, I'm gonna, I'll just say it, but similar to what we saw to Catherine earlier, 
talking about how she's just a little off. It's not that Simone's off, and I'll take Simone's worst day to my best day, seven days out of seven. Mm -hmm. um, but it just she the the energy level, and again, it was a long day for her yesterday, and to come right back today. Mm -hmm. Oh. And right on cue, though, she dominates that point right there and sets up her partner, Ben Johns. I feel like maybe, she, you know, she's just conserving her energy, Dom. <laughs> she could be. We'll just turn, know. We'll, we'll turn it on later. Oh. No. <laughs> <laughs> ben. I mean, just look at that rip by Simone. Ben looks right at his paddle at the end as if like that had anything to do with it. <laughs> no, Ben. Come on, no, Ben. No. <laughs> one, one, two. John's serving. Oh, uh, it lands on the line. Uh, even I think he was... Definitely hoping it was going <laughs> out and he wasn't going to have to go for it. And then it landed right on the line. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, we've seen a few serves in the net from Johns. It doesn't happen often, that's for sure. But <laughs> you, he said you, me. That point was just that screwy from the beginning. That we was had a three, so four wonky. Hmm. Three, four lat cords, a you, me call. <laughs> Deckel just sidestepping, shuffling back and forth. Yeah. That's a great Oops. job by Ben Johns coming over there and taking that ball with his forehand. I think almost shocking car and bar. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> He's got some dance moves too, Dom. Almost got him. Ooh. <laughs> wow. I mean, Ben John just bringing the big deckle bar to his knees. Ugh. I mean, it takes a lot to bring that bring big of a guy all the way down to the court. Yeah, chop him down. Oh my gosh. I wish we could do a slow mo replay of that entire point. The defense from John wow. and Jarjim on that point, absolutely incredible. On their heels for 90% of that point, and yet end up winning it. And just put himself right in the line of fire there. He read it right, just kind of overstepped a little bit. Oh, a lob from Corinne Carr. First one we've seen that today. Right, but Excellently that is, that is executed. Right, and we saw that a ton in Punta Gorda. Remember that mm -hmm. match in Punta Gorda? She lobbed like four or five times in a row. 
and was just money with it. And there's another one. Oh my. Yeah, it's the, the hometown girl over there getting a lot of cheers. Anna Lee Waters on court, too. Sounds and like they're having yeah, just as amazing of a match as we are, Dom. Ben, ben thought that was for him. <laughs> no. Three, four, one. John serving. Hmm. Haven't seen that really yet out of mm -mm. Carr. Wow, incredible hands by Corinne Carr there to get some of those balls back. Unbelievable. But a timeout here from Carr and Barr at 5-4 in game 2. Don't want to let it don't want don't want to let it get away. And the score's been extremely close this entire game too. Mm -hmm. So it's interesting because uh, we saw in some earlier matches, you know, a team getting, you know, four or five points before a timeout is called. You know, you see Carr and Barr, they're calling a timeout pretty much immediately after they sense just the slightest momentum building between Johns and Jarjean. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that's wise because, you I mean, number one team in the world, they get hot and everybody's in trouble. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Everybody in the stadium. There's They're all in trouble. There's what's going on over on our championship court number two, briefly, a little <laughs> quick <laughs> quick yeah. peek over uh, there. We have Zane Navratil and Andrea Coop taking on J.W. Johnson and Annalie Waters. It's on our second live stream. We're back here from this timeout, though. Ben John's serving. 5-4-1. Oh, that looked... We haven't seen too much this match so far of Ben really inserting himself or poaching. Of course, he, he loves to do that and does it well and often, but we haven't seen him too much this match yet. We'll see if he starts to try and take over a little bit more. Job by Carr trying to reset those. Ultimately, unfortunately, one of them got a little too high, and we all know what happens when that happens when Ben Johns is on the other end. It's a check that ball type of a situation. <laughs> yeah. 7 4. Oh, I see. Deckel Bar and Ben John straight up on that point. Deckel going to fake here. Go back. Wow, that's a good guess, right? How did you know? Mm, little tweener attempt. Watching the hand signals between Corinne and Deckel. The hand signals you give are usually pretty universal, so everyone uses pretty much the same ones. So what Deckel did on the, his hand signal, he gave like a talking mouth. That's almost like, oh, that means I'm going to fake. If you give an open hand, it means we're going to switch. And you give a closed fist, it means we're going to stay. That's a good double up on the drive there from Barr. Just going aggressive there. Mm. 
There we go. Bar being aggressive. So someone asking about the stacking. A lot of times in mixed doubles, you'll see the stacking where the male's on the left and the female's on the right uh, when you have two right-handers and just puts that male's forehand in the middle, trying to be a little more dominant. And when you see this too, we got Ben and Deco both on the left side. And that right, perfect right there is Ben just stepping into that middle and taking about 70 to 75% of the court. So like this right here, Simone serving from this side, but then she'll just slide over and fill her spot on the right side. And Ben will take the left. And now. Nice job, Karen Carr catching Johns on his way up through the transition zone. Put it low enough, he uh, got a little caught by that. Got a little reaction from court two. I just seen Zane Navratil hit the biggest miss hit winner I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, six nine one here in game two. Car and Bar trying to take this to a game three. Just too much pressure there from Ben Johns. And Jarjim and Johns, two points away from the match here. Actually notice on that point, Deckel ended up on the right side mm -hmm. instead, putting the guys straight up. So they do mix it up yeah. every once in a while, but this is match point here for Johns and Jarjean. <laughs> ben <laughs> basically <laughs> off the court. <laughs> Degabar had the whole court, Nothing but that there. was, let's watch that real quick again. Just hit, the post, hit the post, unfortunately. Yep. And that'll be the match going to Simone Jarjing and Ben Johns. Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr will drop down into our consolation bracket. And uh, we'll have another fantastic mixed pro doubles match coming up next. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Bye, Natalie. I got it. Oh, man. Thanks, Arena. And that's how you do it, Patrick. Ah, cramp it. Take a little cocktail. Thank you. We need a new sound guy. Are you kidding me? Oh, I got some. Enjoy. Oh. New people pickleball paddles have passed USAPA testing which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. 
Beat Depot Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level. Hi everybody, Lauren McLaughlin, my very first time in the studio. In the studio. Normally Dom just doesn't let anyone in his space. It's so rude. But welcome everybody. We are on our final day here of the APP Delray Beach Pickleball Open. I am joined by Ken Herman, CEO, founder of the APP Tour. Ken, this has been an amazing venue. Everyone seems to be having such an amazing time. Just yeah, How's it, it been going? It's been great. We've had terrific weather. We've only had one day with a 30-minute rain delay here, which is always in South Florida. A little bit nervous as far as that goes. But where we are, second stop on the APP Tour, but the first major of the year. Yes. And for often, uh, a lot of players, this is really the last warm-up before the U.S. Open. Mm -hmm. So it's great to get out here playing in the humidity, the wind factors, with always had happened in South Florida. Mm -hmm. So. Everyone has been great. Delray Beach Pickleball Club, thank you so much for having us. And I want to give a shout out to the fans. Punta Gorda, you all kicked us off back in January. Oh, yeah. And thank you again, Punta Gorda, for doing such an amazing job. Gloria, Ted, you welcomed us there to start off the tour. And here we are, second stop of the year. I can't, I can't believe it's only the second stop. We had, <laughs> we had a couple stops get pushed back in the year due yep. to some COVID restrictions. Yep. Yep. But they're still on the, on the schedule, which is awesome. I think we have 16 more stops yep. scheduled for the year, so we're just going to be cranking them out going yep. forward. So we're excited about that. We head off to Cincinnati mm -hmm. uh, in early May, so the Cincinnati Open comes up. The bus tour is back. The summer bus tour Maybe. takes us to a Midwest stop in Cincinnati. Uh, Indianapolis Open, co-hosted mm -hmm. by Rick Witzkin and yes. Althoff and uh, Zane. And then after that, the bus is heading out to Southern California. We got two stops. That is quite the road trip that the bus is making. <laughs> the, Midwest the, all the way the to SoCal. The LA Open and SoCal Classic. We are hopeful with COVID that we can get those events in. Mm -hmm. And uh, we are very optimistic, especially with how the governor in California has lowered the tier right now from a purple to a red. So my team both down there is... We're watching those events and, and hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get to play those events. Yes, and we have just, of course, amazing stops coming up. Of course, uh, we're in this gorgeous stadium yep. here at yep. the Delray Beach Tennis Center, which hosts the tennis tournament every year that we've transformed into sure. three pickleball courts. It's been awesome to kind of have different v venues all over the country. You know, you know I, not everyone has a stadium, uh, of that, course. That's right. It's great to be able to kind of visit all these different places that's in the right. country. And I, and I think the tour is kind of like a song. You have different points of every song. Not every venue has got a stadium court mm -hmm. that seats 10,000 people. Sure. But as we're on this mission to grow the sport, working with USA Pickleball, we're going to Indianapolis, the heart mm -hmm. of the Midwest. We're going to go out to Hilton Head. We're going to go up the East Coast to New Jersey, For the first time Philadelphia. They've, had, they've, had a, they've never had a big tour stop. With That's Rose exactly right. So Coast, we're, we're going to keep growing the sport, taking an APP tour experience to a, a home by you. And it's always amazing when we leave, I think the interest in pickleball is always at a level 10. Yeah. The people are wanting to buy paddles, people are wanting to get in leagues, people are wanting to work with their local pros or join the local pickleball club. Yeah. So if we can have any voice in helping grow the sport with our partnership of USA Pickleball, I think that's just gonna just improve the overall quality of the sport. And that is really our goal at the APP Tour. You know, we live stream the pros, yep. everyone loves watching them, but ultimately, yep. 
the entire tournament experience is about everyone. Sure. No one's being catered to. No one's being. It's everyone is just as important. Well, I think I think having that second broadcast has been oh, a has been a challenge for all of us and all of you all to pull it off. That's what happens when there's change <laughs> and growth and innovation. Ken, there's growing pains, but but ultimately it is for the best, and we're pushing the yeah, sport but forward. I love the stories that are being told on the grandstand right now, and I'm excited to be able to tell those stories. The whole entire year. Absolutely. And it, it works well. So many amazing volunteers that we meet at all yep. of these venues, the pickleball clubs that we get to talk to. It's just been super exciting. We're, and like I said, it's only the second stop of our tour. <laughs> and we have the, the month of April off due to the U.S. Open yep. and all that. And then we're back in May. And then it is just kicking it into high gear the rest of the year. The road to Miami. Absolutely. It's all we'll about be, the road we'll to Miami. Back here in southern Florida, just yep. down the road a smidge in Miami. It's going to be awesome. Of course, all of the information on all of our stops, where we're going, when. Registration for those is on pickleballtournaments.com, but you can go to apptour.org. You can see all the money breakdown yep. for all of the events, yep. all the dates, all that good stuff, anything you want to know. If there's something that's not on there that you want to know, <laughs> shoot us a message on Facebook or email, and we will happily answer that for you. So, again, thank you, Ken Herman, yep. for just creating this tour and bringing it all these amazing, amazing venues. You're just constantly boots on the ground everywhere you're there's not a dull <laughs> moment you don't stop for one second while you're here ken and i love it everybody does such a great job and uh we're gonna get back to some more amazing pro mix doubles on our last day but uh the bus tour is, is the bus tour is getting ready up and getting ready to go <laughs> off don't to the midwest any, don't go anywhere guys we'll be right back with thanks everyone pro mix doubles match at Coulter Homes, the rules are simple. Grab your paddle and always dink in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Remember where you are. Pickle. Coulter Homes is the home of pickling. Smash and poach on dedicated courts in resort style and active adult new home communities across the southeast, including PGA Village Verano and Port St. Lucie, home of the World Pickleball Open. Pickle. Learn more at coulterpickleball.com. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. Pickleball is an easy game to play, but it's a difficult game to master. There's so much you can learn from the camp, the correct way to hit a dink, the ball, or the serve. Each skill that we develop within the students' games is then implemented into life play. They can take home easy, simple ways to remember how to execute a shot. Everyone is going to have a great time. It's going to be well worth their while. <laughs> Lauren McLaughlin and Dominic Catalano back up in the booth for a semi-final mixed pro doubles match coming up next here on Championship Court 1. We have, ooh, Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury who have been blazing through our bracket, just playing so amazing. And then we have Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman, also undefeated through the bracket through the day so far. This is a semifinal match. 
And Dom, I was just down in the studio chatting with Ken Herman a little bit. Mm -hmm. We mentioned that we normally, I don't get to go in the studio because that's your space. And you normally don't like to did share. You, did you clean it up nice? I didn't. I just trashed it. I threw some <laughs> chairs on my way out. I'm really sorry. <laughs> but uh, we were just chatting all about the amazing stops that we have coming up during the year. And it's so crazy to think this is only our second stop here know, of 2021. Right? And it's nuts. It's just, you know, we're so busy planning things and, you know, coordinating and behind the scenes stuff. It's just, it really is nonstop. You know, it's mm -hmm. the whole year for us. And uh, we love being able to actually have our tournaments, bring you these live streams, share this amazing pickleball with everybody at home. It's just, uh, we really love it. And we're glad that you guys are enjoying it and able to join us. Big shout out, of course, to Boxcar Productions and Kyle Salinko running our live stream for all of our tournaments. And this is our first tournament ever. We have two courts streaming at the same time. Double the pickleball, double the fun. And uh, we have Morgan Evans and Ari Shanock commentating on our court two that we're calling our grandstand court. We have on our third stadium court, we do have three here in the stadium. Uh, there's not a stream on that one, unfortunately, but we have Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento taking on Vivian David and John Sincola in that consolation bracket match to 15. The one on court two just concluded with Andrea Coop and Zane Navertil coming out on top. Oh, I didn't, even, I didn't see the final of that one. Just wrapped up. Um... At least it looked like Andrea and Zane just won. If somebody was watching and for some reason I misread <laughs> the body language at the end of that match, please let me know. Um, but I believe they are continuing on. But like I mentioned, here on court one, Sarah Ansbury in the blue shirt, Rafa Hewitt in the black. They're going to be taking on Patrick Smith in the white turquoise and Lauren Stratman in the black tank top. Should be a great match. Smith and Stratman partnered together quite a bit in mixed doubles. Both very emotional, kind of fiery players. Yes, without a doubt. And uh, Sarah Ansbury is I would say probably the calmest of this group of four. Rafa Hewitt definitely uh, has a little fire as well. A little. He's got a lot in that belly. I know. You were, you were hey. chatting with them, My I think, goodness. last hey. in the studio after their big win. Oh, now Sarah Ansbury's in the pink. Excuse me. She took her long sleeve off. Just, just making sure everyone's aware of who Sarah is. But uh, what, were, what were they chatting about in the studio there? I mean, we were just talking about how, you know, as they came down, I'm like, Rafa is zoning out. And Sarah's like, I'm just letting him do what he does. And if he can continue to do that, it's going to cause havoc for Smith and Stratman. So um, it's going to be fun to see here. And both Rafa, that's so, so cool. Look at Rafa Hewitt and Lauren Stratman, both rocking that pickleball club hat and visor oh, on it. center court. I just want to give a quick shout it. out to uh, Cassandra Gurkey confirming Zane Navratil and Andrew Coop did indeed win 15-13, so that was an exciting match. And we're off to the races here. Game one of this semifinal match. Quick side out. Lauren Stratman zero, zero, serving 0-0-1. Zero, zero, Ooh, there's that Rafa Hewitt. Forehand, he is a lefty, you got to remember. So that is his forehand in the middle, and he's on the right side. And I can, expect, I can expect a lot of big, powerful shots from him you again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Rafa screamed out on the, the previous 
shot that Ansbury ended up hitting and then shouted a little extra loud on the next one just to make sure everyone, <laughs> everyone let that go, which they did. Oh, Stratman trying to go with a nice angled cross court there. Unfortunately, sends it a little wide. That's going to be a side out. Oh, ball, ball on court. It's always good when that happens in between points, Don. Right, not during a point. You, <laughs> you, hate, you hate, hate to that. see that, especially if it's just like an amazing point. There's Hewitt just firing. Sarah Ansbury is the soft game. Rafa Hewitt is the all guns blazing game. Yeah. <laughs> one, one, two. Ansbury serving here as we are getting into game one. Heard that ball hit the grandstands. Mm hmm. We've mentioned this before in the stream. I have found it to be the case, too. Occasionally, not so much at the pro level, but sometimes when that happens and there's like a high ball that's just going to drop over the net, you, sometimes players almost get in their head too much because it's so easy of a shot and there's just like, it's almost like there's too many too many choices you have too many of options. what to do with it. And so sometimes you see like weird mistakes where you just like dump it in the net from two inches away or, you know, hit it out. Oh, oh no. Throat shot to Sarah Ansbury with a off deflection of <laughs> off of Hewitt's paddle. We're just gonna, she needs just a quick little minute. <laughs> Ansbury even, even though blaming it goes Pat it Smith. Goes off of Rafa's paddle. <laughs> She's like, I Smith blame you, Smith is the one Pat. that hit it. Two one two, Lauren Stratman serving. Mm, Great nice. job there by Pat Smith. Not trying to go for too much there. Mm -hmm. About seventy percent down the middle for the winner. Beautiful shot. a little short that there is some wind Dom. It, it's not nothing um, so it's coming out of the north again so in the faces of Hewitt and Ansbury so there are occasionally a shot might get held up come on Hewitt wow the man is not human <laughs> oh no Catherine Parento on the ground oh no I think she might have scraped an elbow it's I over on court okay. three. She gave 110% on that shot. Good job, Sarah, getting in a position to be able to hit that block. Three, one, two. Stratman and Smith with a little bit of a lead here in game one. Wow, mm. that's just great job there from Lauren Stratman going inside out, not going to the same place more than once or twice in a row and keeping Hewitt and Ansbury on their heels. Yep. Wow, too good, Lauren. Just looking at Smith Perfect going, hey, spot. Just, just stay on your side. Don't worry about it. I got this. I got this, Pat. Get out of the way, Patrick Smith. <laughs> that one arm sleeve up. Mm -hmm. Get it out of my way. <laughs> <gasps> oh, great effort by Stratman. Oh. oh, wow. Almost got that second one back. Way to get back on the court after that big hustle to get up to the net. 1-5-1. One, one. Let's see if Ansbury and Hewitt can... 
Put a couple points together. I think that's, I mean, we've seen Hewitt just those relentless drives. It's like, if he can just stay steady with those, it really puts the ownership on Smith and Stratman to be able to block and put those back the right way. Who is this man? Who is this person? Rafa Unreal. Hewitt. Can someone just like make me a shirt with Rafa's face on it? It's just like. So I was I talking need to, be to in this fan club. In between matches, I was talking to Lauren Stratman's dad, and we we're talking about this upcoming match, and he's talking about Rafa, and he's like, he's playing like Rafa, like mm -hmm. the yes, the, like the real the Rafa. Rafa. <laughs> And I'm like, and he's like, just w he's like, just watching him. He's like, he's all over the place playing just like mm -hmm. Rafa won. <laughs> the original. We're we talking Rafa. about Rafa Nadal, of course. Oh. Ooh. That point should have been over about 30 seconds ago. My goodness. It wasn't. Gracious. Honestly, how, do you think it's hard for Sarah Ansbury with Rafa just, he's at an 11, Dom, all over Out the court. Do you think it's kind of, is it harder for her? Better? No. It's almost, you, she's got to get out of the way. She's got to try and be like, oh, he's, he's here now. He's there now. It's kind of a little... Uh, that's a great shot by Pat Smith online. But to answer your question, Lauren, no, I don't. Um, Sarah's so good and so mm -hmm. seasoned as a player. Mm -hmm. Even going in the interview, she's like, hey, she's like, I I'm just uh, let him do what he's doing. Yeah. You know, and she's so smart. She can go in behind him if he's coming all the way over. Mm -hmm. And she'll talk to him, and she's letting him know where she's at. So, you know, some players, I'd say yes. It'd be annoying. Mm -hmm. But with Sarah, I think it's the perfect partnership. Mm -hmm. I mean, you watch her too. Watch her get her foot out, out of bounds here. Oh, uh, that clips the net. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think Ansbury had a good shot at returning that. But you'll watch, and when Sarah's on the left side and Rafa's on the right, which they, they are 99% of the time, um, you'll see Sarah almost have a foot out of bounds. Because she feels mm -hmm. that Rafa is feeling mm -hmm. it. And so she's giving him his space just to do Rafa things. Look at it right there. <gasps> oh. oh. Oh, it's in the stands. Bounced off the table. Eight three two, Stratman and Smith still out in front. Mm. So I think that's the case too right here. Nine three lead for Stratman and Smith, and like we talked about about five minutes ago, is that Stratman and Smith are not going to the same spot and letting Rafa mm -hmm. or Sarah get comfortable, and they just keep changing it up. Oh, gets the outside of the post. It was really great on Ansbury, though. As she went cross court, it wasn't too extreme. So it was going mm -hmm. wide. It gave Smith a bit of an opportunity, but not quite enough for a clean ATP. Ultimately hits the post.
392. Hewitt and Ansbury needed that. Definitely digging out of a bit of a hole here. Game one of the semifinal Pro Mix doubles match. Great finish there from Pat Smith. Now it puts a uh, side out, 9-4. Oh, good spot there from Pat Smith on that dink. Sarah realizing it too late that she should have taken a half a step back and get that ball mm -hmm. off the bounce. She got caught up and uh, got a match point here. Game point. Yep. <laughs> what I said. Yeah. <laughs> All right, game one. Fairly decisively going to Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman. Let's take a very quick break, guys. We'll be right back for game two. Perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans, and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out coachmepickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership. At Coulter Homes, the rules are simple. Grab your paddle and always dink in the kitchen. In the kitchen. Remember where you are. Coulter Homes is the home of pickling. Smash and poach on dedicated courts in resort style and active adult new home communities across the southeast, including PGA Village Verano and Port St. Lucie, home of the World Pickleball Open. Pickleball. Learn more at coulterpickleball.com. We are back here in the Delray Beach Tennis Center Stadium. I am Lauren McLaughlin along with Dominic Catalano and ooh Dom, we got a we got a third well, edition. Yeah, I mean, he'd, he'd be he'd be locked in and ready to go if he was not a rookie That's and so forgot true. to plug his headphones in. I know. Now, it's like here, he's never I'll, done I'll do this it before. You, Dave. I, here, I, I we got, got it. I got I got We it. got it. There you go, right there. Done. Can you hear Guys, it's Dave Fleming. I can't, thank you. He's back. It's Dave Fleming. What's up, everybody? Oh my Thanks gosh. for having me. I mean, we're sad because you lost, but we're very excited that you're here. Thank you. We're getting into game two. Lauren Stratman, Patrick Smith on the near side. Sarah Ansbury, Rafa Hewitt on the far side. Game one went to Stratman and Smith, so uh, we'll see if... Hewitt and Ansbury can take us to a game three. Dave, we've seen a lot of game threes here today so far, so. Ooh, Ooh. that'll, Don't go that'll there. get us started. Hewitt and Ansbury on the board first here in game two of this Pro Mix Doubles semifinal match. You know, that's what you want to see in mix, the short return just attacked like that, as Rafa did there, really well done. I don't know how much you've seen of Rafa yet today, Dave, but this is a man possessed. Why is he hitting right-handed shots yeah. in the middle of points? <laughs> Every, <laughs> he can't He's hitting hit everything, everything, anything. We've seen him twice on center court. This is his third time, and it is just... It's a he thing of beauty. It, it is. It's unbelievable. It's great to watch. I love seeing it. You know, he admittedly is in better shape um, mm -hmm. than he was. Yep. He's looking good. A year ago, training a lot. It's great to see. 
Unbelievable right there. That's great. <coughs> I think he had here he his headphones on as well as you <laughs> talked about them. Mm -hmm. yep. Just on cue. It's yeah. fine. We're just pumping him up. All right, zero, two, one, Patrick Smith serving. I mean, Dave, what did we tell you? You were right. And, you know, what's great about that coverage is where the ball was going to land was on Sarah's half of the court, and he still got there. Mm -hmm. Again, if the, d if the return is short, you got to attack. That's your mm -hmm. chance in mixed, and yeah. he did a great job there. Oh, well, Hewitt's been on the attack pretty much every point of every game that we've seen so far them playing in. So a good timeout here from Smith and Stratman because, I mean, they see it. I mean, look at Hewitt. He's just, he's fired up over there. He's pumped. And uh, they are trying to settle that down. It's Dave, guys. Hello, look, everyone. There he is. He's really here. I'm Lauren McLaughlin, Dominic Catalano, Dave Fleming, we have been with you all weekend long. It's been so much fun. We absolutely love these tournaments, being able to watch just the highest level pickleball that there is. And we love being able to bring it to you guys at home. So hopefully you're enjoying, able to watch two of our streamed courts on both Facebook and YouTube. You play both of those teams, Dave. That's correct. <laughs> All right, three zero one. As we come back from this timeout, nice call by Hewitt. It was very close, wow. but he was mm -hmm. right on top of it. Called it in immediately. I mean, is there anywhere the man isn't? You know, and that's what happens, you know, the if there's an aggressive player on the court, it just it becomes one versus three almost, and Sarah's doing her job to set up this onslaught. Mm -hmm. <laughs> See, and, and that's the thing is, like, he hits that let cord. He expects that right now. He's expecting to get that ball over and expecting that ball to roll over. Because he's so hot right now, why wouldn't you? Mm -hmm. All right, zero four one. I mean, I love what they're doing strategically. They're letting Sarah sit on her forehand on that mm -hmm. side, and she's got some of the most beautiful hands ever and especially if she only has to cover one side of her body so mm -hmm. that's perfect <laughs> strategy oh there's the attack from sarah too yep anything you can do rafa <laughs> i can do better there is a little bit of wind here today worst day was thursday for singles there's a slight wind today, but I, Dave, you were just playing. Yep. Is wind a factor on the court playing? You know, the there is a wind-aided side, but it's not like Thursday where the wind was a player. You know, I think mm -hmm. Simone told you, Dom, there you had to play against three people that day. Today mm -hmm. is just, you know, do you prefer to play into the wind or or yeah. not? Um, there we you go. know, you can drop thirds that way. 77 degrees, partly cloudy, 10 mile an hour winds, so. Pretty, pretty mild, all things considered. <gasps> That's oh, too nice. good of an angle there from Lauren Stratman. Again, it's catching that Rafa Hewitt sitting in the middle trying to eat up that forehand there. Um, but it hasn't been burned too much on that backhand side. He's hitting mm -hmm. that two-handed backhand cross court really well. Yep. 
Yeah, there it is. And that's the yeah. setup from Stratman and Smith where they're going inside, outside, not hitting to the same spot really twice. And it's just keeping Ansbury and Hewitt on their heels. One, five, one. one, five, one. Stratman and Smith not really yet able to make a dent uh, in Ansbury and Hewitt's lead too much here in game two. Wow, that, that's a rare miscommunication there because Hewitt's been taking that every single time because of the mode he's in. And Sarah just left it for him because he has been taking that, so. <laughs> I mean, Lauren with a complete bailout, turn, run away, yes. so she doesn't get hit. Good decision. Yeah, the Winter Soldier was on a mission. Three, five, two. Here in game two. It's interesting with stacking. You see the team that's serving a lot of the time get out of sorts because they think there's an opening over there and miss miss a third. It happens more than you think. Oh, oh. <gasps> Sarah, just take it. She literally, she's literally just standing back there. <laughs> she just <laughs> stood. Look at Sarah. Yep. Look at Sarah. She's literally just hanging out, take it, take watching it. the point, and letting Rafa Hewitt fully yeah. do what he wants to do. Dom, Amazing. you always say you had the best seat in the house, but uh, <laughs> nah. Sarah, Sarah on that Sarah's one. Sarah's was much better. We could have had her pull up a chair. She'd have been fine. I, that, I think if she had let that go, it, you can see Stratman right here. I mean, I think it was going to go wide if she hadn't have hit it, but she saw that opening up the middle and well, Sarah set perfectly that, placed. Sarah set that up three shots prior. Yes. Mm -hmm. She knew what she was going to do th with that ball right there three shots earlier. Seven three two Hewitt serving. I mean, what's interesting about that is both sides will take what happened there. I mean, mm -hmm. if Sarah's dinking, that's complete control of the point until Rafa can get in there. And then obviously Lauren had a ball that uh, she's going to make a lot of the time. So, uh, you know, I think when they get in these dink rallies, Lauren, if she's cross court with Sarah, you have to slide back into the middle on that other one. It's, it's hard, though, because it takes work. He missed that drive, but I was just, like, his drives have been so good all day. Just very clean, crisp, low, powerful. He hasn't missed Benny, that's for sure. Again, hitting down, hitting down, down mm -hmm. at their feet. Beautiful finish there on the replay. 
382, Lauren Stratman serving here in game two, trying to play oh, catch a, up. A great drive by Stratman going backside. Again, catching Rafa Hewitt in the middle, trying to get that forehand. Beautiful job resetting by Sarah. She reset to Stratman, and then that dink cross court and just kind of caught Smith unprepared. Great side out. Hewitt and Ansbury going to hope to add to their lead here in game two. Love it. Hewitt has been so encouraging the whole time. <laughs> All right, we have a timeout here from Stratman and Smith. We've seen a lot of this day throughout the day uh, when we're splitting games one and two. It's been fairly one team in control, yeah. then the other team in control the second game, and then it's just kind of a mixed bag for the third game. Uh, do you see Stratman and Smith able to come back from this here in game two? I mean, there there's a you know a force to be reckoned with on the other side. So um, you know, as we talked about before, when someone takes over, it, it's going to make Pat try to do a little more than he wants to because he feels like he's watching the guy on the other side do a lot more than he does. Mm -hmm. um, and speaking from experience, you know, that's a frustrating place and mixed for you're just watching the other guy and you're trying to get in, you're trying to support your partner and. Watching that, you know, Sarah, tremendous player herself, she is now setting him up as well. So it's, uh, it's impressive. I mean, you're going to get to see all of this We'll uh, all conclude day long. the day with our gold medal match at 5 p.m. Eastern. Perhaps one of these teams will be watching again in that match. But uh, we will have our finals this evening live streamed for everyone's enjoyment. I mean, I'm not sure there's there's anything to stop the Hewitt train right now that's barreling down here in game two. And we're going to have a game point here for Hewitt and Ansbury here in game two, looking to take us to a game three. He's swinging yeah. that stuff. He's nowhere <laughs> near. <laughs> I mean, Sarah was six feet in front of him and hit it. He still swung. <laughs> He's just swinging. He has been my absolute favorite to watch today. He is playing lights out. Second game point opportunity here. Ansbury serving. All right. Great job by Smith and Stratman. Holding them off there. Yeah, now you want to get two or three and make them think about it. Correct. Mm -hmm. Good talk there from Sarah, communicating with Hewitt, saying, I'm here. I got it. Relax. I'll set you up. Don't worry. All right. Game point again here for Hewitt and Ansbury. Great return by Stratman in the farthest back corner that you can land that. All right, 
they hold them off. Another round. Still some ground to make up here. 4 10 1. That's a good job yeah. of recognition right there from Pat Smith. Obviously noticing that Sarah's left foot is out of bounds. Yes. Um, you're going to pull Rafa Hewitt all the way over, even if you do go down the middle there. That's a good shot. Making a little progress yeah. here. It'll be interesting to see if we see a timeout from Hewitt and Ansbury. If they get too many more of those. And call one more yep. mistake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they got what they wanted there again. Just missed it. I mean, they're trying to keep him honest, and it makes you play a little finer too when mm -hmm. someone on the other side is running around as much. Like you feel like, gosh, I got to hit inside, just inside the line, and you make mistakes because of it. That's, I mean, those are the unseen points that Rafa creates as well. Nice job by Hewitt, pulling that quickly right at Pat Smith. Catching him a little off guard, sends it long, and that is their much needed side out. Two more chances here to close out game two and take us to a game three. Good talk there from Pat. Lauren wound up and was ready to yeah. hit that. Wow, I thought the point was over. Yes. I thought it was over. Oh, I thought we were that might have been the longest three. point of the game at least. Yep. Pat made a uh, game-saving play there without question because mm -hmm. Rafa had a ball up on the big forehand. Mm -hmm. Nice controlled point. is just what happened last time you know like all you need Stratman and Smith are chipping yep. away at that lead each serve and even if Ansbury and Hewitt get the serve back there's that much more pressure that they're that much closer that one is wide Pat frustrated with missing a ball that he had just to dink again. You're just trying to maybe be a little too fine to keep Rafa over there. A rare we, miss. We've seen on a put away from Rafa a few right there. mistakes these last couple points from Hewitt that we haven't seen really the last two matches that we've seen him in. That number 10 will do that to you. Mm -hmm. That's 8 10 2. Hewitt and Ansbury need. This side out. And there's the timeout. All right, it's going to be 9 10 2. Smith and Stratman doing an excellent job coming back from quite a deficit against Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Amsbury. 
So you're at 10-4, now we're at 10-9. Five points rattled off in a row. Um, after a few side outs, fought off some game points there, but mm -hmm. now we're at 10-9. Timeout here for Ansbury and Hewitt. They don't want to let this get to 10-10 in an even game. No. And then it's a race to whoever can get to uh, uh, before one another. And um, confidence-wise, this is not going the way that uh, Hewitt and Ansbury wanted. Do you agree, Dave? T totally. I mean, I think, you know, we, we wondered how long they'd take it. There were a couple errors in here, but I'll tell you what, Lauren has been patiently bouncing the ball. When the ball's been in the air, Roth has been out of control. So bouncing the ball, not an attackable ball, that makes him grind. And it's hard to cover as much court as he has consistently and execute every single one of those balls. So um, let's see if he can ex execute one here and get the ball back. Got to hit a good, good return so they get into the type of point they want. 9-10-2 here, Smith serving. That is what they need. <laughs> Rafa pointing to the sky. They get what they want, even mm -hmm. though Stratman and Smith got what they wanted. Yes. A short return. This is going to be their fifth game point opportunity. There it is. They survive game two with Stratman and Smith dipping at their heels. So we are going to be going to a game three here. Uh, I mean, I expect another very close game to finish us off here. Uh, yeah, we've seen Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt play once before, Dave. Uh, how, how have you been seeing well, this I match think, so far. Uh, I think the what what we've just witnessed in game two here is a point construction decision making that is going to enable one side or the other to have the advantage. So what we saw with the comeback by Lauren and Pat was we're going to make him work really hard on balls off the bounce that he cannot hit for a winner, and if he does, he'll make a mistake. We, so we saw a few of those mistakes. Mm -hmm. He's having to cover a lot of the court. If I'm Rafa and Sarah, I'm getting back into the let's attack anything that's short. Both Sarah did a great job with that as well and helped build that lead and certainly has that in her arsenal as well. So hit that serve, hit that third and then have Sarah set up Rafa by moving them around. I thought Lauren mm -hmm. did a good job. She has that nasty roll with the Electrum paddle uh, that can keep him honest on the backhand side. And then Pat, if he had that 10-9 point back, they got exactly what you wanted. Like you said, Dom, he just mm -hmm. hadn't slid over far enough to take that next volley and put it away, and I'm sure he'll regret that when he watches it, but game three is ready to go. All right, we have Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt on the near side as we kick off game three. Lauren Stratman and Patrick Smith with a quick side out on the far side. Zero, zero, two. Oh, Hewitt nope. almost gets it. There's the step in that I'm talking about by Pat. He, he's got to sense any chance he can. And it's hard when you get frozen out a little bit. I have a lot of balls just to Lauren to just have you. It's a mental challenge to like mm -hmm. get involved even though you're not hitting the ball. You're still there. And he did a great job of that there.
Like I'd like to see Pat get beat on his, you know, on his left shoulder before, you know, take another step over there and put pressure on Sarah and Rafa, and if you know, until they start going behind you. Oh. But that's the type of ball right there. Obviously, you got a net cord winner, but he was going to mm -hmm. pound that to smithereens mm -hmm. if uh -huh. it hadn't hit that. Good spot there from Pat yep. again. The set up beautifully by the movement inside, outside, not getting complacent, going one place constantly. I think earlier in the match we were seeing Ansbury and Smith doing a lot more dinking between the two of them. And I'm, I'm not sure if... I feel like I maybe want to see a little more of that again. Nice Hewitt with the big go, giving Sarah permission <laughs> to uh, crush that one. Problem Stratman got on her heels, yes. started backing up on Stay that. Stay in there. Stay, Stay in there. there. Stay in there. Stay there, get wide, and just block it. Oh. Mm, haven't seen too many of those so far. 3-0-2, Smith and Stratman up to a lead here in game three. That's set up by Lauren. Yes. Pat gets all the credit <laughs> there, but that's set up by Lauren going, you know, sideline middle and then uh, the pop-up and Pat gets all the credit for the put away. I'd like to say, I feel like Hewitt was at an 11. I feel like he's come down to like a 7. And it's because I of the balls that he has available uh -huh. to him now. Um, you can't play at 11 unless you're forcing those uh -huh. balls. How about a 13? <laughs> yeah. I think he heard yep. you, Lauren. Once well, I was like, I was going to ask you, Dave, you know, yeah. he, he isn't getting the balls that let him do that. Yep. How, how do Ansbury and Hewitt force those type of balls to give them those setups? Driving it like that to set it up. And then he, he got that ball on a counter attack on the last point. Mm -hmm. So they may need to speed it up a little more so mm -hmm. that, you know, because Pat hit a ball he thought was going to be a winner, and next thing you know, you got Rafa at a 13. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe being a little more aggressive. And you see him, he's dropping it now. He hasn't been doing third shot drops. Oh, no, miscommunication. But we're, we've, I, we're seeing Hewitt with a lot more drops now where yep. he was driving everything before. And you wonder if it's a little bit because the wind you'd think with the wind in his face a little he he would want to keep driving it yeah i mean uh, a drive takes legs a drive to you know mm -hmm. if, if you're mm -hmm. even a little bit fatigued you true, know on that on, and then on that ball that split i want pat straddling that 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 center line over there and that you know i'm sure lauren thought obviously that he was going to take it mm -hmm. <laughs> I thought that was going out of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> he was close. 5-2-1. We will switch ends at 6. Whoever gets there first. Uh, now that's a gimme. 
Stratman's just got to get that over. Sarah did not come up. Yep. You rarely see Sarah not come up hard. She had her caught in transition area and just missed it. That's a great flip from Pat Smith right there. We get the, the end change. In control, 6-2. Yep. Our Smith and Stratman. Yes, so even though it's not their preferred approach in a, in a hole here, they may want to speed up a couple balls knowing that they're going to have to win off the counter attack and you can learn strategy like this on our shows. APP TV, there Dave, it is. you should have Rafa Hewitt on to talk I about I these will. matches and insanity. I uh, went, filmed uh, four episodes of First Dates while we've been here in Delray Beach, Florida. So we have some amazing episodes coming mm -hmm. out. One of them being with Miss Ansbury, who's playing right now. Very excited about that. And I actually have Rafa Hewitt scheduled for Cincinnati. So oh, all Beautiful. right. Dom's got his mm -hmm. coaching academy. Learning some cool drills to do with our players and how to work on different skills. All on APP TV on YouTube. Make sure and subscribe. Folks, dink with a purpose. Lauren Stratman's putting on a clinic right now mm -hmm. with that. Leave it in front of Sarah. Can't be attacked. Move Rafa over and then find the middle and make them scramble. It's brilliant. 7-2-2 two, two here in game three. All right, Hewitt and Ansbury need to put the pedal to the gas right now. G-O. And, and Pat puts his hand up and apologizes because he did not get that clean. <laughs> no. It was off the end of the paddle and just yanked it to the sideline for a clean, <laughs> clean. miss hit winner. Yes. <laughs> the sorry, Rafa. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> At least he apologized first. He did. <laughs> that was in the seen right order. a lot of mm -hmm. leg shots today. That's the f like the fifth a one we've seen tags. today, Mark. Deckel got like three of them mm -hmm. from Ben. 7-2-1. <laughs> and Smith on their way to winning this match here unless Ansbury and Hewitt can get back into the groove that we've seen earlier in this match. <laughs> Lauren hit the ball in the net. <laughs> Pat had to go get it. He goes, I'll get it. Don't worry. <laughs> so with Sarah conceding a little ground, they have a safe zone to put the ball in. I think they've done a much better job in this game with the lead of getting there. And that's one, you know, Lauren's been rolling that over to Rafa all day. Just missed it. I mean, Sarah's used to getting out of Rafa's way. It's almost like Hewitt just needs to, if he's going to engage, just, you know, go, go all the way. Yeah, after those two holds, they desperately need a stop here, and a deep return would be a good start to that. So that's three in a row that Stratman's missed, one to Ansbury and two to Hewitt. See if she fixes it right now, right after Dave said she was putting on a 
dinking clinic. Uh, I can't believe he would even put a paddle on it, let yeah. alone just an, you know, half an inch outside. I thought that was dropping in for sure. 8-2-2, two, two. Stratman and Smith. Just a lot of daylight in front of them here in game three. Oh. <laughs> Some great digs yeah. on both sides. Stratman almost in the splits Shilt. on her knee yes. position. Trying to dig some of those balls out. Can't miss leg day. No. That's what I would like to see more of, Dave. If if Rafa Hewitt still has it in him, yeah. I would like to see him just crank it back up and just kind of relentlessly driving and attacking. Yeah, yeah I mean, empty the try vault at this yep, point. Try to force a mistake. I wow. mean, he was like playing four corners on that. He, he, yep. he had to run around his entire box to get uh, position there. That's, that's just a great point by Smith and Stratman. Oh, I liked that Sarah was going on the attack, though. We, ha we haven't seen that recently from her. I like that she... That choice just. And I think to answer what you've been saying, Lauren, it's that choice, and then it's your body's ability can they execute it mm -hmm. based on mm -hmm. what's left in their specific tanks? Oh, Sarah, <laughs> great recovery <laughs> yes. by Ansbury to get yes. back to that mm -hmm. ball. Pat Smith able to get it just out of her reach of the sweet spot on her paddle. Two points away here from winning this match are Stratman and Smith. Again, it's the Lauren Stratman Clinic yep. assisted by Pat <laughs> yes. Smith for the put away. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right? And Lauren's for doing sure. all that work. And again, it's the inside, outside, not going to the same spot. And Pat just waiting, waiting, waiting for the right moment. Boom, he's there for the put away. He gets all the credit. And Lauren's just the sideshow. <laughs> but we all know that she that's is. not the case. It's her setting that yeah, up completely. She, for sure. And, you know, when when they're in that and, and she's – it's it's probably very comforting for her knowing that when she's getting attacked by Rafa that Sarah is a bit off the line. So if I can just get it down, even in the even deep in the kitchen is okay because I'm not going to get in trouble on that next ball. Mm -hmm. So they have found that here. I think Pat has gotten more involved. Uh, he's definitely mm -hmm. the the closer after a ton of work being set up by Lauren, and mm -hmm. now they got the match on their paddle. I sure do. And that is going to be 10-3 when we come back. I, I did expect a closer score here in game three after a really close uh, game two that ultimately went to Ansbury and Hewitt, 11-9. But st props to Stratman and Smith being able to drive this game three and stay in control. Match point right here. Oh, good recovery.
puts Great that, job. Puts them in the winner's bracket final right there. All right, that is a semifinal match taking Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman, as Dom mentioned, to the winner bracket final. Sarah Ansby and Rafa Hewitt are not done yet today, though. They'll just drop into our consolation bracket. We'll see how they fare as they try to work their way back. Dom is going to head down to the studio and chat with Stratman and Smith about uh, battling against the wild man Hewitt <laughs> and how they neutralized him so well. We're going to take a quick break, guys. We'll be right back with Dom. pretty obsessed with pickleball. We want to grow pickleball into all areas of the country. When you're in person, they can actually see you and they can analyze what you're doing wrong and, you know, correct it right on the spot. We do a pre-video and a post-video so that you can actually see yourself practicing something and put it into action. It's just internally very rewarding. It's money well spent and if you want to get better, you have to do this. New Peepo Pickleball Paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Peepo Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level. What are, you, what, are you, what are you tired from? Crollo did all the work, yeah. and you just got all the credit because you got all the putaways. Sure. All right, so like, <laughs> I don't know what to say. So uh, leaning right into this, right? So going into that match, it was you had a it seemed like you had a strategy that you were not going to continuously dink to one spot more than like once or twice. You continually moved them inside, outside. You went middle, you went line, and it really set – you up, Pat. Was it something you guys were talking about before that match? Well, I mean, Rafa's really good at dinking cross court with a lot of topspin with his mm -hmm. turn it back, and he, he does it really well off the off, off the ground. I mean, so low, and he rolls it short over, so it's, it's tough. Lauren likes to roll her um, her dinks as well. 
So we're trying to do that, and then we try to keep Sarah a little bit out of it because she likes to earn you a bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, our strategy is not a secret. We always would try to, uh, I guess, set my forehand up in the middle, um, if it's possible. Yeah. But they were pretty clever in the second game by keeping me out of it as much as they could. And you know, the one side is pretty tricky because the wind swirls and. Um, if any kind of serve is short and it, it gets caught by the wind, it's tough to get in quick enough. Yeah. You, it's hard to read it sometimes. Yeah. And I mean, so we got stuck a little bit. And so we're saying, you know, going into that match too, you know, Rafa has been playing very well uh, since 8 o'clock this morning when they stepped on court. Um, was it something you were conscious of going into that match, Lauren? I was, yeah. I mean, I knew they had an upset win over Catherine and Steve, so mm -hmm. I expected them to come out hot and. I know Rafa was telling me he made some big predictions for them today. He told me yesterday. So I knew that he really wanted this today. And so I felt like I really wanted to come out just strong and just get a good start on them because they were feeling it. They played really well. Yeah, and you guys seemed to neutralize him. In that first game, um, there was a lot of he was going aggressive and driving, and you guys were literally just block, 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 everything, and then setting yourself up. Um, were, you, were you noticing that he was driving a lot? Of, of pretty much everything. Yeah, no, absolutely. But we knew that coming in, he, he, you know, there's not many guys that drive two, three in a row. Mm -hmm. usually if you drive the first one, generally the next one, the fifth ball, it would be a drop. Yeah. Generally, just because you're a bit, little bit, maybe a little bit of better position, you're a little bit further into the court, so it's an easier drop for you. The ball right. is penetrating through the court as a certain returns. Um, but he's a guy that, with, especially with his back, and he can dip that ball extremely well. Yeah. And uh, it's just tough. You know, it's tough and. If in the wind, if you don't move your feet extra, mm -hmm. you get you know you, you get it's very easy to be on your heels, and then it's very difficult <laughs> yeah. to you know to punch out I guess through the ball again, yeah. keep them back. Uh, but you know, got to give them credit because they changed their game plan and they they pretty done well and Rafa especially in the second game. Yeah, well, I've been told to move my feet, so yes, I did say that plenty of times. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> she doesn't like to listen to me for some reason. I don't. She won't listen to I'll you. Goals, I'm not letting them go, Pat. <laughs> well, <laughs> then, that and then I let one ball go, and she goes, oh, nice, great, great listening to me. With the one time. But I've been saying the sarcastic. entire match. I know it was. I know it was. <laughs> well, it's good, it's good to see you guys actually smiling at each other and not wanting to kill each other right now, considering you're <laughs> no. in the winner's bracket final right now. So it's always we're good always to see. We're always laughing, yeah. I feel. Well, Without we're pretty intense. Doubt. We're both pretty intense. We want to win, obviously. Yeah. Intense, but smiley. Yeah. Um, he forces me to smile. Yeah, I do. Well, hey, yeah, congr <laughs> congratulations, guys. You're on to the winner's bracket final against the winner of the next match. So uh, very good to see. Glad That'll to have you in one. the studio. Oh, yeah, it'll be an easy one next one, right? Yes, thanks, Tom. No problem. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back with our next match. Thanks, Tom. My favorite paddle is the B520. It's more of a control paddle, which is great for my game because I'm certainly known as more of a defensive player, but it's still great for hitting a hard serve and drive the ball well. From the transition area and from the kitchen, go ahead and drive it at me. I'm ready to block it into the kitchen. I can roll it or I can slice it. Either way, I feel like it's gonna go in. With the soft feel of the paddle, I can dink all day. So go ahead and try it out, dink me. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today.
We are back, everyone, here at the 2021 APP Tour second stop, which is the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Here in our stadium that has been transformed into three gorgeous pickleball courts surrounded by stadium seating. There's not a bad seat in the house. We're kicking it off here. This is a consolation bracket match. This will be one match to 15 points. They will switch ends at eight. We have Regina Franco and Jocelyn Devier on our near side, Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento on our far side. Zero, zero, two. The last two matches, but a phenomenal player nonetheless. Just different. I'm sorry you were muted for like the first three seconds of you talking to <laughs> That's <it>. quite all right. <laughs> there's many, like, oh no, there's, there's many people that wish that was a permanent fixture. <laughs> Never. <laughs> oh, a oh. miss hit. Lucky stayed in. Shot Steve. from Deacon there. Steve just held his paddle behind his head. He's doing it right now. And just <laughs> like, that is the worst form ever. Clean <laughs> winner. Mm -hmm. No one has that backhand ready to attack and attack better than Steve Deacon. Beautifully done right there. He's always ready. It's a tough place to put the ball. Mm -hmm. Oh, that serve goes long from Parento. Oh, oh, Deacon. What a get. Nice job by Franco, some defense, but ultimately uh, Deacon switched up his strategy, took it over to Devier, right at his feet. And they're on the board, one zero two. Oh my. Oh. Wow. That is some top-level defense right there from Parento and Deacon. Yeah, it's hard to put the ball away and mm. keep throwing it over there till maybe they miss one. Regina, beautiful touch there to put it right at Deacon's feet. And then Jocelyn's a terror, so you have to be perfect with your next ball. Um, and then he... He's, he's redoing the motion of how he'd like to have rolled that forehand, <laughs> not roll it into the bottom third of the net. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, you know, we watched the last match. When you have a guy that is all over the place, and Jocelyn certainly is that, and Jocelyn's even taller than Rafa, uh -huh, so that extension uh -huh. of the reach, you have to be so, you know, Steve's like, I, I could have gotten behind him, but you want it to be perfect. Yep. Oh, nice reset by Parento and then good eye letting that one go. And if you watch the last match, I think these teams are very similar. Jocelyn and Regina are going to play very similarly to the way Sarah and Rafa did, only obviously Jocelyn's right-handed versus uh, Rafa being left-handed. So he's mm -hmm. going to be all over the place. Regina's a phenomenal player and will keep putting the ball where they need it to to set up Jocelyn. And Jocelyn can't talk in French in this match because Catherine will know what he's saying. <laughs> can't give away secrets. I think, uh, oh, it 
touched him yeah. though? Okay, I was like, <laughs> I think it grazed him. That did for sure. I was gonna say, I think Franco and Devier can both speak Portuguese. That's and awesome. And so that is what then they would speak together. See, they gotta go to the level three there. Or maybe Spanish, but most likely both, Dave, if we're yeah. being honest. Four two two, Parento and Deacon a little lead here. Just wide. We're gonna get the side out. This in is again just one match to fifteen points. They will switch ends at eight, whoever gets there first. Oh my. <laughs> I don't know why Regina tried to get out of the way. It was clearly <laughs> coming in. <laughs> so she did an excellent job getting out of the way yes. and a nice, clean uh, <laughs> winner to the back. Wonderful ATP by Steve Deacon. Can't believe he even got to it, let alone placed it so perfectly. And the reason she almost got hit by it is he was able to jerk that way back into the court because mm -hmm. most ATPs you wait there with your forehand. That was well played by Mr. Deacon. Oh, he all, I mean, he was there. Got a paddle on it. Just, uh, didn't quite get it up enough. 4-2-2. Four, two, two. Oh, unfortunate for Deacon after all of that effort. Two for one, Regina Franco serving. <gasps> Come oh. on. Okay. What is <laughs> unbelievable? I mean, the entire stadium erupting here. That was unbelievable. Wow. off the tip of the paddle there obviously uh, Jocelyn's a player that when things are going well he sprints to the line his team's ready to go so you know they've gotten two here can they take the lead we shall see uh, the crowd is now fully engaged I mean look at this court coverage by the six foot three Frenchman. Great job by Deacon there, too, getting another ball back. And some of the time you want to attack the guy that's closer to you and keep him honest, and Deacon did a nice job there of doing that. So uh, they're facing the deficit for the first time in a while. Steve's going to keep tempting him with an unattackable ball. Ooh. Thought Deacon had a <laughs> clean put away three shots earlier, and I'm not sure what happened there. I think the wind moved in, and he, he needed one more shuffle or ah. the length of Jocelyn's arm to get there. <laughs>
plane landing in the stadium. Oh my goodness, Deacon with the kind of off the foot backwards flying Canadian just authority. <laughs> decisive with that put away. And I think that's, you know, this is so similar to the prior match because you have two talented players in Deacon and Parento who want to just keep bouncing the ball in front of them, keep Jocelyn out of the middle of this and wait for their opportunity and they've done it to get a lead. Uh. Oh, <laughs> I love any time Catherine yes. Parento is on, on the, the court, <laughs> yes. which she does beautiful. I can't believe, I mean, she got two back unbelievably. Almost got that last one. Mm. Yeah, and she's somebody that likes to defend on her backhand side. So when you attack... If you can pull it over there, as you saw at the last second, she tried to, to swing at it. Five, seven, one, Jocelyn Devier serving. Nice backhand angled put away by Deacon. He does love that backhand. Oh, and, and it is. is. He's good at it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He loves it, and we all love watching him hit it. Five, seven, two. Here in this one match to 15 to stay alive. An interesting thing about the Deacon backhand, he has a short grip. He is a one-handed backhand only guy. A lot of mm -hmm. even a lot of the guys have started to add a second hand some of the time. No, he's ready to roll mm -hmm. one hand all day long. And the return goes long, and that takes Parento and Deacon to eight. So we are switching ends. We have a, you know, unofficial timeout as the players have a minute or so here to gather their thoughts, take a little sip. Uh, you can see down there at the bottom. Uh, of course, if you are watching on YouTube right now, you are already watching on our APP TV YouTube channel. Make sure and hit subscribe if you haven't already so you get to see all the amazing action of our live streaming matches, but also all of our great original content, Dave. Yes. Uh, you, me, and Dominic Catalano all have our own shows that you can watch. They uh, come out about once every two weeks, and uh, mine is called First Dates. It's an interview-style show where we get to know the pros off the court and outside of pickleball. You, of course, uh, break down the points. With Get the Point. With Get the Point with Dave Fleming, uh, which is, I recommend highly to anyone. It'll help everyone's game. And then, of course, Dominic Catalano has Coaching Academy, where he has a pro with him go through kind of a specific skill in pickleball and some drills that might help out, along with a cooking show Adam Stone and Corinne Carr have, and a couple fitness shows as well. So... Definitely check those out, but back to the action here. Deacon and Parento still grooving here. Taking them to 9-5 on their way to 15. We'll see if this end change helps at all. Franco and Devier. I love that Catherine went after him there. Mm -hmm. She had a ball, uh, she hit it well. Jocelyn made a great defensive play. And, uh, you know, move on to the next point. You're up four. Oh. Oh, he had exactly what he wanted. That wide open down the right side. He was going for that back corner and just overhit it. And that's the thing that an aggressive guy can do. You feel like you have to be so fine and pushed it wide. Five nine two, Franco serving. Oh, uh, very 
very close. Very close call. Parento and Deacon call that out. There's no objection from anyone. Oh no, clips the net but sails long. Yeah, you know, that's the thing, Steve. Yeah, that was unlucky there. He's been driving the ball and then dropping the fifth, and it's been, uh, you know, setting their pattern in place. That time, Catherine was able to attack Regina. Now, when you attack cross court, you give the person a little more time. It's geometry, folks. It's just a farther distance. But uh, she was in a great spot to do that. And now we're on the verge of game point here. No, because we're going to 15. That's right. Sorry. <laughs> well, I mean, they're on their way. Oh, there is the patented Jocelyn DeVier deception drop. Which was featured on Get the Point this it week. It sure was. So check that out if you want to learn how to hit that shot. Nice job by Deacon inserting himself in that point, targeting Jocelyn DeVier. Yeah, and Catherine and Steve have hit the first two milestones that Dom likes to talk about in a game to 15. They got to eight first, they got to 10 first. Now we'll see if there's a comeback anywhere here. Good patience, yep. just a good old fashioned dink rally there to see who blinks first. 10 6 1. Back to Deacon and Parento serving. Phenomenal Parent defense. Out. Let's, I mean, look at that. that look at that reset. Right there. And then great job by Steve coming over after mm -hmm. his partner sort of bailed out the whole point for him. And great dinking all along there. Catherine's moving those dinks around. That's mm -hmm. what wins against aggressive guys and mixed. Move those dinks around. Especially because she's recognizing Divier wants to come over and poach yep. those dinks. And so she's switching up, pulling him back out to the line so he's not able to be as effective in doing that. She loves that fastball to the two-handed backhand and just mm -hmm. smoked mm -hmm. it there. Yeah, especially when she does the little half volley behind mm -hmm. him because he's mm -hmm. already taken a step to the right. Mm -hmm. Deacon. Wow. What? Two saves. Yeah, I was going to say, he saved it earlier. Catherine left a dink a little high, which Jocelyn was able to attack. Steve was able to reset that and then saves the Ernie attempt by Divier, which don't come back often, Dave. No, they don't. Those balls are usually pulled off of the signage on the court after a <laughs> winner. Oh, he's there. I love that Steve got in there there. He got, I mean, that's the ball he's going to make 90% of the time. Mm -hmm.
you know, Catherine just stands in there, like, yep. you know, rip it. You don't want to try and hit a winner, obviously, off that ball. Just play it down at his feet, make him hit another one, and then they got one up. Great defense by Ms. Parenteau. Watch for Jay's deception. Oh, Catherine. They managed to get back up to the line. Oh, oh no. No. She's pulling her hat what? over her eyes because she lost her what patience. What a rally. Yeah. You know, oh. Deacon and Parento are doing a good job of using that safe spot in front of Regina, because they know she's not going to hurt them with where her placement is to get out of that. And she went for the hero shot, which she doesn't do very often. That was two bounces, folks, oh, in case you're like, wondering I why. She yeah, got it. Yeah, and no, I was like, yeah. it's, it's going in. Yeah. All right. We got a timeout here from Deacon and Parento. Um, I mean, they've been playing lights out, Dave. They just a yeah. uh, couple, couple little execution errors. And it is, a, you know, after that insane rally that we just saw the point before, and then Catherine kind of, you know. Oh, this is a great physical timeout. Oh, right yeah. Here. I mean, they've exerted themselves physically, but mentally, you got to shake that off because yep. that was just so much work put in. Yes. And then to just blow it on something like that where you're just like, why would, why would I do that? That can, that can definitely frustrate you and just kind of like get in your head a little. And it's a good timeout shake it off just uh regroup yeah i mean i think carry on you know your four points from moving on mm -hmm. you know you want your whatever it takes to get my name to move to the right is what mm -hmm. you know you wake mm -hmm. up every day that you play in a tournament so i think they've found they have found the strategy now it's a matter of executing the strategy which is not let the jocelyn train get rolling mm -hmm. and you know those blocks on the prior uh, service points that they had where they kept, you know, those are the things that Jocelyn wins that point and then is like Usain Bolt back to the service line mm -hmm. to get the next point started fast enough. So just calm everything down, get your health ready here, and then let's see if Jocelyn can really get himself inserted on the other side and tighten this up. All right, let's see. It's seven eleven. as we come back from this timeout. the hands of Deacon <laughs> yeah. so fast, but ultimately, you know, they were pulling him back and forth. Yep. You know, they had a right side, left side, and then ultimately just couldn't get back in time up the middle. And it's 8-11 here for Devier and Franco. Oh. Ooh. <laughs> Regina Franco, what not happy about that. What a great read by her. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. On go on uh, the offense on the Ernie there and how to just mm -hmm, slap mm -hmm. it straight down and the place would be roaring for her. I love the choice, just missed the execution. I feel like Deacon should have kept it going back. Yeah. I, as Dom would say, I don't like the, uh, <laughs> the soft dink situation on our second streamed court guys we have another consolation match coming up or currently going on sarah ansbury and rafa hewitt taking on rob nunnery and martina coakley that's going on in our second championship court which is streaming right now as well 11 9 2 parento and deacon serving that was interesting there. They chose not to stack uh, Regina Franco and Jocelyn Duvier there. And uh, 
they were in a different position, and mm -hmm. Deacon and Parento took advantage. They are stacking here. Oh, great attack by Parento. Oh, oh no. Ben Johns is warming up over there. And we does need not a little ball help. <laughs> Regina was about ready to go high know, hurdling like over there. And I'm like, not yelling? right now. It's 13 9. Mm -hmm. Hang in there. Someone will get that. Thirteen nine two. Deacon and Parento finally getting a little breathing room. Ooh. ooh. <gasps> oh. Wow. I did not see that coming. No, because Deacon thought he'd already won the point two shots earlier, and Jocelyn made a great play, and now suddenly we're at match point. Oftentimes on an overhead, when you got people scrambling, they will separate to the sides because I think you're going for an yep, angle and straight yep. ahead is a is a great shot as Jocelyn did there. Oh, lofting serve to mix it up. Oh, she catches the line on that return. I mean, I mean, folks, with the get Parento hits the deck. These are not padded courts either. <laughs> They're <No>. hard. <laughs> they hurt when she you die. She took a tumble over on another court earlier in the day, too. The woman will sacrifice yes. her body. Love the effort. 10-14-1. Great job by Deacon calling yeah. off Catherine we Parento there. Jocelyn and I on, on the show talked about him reading that he's got the Ernie there, and he had it. He just When you see that person's head go down, you run to the spot and mm -hmm. just pushed it deep. <gasps> they survived the Deacon. Oh. oh. Yeah, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Steve just said put a ball away, but uh, <laughs> it's hard in this sport, mm -hmm. as we know. But wh what matters is they, they got the serve back, and there's still match point here with a little breathing room. But uh, they're going to want to close, close it yeah. now because leave that door open, and Franco and Devier are pushing their way in. This is going to be a point of patience. All that, set that, up that by the <laughs> little half volley behind <laughs> Jocelyn. I was like, that was match. <laughs> Catherine's walking back. It was a little anticlimactic, yeah. and it's almost like Deacon and Parento <laughs> forgot they just won. <laughs> like, that was the match, guys. You're staying alive, moving on. Yeah. Uh, what an amazing job. Uh, a big congrats to Regina Franco, Jocelyn DeVier for battling through the bracket. Uh, they are done for the day, unfortunately, but a big congrats again to Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon staying alive again on our second streaming court going on right now. We have Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury versus Rob Nunnery and Martina Coakley. Both of them also battling to stay alive in the bracket here in the consolation matches. So we're going to go to a commercial right now, and we'll be back to the action here on Center Court One, guys.
Practice makes perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out coachmepickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership. Go again until you strike just right, until the ball sings, until the other guy blinks, until the court's clear and the sun sets, until you see it in your sleep and wake up swinging. Go again. Till you can't miss. Until you can't lose. Go again. And again. Does anybody have a stapler? Oh yeah, I have one. Here we go. Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. Oh, thanks. You're welcome. Ah, oh. oh, I'm getting a cramp. Ah, cramp is. Oh, here, Patrick. I got something for you. Oh, thanks, Simone. You're welcome. <sighs> Today is just not my day. Oh, I have just the thing for you. So this is one of my favorite paddles, the V530 Power. It's a great paddle. It's perfect for the transition when you're a tennis player. One of the features that is so good about it is the fact that it's so close to a tennis racket in terms of shape. It's not circular, as you can see, it's more rectangular a bit. For me, it was a, um, a game changer for my serve, for just so much power generated because it's a bit heavier in the head. And then when I go um, to the net, I have a good, good balance here and I can be aggressive. It's so good as well for resets and for dinking, but mostly to put away the ball, you know, to create a lot of power, so it's just a perfect product. For over 40 years, Papico Sports Surfaces has been providing expert service and supplies for any court surface, from resurfacing to building from the ground up. The growth of pickleball is doubling every year. Court equipment for private residences, court seating, and court maintenance from tennis, basketball, tracks, and now pickleball. We're actually doing indoor, private, um, public facilities. There's, there's really no limit to what people are converting now. Official court surface of the APP Delray Beach Pickleball Open. PapicoSportsSurfaces.com. We're all pretty obsessed with pickleball. We want to grow pickleball into all areas of the country. When you're in person, they can actually see you and they can analyze what you're doing wrong and, you know, correct it right on the spot. We do a pre-video and a post-video so that you can actually see yourself practicing something and putting it into action. It's just internally very rewarding. It's money well spent and if you want to get better, you have to do this. New Peepo Pickleball Paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. 
New Pico Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level. Pickleball is an easy game to play, but it's a difficult game to master. There's so much you can learn from the camp, the correct way to hit a dink, the ball or the serve. Each skill that we develop within the students' games is then implemented into life play. They can take home easy, simple ways to remember how to execute a shot. Everyone is going to have a great time. It's going to be well worth their while. Welcome back to the gorgeous stadium here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center. I am Lauren McLaughlin along with Dominic Catalano and Dave Fleming. We are your voices of the APP Tour. We try to make them as soothing as possible. Yes, so we do. We on don't, a Sunday we don't afternoon. great on your Sunday ears. Afternoon. So we nice. hope you've been joining us all weekend <coughs> here for our second stop of the 2021 APP Tour. We started off our weekend Thursday with pro singles. Friday, we all uh, took the day off to do some side work while the amateurs battled it out here at the venue. Back yesterday with men's and women's doubles, and we are closing out our weekend here in the stadium today, Sunday, with our mixed doubles. We have two courts streaming all weekend long for the very first time ever. I'd say it's been a pretty smashing success, if you ask me. Hopefully everyone at home is agreeing. Um, we've been able to have extra pro matches being shown on our second court, as well as some senior pro matches. So we love to be able to get that in. Dave Fleming, did you make an appearance I on did. court two? And I was lucky enough to win that one so i was fun i got interviewed oh hey yeah how about that <laughs> extra yeah. talking i love it that. yeah As if le you don't get to talk enough exactly well <laughs> guys here on court number one we are getting back into our action we're going to have our winners bracket final coming up next here we have lauren stratman and patrick smith taking on simone georgine and ben johns the winner of this match will go on to wait in our gold medal match, which is currently scheduled to air at 5 p.m. Eastern. The loser will drop down. And we're into the action here in game one. Oh, Ben Johns coming out firing, but unfortunately into the net on that one. So 0-0-1, zero, zero, Stratman serving here in game one. Smith saying wind. You can tell uh, looking at some of the clothes that our pros are wearing, you can see them billowing a little in, in the wind. Just out. It's coming 
out of the north with a bit of a cross court angle, but uh, not super gusty at this point, but definitely probably a little bit of a factor in some of these points. Two uncharacteristic yeah. mistakes from Ben Johns. He is human. Well, we think. It hasn't been proven, but. Yeah, and when that's happening, you want to take advantage. So they need to get the ball back, Lauren and Pat, while you're getting a few unexpected opportunities. That's Ooh, a great little Stratman. winner down the line by Lauren Stratman. You don't have to hit the ball hard if it's coming at you 100 miles an hour. You just block it. Mm -hmm. Larry Scott, our USA Pickleball Certified Referee here on center court for this match. Okay. Okay, indeed. I mean, mm -hmm. it's going to come down to who's who's going to be the aggressors here. And uh, you would expect Ben and Simone to be leading that charge. Ben's actually bent over as if he's not, you know, he's either getting a good view of that or maybe not feeling perfect, maybe just a view. Just a little stretch maybe. Yeah. Oh, I, she might have had that if she went right to that back corner yep. at the angle she was at, but she tried to go too far inside and ended up just right into the post. Yeah, sometimes you can see that just literally where the two lines meet, and that's sort of your aim point. Uh, tough to execute when the ball's moving away. The fact that Ben got a paddle on that <laughs> yeah. ball, an absolute missile of an overhead from Pat Smith. Just shows how good he is at anticipation. Yep. Where he thinks it's going. little early lead here for Stratman and Smith. Really taking it to Johns and Chargine currently. That. Wow. We had a Bert in the middle of that, which was Pat Smith jumping in front of his partner to do an Ernie. Um, just Lauren Stratman's like, hit it hard at me. I'm going to just drop back in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. Ben, is that all you got? That's just breaking the first server <laughs> after this little yeah. run. So they're, I mean, they're still going here. Man child over there. Yeah. Rafa Hewitt kind of getting it out of the corner of our eye. My goodness. He's back to being Rafa Hewitt again, mm -hmm. Lauren. Beast mode. Pat Smith is uh, dining on his paddle right now <laughs> after missing that one. One five one. A lot of yelling over on court two. Hopefully you guys have both streams going at the same time. A good reach in there from Simone. Yep. Didn't even hit it hard, but again, catching Pat kind of off guard. Oh, there's that is a Ben John special right there. And he'll hit that with one hand a lot of the time, but that time put that left hand and even rolled it beautifully down the line. And Pat just reminding Lauren, go ahead and cover that line. I yes. got you in the middle. Don't worry about it. 
three, five. That's a tough hands battle if you think you're going to win that against him. Four, five, one, Ben John serving here in game one of our winner bracket final. That's in. Oh, just Ooh. missed. Oh, I don't know. What's the call? Yep, they gave it to oh, him. They gave it to him. Yeah. Yep. I think that caught outside of that a line. A millimeter of it. Mm -hmm. That's all it takes. That's it. <laughs> There's a millimeter. That's two millimeters that uh, cost Jarjim and John's there. For one, Smith and Stratman managed to hang on to a one-point lead. That's the same shot he missed before when right. he had the uh, Electrum Buffet, and now he uh, was able to go inside out beautifully because Ben is, to his great credit, anticipating that forehand in the middle. That's a great redirect. Four six one. Johns and Charjim with a chance here to just it's catches right. another Boy. outside edge of that line. He's, I mean, he's just getting as close <laughs> as you got to get to keep that ball in. He's using all twenty feet. The drag yeah. racing. Yeah. <laughs> Simone Speed Those are again. Simone Speed again, Simone exactly. Speed again. Thanks Rocking for listening. down Atlantic <laughs> Avenue here in Delray Beach, Florida. Oh. Oh, the, oh. oh, oh no. Oh, Lauren walked back. <laughs> After Lauren gets the chicken wing. Yes. I know. Walk back. <laughs> She's blocking everything on that point, including her own partner <laughs> shots. Blocking Ben, blocking <laughs> Pat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Rafa Hewitt. My and, goodness, and we just watched answer, that answer. last <laughs> point going over on court two. Rafa Hewitt turned it up to a 17 and he and Ansbury stay alive. <gasps> oh, wow. Oh, I can't believe he even got anywhere near that ball, let alone put a paddle on it in the right direction. Six six one, all tied up here. Still on first server for Johns and Chargine. Ooh, just long. Scott's just got to sell in after that. That's mm -hmm. a ball he'd never miss. Um, obviously, he can miss it one time, but. Uh, Good deep return here is what he needs. Uh, Simone has been really cranking up her offense here. Oh. Okay, yeah. You need timeout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Badly, yep. yep there yes. it is. The, I knew the Electrum, it's gone from a buffet to a thing one should yeah. toss on the ground. Like a yard Expired sale. Expired We're having the yard in sale the fridge. Now. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, and, of course, Lauren Stratman, we mentioned before, Lauren Stratman and Pat Smith, both very emotional players. Yes. 
and when it's going badly, uh, uh, the frustration is, you know, palpable from both of them. And uh, you can see him there, just yeah. kind of. He just he just literally like tapped her on the shoulder yep. and said, "My bad." And, and he does like mm -hmm, these mm -hmm. two have a great partnership. They are so supportive of each other. They know that they both play better when they're fired up. When mm -hmm, you know, when mm -hmm. Pat's screaming in German and every other language he may know. And but, uh, but he's he's not just German. Exactly. Yes, half Kiwi half as Kiwi well. Half Kiwi too. His dad I wants to make I sure everybody knows. Did you know that. I got a great message from Pat's dad last you night? You did. Yes, he sent He's me a message. The nicest he, guy ever. He wanted to make sure that he underst I understood that he wasn't like being mean last oh, night okay. on the live stream. I'm like, oh my gosh, of course Please. not. Please. So awesome. Never. So awesome. All right, let's see if Stratman and Smith can mentally recover, but that is not going to help. So when you see Ben come across here. He's holding a backhand, so if you flip it across the body, you just can't mm -hmm. get the paddle there in uh -huh, time. You just uh -huh. can't. It's a great shot. Oh, there we go. That'll that'll help mentally. And Ben's in no hurry. He is strolling back. <laughs> oh yeah. The old Marcin Rospedsky. Nine, six, two. Game one of our winner bracket final. Wow, that is an incredible yeah. drop from the baseline from Lauren Stratman. That plus a little, just a little pressure from Pat and forced an error on a point they were not in good shape on to start with. Oh, oh no. Oh. We got tumbleweeds. We got trash on the trash. Tumbleweeds. It's getting windy again. And Ben no, will take his time. Stroll. He's like, I'm gonna you Thank go. you, Larry. Here you go. Larry. Here you go. Uh, Larry, hey, here's some <laughs> trash I just picked <laughs> up. You do you got a pocket? Because I don't. Oh. Oh. A little lob action from Smith. So Ooh. Ben didn't hit that. I, from looking at the shadows, that look went right into the sun, and so I don't think Ben saw it really well. So that's why he yeah. didn't take a full swing at it. Seven nine two Smith and Stratman keeping it close here in game one. Oh, the wind. <laughs> <Look> wind. <laughs> Good point, Simone. <laughs> <laughs> ben was a one-man show for Engaged. that whole point. It is 9-7-1. Uh, trying to refresh our scoreboard, so it is a little behind. We apologize, but... Nine seven two, Jarjean serving. <gasps> oh, just wide. I mean, to be sitting on a ball from Ben that well and actually be in front of it by Lauren. So great read by her mm -hmm, and just mm -hmm. missed it. Here's a, our first game point here for Johns and Georgine. At 10-7. Basically, Ben in Simone's ear going, yes. you got that? You yeah. got that? Are you sure? Because I can come over and get it if you want. <laughs> All right. Close game one here in our winner bracket final, ultimately going 11-7 to Ben Johns and Simone Georgine. We'll take a very quick break and be right back for game two.
All right, guys, we're back. Game two getting ready to start here. Stratman serving to Jarjim. Is eating the paddle again. They played such a nice point, and he had a forehand just hit it long. Can't believe it. Might need some dental work. <laughs> zero, zero, one. Two rare <laughs> third shot drops. Back misses. to back. The odds are so low on that. Yeah. From Jarjim and John. And then a miss serve. All right. My goodness. What in what's the going it's like on the here. Twilight Zone yeah. on pickleball right, right now. If Pat hits the serve into the stands, <laughs> <laughs> we'll know something is wrong with the world here. He just made sure he, yes. I think he literally dotted the middle of the square. All right, not a strong start for either team <laughs> no. here in game two of our winner bracket final. We'll see if everyone can get it together here quickly. What in the? Uh, third shot lob from Simone oh there. Wh where that came from. Interesting, it's and over Pat Smith, but they Got out the door when he tried a drop volley that didn't drop where he wanted. Smith doing some trash collecting of his own back there. Two zero two, John serving another. So are we throwing up lobs because the sun's in their face? Uh, Could be a little bit of and that. And they're the into the wind, so mm -hmm. that ball is not going to go deep, and it's tough to track down. Seems like they've clearly dis maybe discussed yeah. that as a strategy here for game two being on this end now on the near side instead of the other end. Yeah, and as, as Don mentioned before, the shadows may indicate, you know, when you see Ben Johns not cracking overhead, maybe he's like, look, I couldn't even see that. Let's throw up some uh -huh. lobs ourselves here. Quite an impressive oh. effort uh, by Smith on about six of those shots from Ben Johns. It's just hard to win a, a firefight when you're in the transition zone mm -hmm. and they're hitting from the kitchen. He was there. <laughs> nice set up there by Pat Smith. Zero two here in game two, of our winner bracket final. Oh, A little tape yeah. love. 
hand into the wind just probably brought that just barely in. Other way, that goes out for sure. Mm -hmm. Oh, that one's long. <laughs> you hear Simone, and you're just like, my goodness, what am I doing? There's been some weird shots to have a 4-0 uh -huh. lead here. Mm-hmm. Third lob That's of the game here. And great job. Pat's got to, you know, make them beat your left shoulder and stay in there, even in a crazy point with a lob and a two-handed backhand overhead. That's what will keep the pressure back against Simone and Ben. That's a good, powerful forehand there from Pat Smith. Be able to put the pressure on there. Here, Melissa McCurley on the mic out there. Big shout out to her and pickleballtournaments.com running the tournament, making all this happen, keeping us on time. It's that same idea. He, he brings it back across your body and you're hol holding a backhand and the next thing you know it's in that chicken wing area mm -hmm. that you mentioned dom and the only way to get your forehand there is late late means the paddle face is open and guess what it's two feet wide it's a great shot by ben just sucks you right into it everything does. he wants <laughs> to do yes. four two one simone charging serving <laughs> Pat told Simone to stand up because that ball <laughs> potentially would have hit her there, but she was on the deck and it went out. Yeah, Lauren's like, we're enough of yeah, that. We're yeah. calling time out. My paddle is hitting the ground before you throw yours. Yes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A long string of German means a timeout's probably needed. Right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, thank you for joining us here on Championship Court Number 1. I'm Lauren McLaughlin with Dominic Catalano, Dave Fleming, the voices of the APP Tour, taking you on this journey of pickleball magic this weekend what? here on the second stop of our 2021 APP Tour. Delray Beach, Florida, in the stadium. Three gorgeous courts, stadium seating, people spread out all around the venue. It's awesome to see definite excitement among the crowds being able to actually be here in this type of a venue, uh, to be able to watch this kind of action live and in person. I'm sure uh, everybody out there has been itching to be in a situation where, you know, we can have the public, we can space yes. them out and all that good stuff as we are, you know, inching our way back to normalcy this year. I mean, year. just as a player yesterday, I mean, the rush we get when we're playing to have people going bananas when mm -hmm. you do something crazy. Um, it's so, it's, it's what we love about the sport and I'm yep. thrilled that uh, the Delray Beach community and anyone that came down here gets to see this magical action. Indeed. Let's get back into game two here of our winner bracket final. We have Ben Johns and Simone Jarjim on the near side, taking on Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman on the far side. The winner of this match will go on to wait in our gold medal match, airing at 5 p.m. Eastern. The loser will hope for a rematch. Ooh, wow. she got it. 
that angle. <laughs> I, I mean, that's disgusting. She had no room. No room at all. That ball was around the post only when it was around. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. that, the hook on that. Wow. That's a wow right there. Oh, and a wow on that from <laughs> Patrick right. Smith. A little backhand dismissal. Great angle. A lot of power. That was a dismissal. <laughs> uh, oh, I see oh, what oh you no. did. Yeah. Oh no, oh Welcome. No. It's Sunday afternoon, baby. Let's go. Let's oh. get crazy. <laughs> Two, seven, one. Stratman serving. Get that short return, but he's just sitting there waiting in the middle. So yeah. maybe find behind him on that one because the serve set up a point. You know, you're at seven two. You would like to have gotten that one. <gasps> oh. He was going for another bite, Dave. <laughs> yes, he yeah. was. Unbelievable. I mean, t y you see a lot of these top ladies go down low because they're using their entire body to dig. And if you stand up and all you're using is your paddle, you have no chance. You've got to use your legs when you play defense like that. It's phenomenal hands and get there. Oh, a little oh. miss hit off the so the front end of her paddle there. Didn't quite get on it. I think Simone was anticipating a drop from Pat. Yeah. She was charging hard. Okay. Pat kind of hit it about 75%. She overran it. Mm. I was like, he had that down the yes line if it didn't clip the net. Great job by Lauren. Yeah, on that one that Ben was going to hit down the line, Lauren has to sit on that and let Pat cover the middle. Oh. Need a little of that right now. That love. Stratman and Smith pulling out all the stops here to try and win this game two to take it to a game three. Otherwise, That's Ben Johns and Simone Jardim headed to the gold medal match. A good read by Pat on the yep. drop from Simone. Being able to reach that and get that out of the air. Wow. Oh, got oh. Ben caught. Caught him looking for a backhand there. Yeah, Dom, we hear a lot about shake and bake, which is mm -hmm. drive that third, hope you get a volley that pops up and have your partner come and bake the fifth. Yeah. You can shake and bake a drop just as well, which Correct. we saw Pat do there. In fact, that can even be more effective because a ball at their feet, that comes up. Sometimes when you shake and bake a drive, you're – literally only have one spot to hit the ball because it's coming with more pace right so i like to shake and bake the drops a lot and you saw those two work that to perfection so look at look at that scoreboard now mm -hmm. eight six yeah exactly on the first serve still i mean you told us all Every time we see Ben play, he doesn't like to call timeout, and no. his team his team just called timeout. I mean, well, yeah, I think Simone, Simone called. I know that. I know. I know. I understand. <laughs> but he, yeah, but I understand. Like but he yes, he's yep. part of the he's part of the call, and yeah. you know, um, I think it's you know she was you know like I'm not letting this run happen on my watch, and I mm -hmm, get it. Um, mm -hmm. 
<laughs> Lauren goes, Ben, you want to look at it? He goes, no. New ball? He's like, it's got yeah. 40, 40 holes, holes in it. I'm right. fine. We're back in. I'll break this one, too. <laughs> Stratman and Smith have been on a little roll here. Oh, Simone bailing Ben out. Yes, let's look at it again. You don't see him just like, I mean, before I saw him stretching or something, he just wasn't in an athletic position there, which is a rare sight. Yeah. I mean, he has played two very long days of pickleball already. Indeed. Uh, since he likes to win gold medals and only gold medals, makes for long days. So this is his third one. So that's when you're trying to beat the best in the world, can't miss a third long like that. Uh, but they're back in it here. Oh, no. Quick shout out to Blake, one of the gentlemen who's a uh, basically been volunteering all weekend at the venue and all week long. He's a local here. He was running one of our cameras all day yesterday. He's over about to play on championship court three. Go Blake. Thanks Blake. Nine, seven, two here in game two of our winner bracket final. That Stratman roll we've seen all day. Beautiful dink pressure. Seven nine two Stratman serving. That's the winning formula. It's just got to be executed. It's mm -hmm. right there. I mean, you you got a ball in your forehand against uh, Ben and Simone. That's bingo. Yes, please. Simone's <laughs> like, ah, you. And then doesn't say anything. <laughs> wow. I mean, did someone get like a still shot of Patrick Smith just full yeah, blown, no. like, Floating. superhero hanging in the air for five seconds before he hit that overhead? Oh, my oh. goodness. Wow. That's two. I mean, some. Sometimes you want a game three. The net wants a game it three, clearly. It does. And the opportunity is on the table for these two to come back in this. They got to execute. Just, oh, I needed those two. Needed to get at least one out of those yep. two. Yeah, or at least make them beat you on right. something special. You know, there's nothing, you know, sometimes you got to tip your cap, but not not losing those up. Yep, the ball after the flying Walenda. It and bends like I broke yeah. another ball. <laughs> Can I have another one? Nine 
seven one. Ben John serving here in game two. Hoping to head to the gold medal match. Oh, that was pretty. <laughs> ben shakes his head at the end of this. It's a couple times you've yeah. seen him mm -hmm. looking for that forehand mm -hmm. in the middle and got beat over his left shoulder. I think he'll take that because a lot of the time trouble comes from that. But it's a great ball by Pat. Oh, oh. hey. Crollo with the backhand winner against Ben John. Okay. I like it. I like it a lot. Can they play some solid points here at 7-9? They have not the last four. Smith really wanted to object verbally, but uh, kept it inside. 18, seven, and we have a timeout instead. That was very, very close. Yep. Quite the effort by both Smith and Stratman to stay alive during that rally. Disappointing way to end it just just long there. Yeah, yeah I, like, they, I like it. Go ahead, Don. They've, yeah, I'm just saying they held, they've held the past like four t serves yeah. for Simone and Ben and have just not been able to capitalize on it. Need to do that soon or else uh, this game will get away from them. Yeah, I like, you know, the phrase we all use is we've got to get off a certain number. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, mm -hmm. we're sick of our score being whatever it is. So mm -hmm. I got to, we got to get off seven. Um, mm -hmm. So let's call timeout and you know, let's talk about what we want to do. Do we want to serve a specific spot here? How do we want to, you know, fabricate a point here that enables us to get to eight? Then we're within one. Okay, now we're feeling good. So let's see. Let's see what they have in store after their time under the umbrella over there. Seven nine two. Lauren Stratman serving. Oh hey. All right. That's Got how you want to come out of a timeout right mm -hmm. there. Got the short return. Oh, and a ball coming oh, over. Luckily, just close. at the end yeah. of that point. Ben and had enough. Yes. And the drive was up a bit, so him having enough plus a ball that's <laughs> in the strike zone is not a good uh, position for Lauren to be in there. But nine up here. If Ben gets his foot out of the way, Simone has yes. that. Watch where her position yeah. is here. She slid back in. She's going to get yeah, that. She even yeah. swung. Yeah. yeah. Oh, excuse me. The kick save would have looked good in the hockey arena. <laughs> oh, oh yes. different serve there from Simone. Crowd. Whoa. 
and <laughs> the limbo to <laughs> make sure they win the point. People love a firefight. We Holy all do. Holy cow. We all do. 10-9-2, match point here to send Simone Jardine and Ben Johns oh. to the goal, but uh, uh -huh. we'll see if Stratman and Smith have anything to say about it right now. Ben lives for games and match points. Yes. And so he's going to try and do whatever he can. Mm -hmm. Stratman's gone a couple too many yeah. times to try and hit winners past Ben that aren't there. But Blake gets the winner on court three over there. Yeah, Blake. We'll drop Blake a little love. Double up. Oh boy. It's gonna get crazy. Ten of piece Simone gave ground a little bit there, which was surprising. All right, so they've tied it up at least. Puts a little more pressure on Ben and Simone here. 10-10-1 here in game two of our winner bracket final. Got it. Not a player on the court thought that third was going to get over the net, mm -hmm. including the hitter. But uh, here we are. Match point here. Nice. Not yet. Nope. It's good. Where are you going, Rick? <laughs> I mean, I have to say, Lawrence Ratman and Patrick Smith have been near perfect at least the second half of this game. They are just coming out on top of points that you don't expect teams against Ben and Simone to come out on mm -hmm. top of. They're just getting everything back. They're getting the right shots. They're getting that net level. Like <gasps> oh. He almost like pulled off of it a little bit and ended up kind of miss hitting it. But that's what I'm saying. It's like you think those points are over well before they are. 11, 11, 2. Patrick Smith serving. Patrick says, where's the wind? <laughs> Lauren tried an inside out, yeah. tried to fool uh, Ben in the middle of that point, and he was not fooled that time. <gasps> oh. Little Precarious. <laughs> 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 That's for you, Colin. Ben's like a shark in the water on game point. Oh. <gasps> He's got 
I'm saying is like they're just they're just hanging in there. Yeah. They are grinding. Hit a deep return and try and get the ball back here. 12-11-2. Match point still here. <gasps> oh, it's yeah. in. I thought that was going long for sure. <gasps> oh. Ooh, way to pull off that Stratman. She, like, she likes those. That was a, a lot of internal fortitude to not uh -huh. take a swing at that uh -huh. one. <gasps> Stratman and Smith will oh. not go away. That's three forehands in the middle that Ben has pushed deep. And I like that they're firing. They're like, we're going either to the next game or not, based on the way we're playing, mm -hmm. not playing tight at all. Wow. Oh, no. And it is a match point for the Stratman and Smith on server one. They're going to have two chances at it. There has been more net courts, I swear. The net wants a game three. Oh, it's, it's getting close to that edge. <laughs> wow, Pat had one uh, before that to uh, really uh, uh, finish uh, uh. the point and wasn't able to. Let's get lined up right. God, we do not need a wrong server now. 13, 12, 2. Game three! Game three, holy oh. cow. Talk about a little pestering, annoying <laughs> team that will not go away as much as Ben and Simone wanted that to be the yeah. case. Unbelievable. And even on that last point, it was atypical of Simone could have cracked the ball before that and oh. just rolled one back. Oh. Do you see Ben? He's already ready to play. Yeah. He's just on the court, ready to play, ready to go. This is, wow. this, this is Ben Johns right now. You he guys is on, like, you let's go. Him? I got to take care of some business. Right. <laughs> Simone wow. had to get her drink and come out there to talk to him. He, do, what do you think's going on in Ben Johns' head right now? I can't believe I'm not sitting, <laughs> sipping some right. pickleball but is it, cocktail. Is it, just determination is it frustration is it it's he's mad I think is it's it a little bit of all of it yeah. but it's more determination it's more like i just don't like losing mm -hmm. especially losing when it was balls coming off my paddle yep. uh, there were yep. three errors at the end that uh um came off of his signature franklin paddle so the you know, Simone's over there. You don't need to pump up Ben Johns, uh, but you always it's always good to have encouragement no matter what. Um, I think the beginning of this next game is going to be huge. I mean, mm -hmm. Pat and Lauren, as we've talked about many times, are emotional players. Apparently, Lauren needs some potassium. She's uh -oh. getting a banana from the crowd, so that's good. Uh, you know, if they get a couple of points and keep this little – onslaught going and you know the scrapping effort they've put together you know then you start believing i can win this yes and of course uh, you can see at the bottom there app tv is our youtube page that we are currently streaming on right now if you haven't make sure and subscribe you will be able to make sure and know when all of this amazing pickleball action is happening of course, next we will be in Cincinnati, May 13th through the 16th. So we'll be back with all that great action. But uh, we also have our original content shows as well on our YouTube page. So 
thank you so much for watching. Make sure and like and subscribe and follow uh, you know, our Facebook and YouTube pages so you're always notified when we go live or have something going on. And uh, it's just this amazingness. It's un I mean, the crowd is just gasping, cheering. Like It's just been nonstop entertainment. That game, too, was... D I, prob I mean, the it closest to the end <laughs> game that we've had so far. So we're about to kick off game three. Patrick Smith, Lauren Stratman on the near end. Simone Jarjim serving us off with Ben Johns on the far end. We'll switch ends at six. And when you switch sides, the wind's a little different. Obviously, Simone hits a third. She makes all the time right in the net there. And Got to get dialed back in. We just heard from the truck our next match up after this is going to be Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento versus Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury. Who's Rafa Hewitt? Uh, just like the, the wild man from earlier who was just <laughs> all over the place. I can't wait to have that match next. It's going to be a good one. But let's finish this outrageous match first. Winner bracket final going on right now. Game three. A uh, little miss hit there from Lauren Stratman. And Simone being a little more aggressive with those dinks to put pressure on Lauren. Well played there. I like that there from Pat and from Lauren. Nice and aggressive, but an aggression with some control. Keeping the ball in, keeping it nice and deep. 1-0-2, John serving. Here to start us off in game three. Stratman with that little inside yeah, out again to uh, Ben's left shoulder. She's definitely she's not catching him on it too many times, but you know if she's not necessarily getting beat on it either. He, I mean, he's getting it back, but they're able to continue on and, like you said, keeping him honest. That was the same swing there. Um, obviously, you're, you're not trying to hit Ben there, but uh, they just need a patient point here. They've got uh, they got to get off the zero, just confidence-wise. Mm -hmm. Both went for it, and therefore no one got it. Come on, Pat. Lauren was laying on the ground <laughs> ready for it. Let her hit it. Get out of the way, Pat. <laughs> one zero one. Johns and Jarjim serving. Wow, Stratman, so that on was top a of that yeah, one, finally. finally. <laughs> Very awkward, but got, got that forehand up. Because she's been frustrated with herself that that has been beating her. And great paddle position. You know, if you keep keeping them at one, that was what was uh -huh. so huge. I mean, they haven't given up a point. They've scored like one point on like 12 serves. That's insane. It's her she had it's it, but she was five feet off, off the kitchen back. line. 
If she's a little closer, she probably has it. Yeah, that zero can get bigger and bigger if you're on it a long time. Now, the one makes you feel better about it, but uh, you got to keep, keep the defense going. I just don't get there the was concept. a fire fight. I, I don't get the idea of going hard at that. No. Um, I don't, you're trying to don't try and prove a point here. Win the point. Um, hey. And they're trying to go at Ben with balls that are hard, and it's not happening. And then he gets going, and a short return gets smoked at your partner. And now that one is a three, and, and they're off and running. Mm-hmm. You gotta attack middle to Simone. Middle to Ben, out of play. <laughs> that was maybe like the most egregious unforced error that we've seen out of Patrick Smith so far this match. Well, I, I think he heard Dom a little bit from the standpoint of keeping it away from Ben, but not like that. Like, like you can dink, you can, it, oh, dink it. Just uh -huh, uh -huh. that you cannot hit a winner from where that ball was. And yet no. the swing and the, uh, the effort that Pat went into that one was looking in that manner. So, I mean, okay. Not the start we wanted at 4-0 if you're mm -hmm. Lauren and Pat, but uh, that's a great timeout. Obviously, we're going to switch sides at 6, but you would like to have something on the board before we do that. We talk about milestones. We talk about mentally, how are these things going to feel? Yeah. You know, Ben's over here surveying, doing some people watching out here. He's ready to go. Simone's getting a stretch in. They're ready to go. So you have them feeling confident. You're down four. Again, deep return and get a point that you like here is what you've got to do. When you call timeout and you're receiving, that first return is humongous. Mm -hmm. All right. Four zero two as we come back from this timeout. Simone Jarjim serving. There it is, Dave. Yeah, and you know. We want, if I'm coaching those two ever, you want Pat aggressive in the middle. And now you got the ball back. So what happens? nothing to say it was, no. it was so it was good a, there's nothing to say except i don't know how to tip my cap and have the I viewers mean. hear me Almost another chunk out of the paddle. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, thanks. Just like all the way around. Yeah. Just uh -huh. yeah, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> He's running out of paddle. Four zero one. Ha <laughs> 
<laughs> Pat just asked Simone, how does she get out of the way every time? Twice today. Twice for sure. And that ball was coming real fast. Yeah. We got a ball coming over from our court number two. We got a mixed senior pro. We can blame Rip, Rick Witzkin for that. We have the bronze medal match over there. Oh, nice. Five, zero, one. That wasn't a, that, that worked out for what Lauren wanted there. Did not get over the oh top no. of that put away. You know, and we talk about the difference between tennis and pickleball a lot, especially on APP TV, get the point. And it's being ready for that second ball, like it's uh -huh. a setup. Like that in tennis is a winner because you're trying to hit it down the, down the line, through the ball, just beat the person. Mm -hmm. She said, that's what I wanted. Well, if that's really what you wanted, then you knew you hit that and you knew what the second shot was going to be and you had that forehand ready and she was just a tad late. And it's hard, especially as you keep getting better at pickleball, to train your mind to go it's one and two and maybe three. Yeah. But if you're thinking of that second ball to start with there, you're going to have a, she had a gorgeous setup there and just was a little late. And when you say that's what I wanted, you're you're just fractions off being being ready there. But I, you yeah. know, again, the the aggressiveness here is what we want. But six nothing's a tough hole. We've switched ends here now. Ben John Simone Georgim <coughs> serving on the near side. Oh, my bad. <coughs> ben hesitated just a little. Almost thinking Simone was yeah. going to step in with her backhand. I think he saw her autograph in the corner of his eye. Oh, here they go. Oh. Look out. <laughs> While they chase the ball Come down, again, we I got to reinforce th the two best players in the world when they're into the wind are throwing lobs up offensively. Yeah. Work on those, my friends that are watching. It's a huge part of the game. We might want to call a Wichita uh, orthodontist and have him ready. <laughs> uh -huh. Chewing on that paddle. Mm. All right, they're off that zero, Dave. It's been haunting them so far, this game three. Yep. We'll see if... Uh, that gives them at least a little confidence to put a little something together here. People are here watching this, and you can hear the gasps yes. yeah. as Simone got that back. Oh. Just Merch on the bronze medal senior match, just going around the post with an absolute winner. Yes. I want to see that angle. Lauren, with all that work, unbelievable. Uh, I'm going to 
I'm going to exchange with you, and then I'm going to turn one of yours over on my forehand and rip it at your partner. Yeah. You know, I, I like out. the timeout here. I think, you know, when you look at that 14-12 score and the energy they had to invest in, right. in getting that back, it was awesome, but all it did was draw you even. So mm -hmm. now you're, you're like, do you have more in the tank to get that level reset? for yeah. yourself here and and you're playing the best team in the world so um going back to that uh, lob before dave kyle mckenzie says offensive lobs from the baseline a huge part of the game agree to disagree and i think more you, you just meant lobs in general yes. are a big part of the game yeah. not so much that specific lob type of lob no i i i to clarify that i'm talking a a lob as part of your arsenal is, mm -hmm. is what I'm recommending. A lob from the baseline rarely works well, but if you got the wind in the right place and the sun, it's something to consider. Always just have it in your bag of tricks. Yep. Oh, great leave. Hopefully that clarifies for you, Kyle. I knew what you were talking about, Dave. 7 1 2. Oh, oh. Got some work to do here, Smith and Stratman. 1 7 1. There's the energy. Now can they build with it? Mm -hmm. Better start now. Better. Better keep going. Yeah. They've doubled their score. Two, seven, two. Got to keep it going. Oh. Wow. I mean, phenomenal ATP or around the post defense by Pat, and they got back in the game and then the point. It's frustrating when you save one of those and then you end up mm -hmm. with Ben hitting a mm -hmm. BB for a winner. 7-2-1, John serving. Game three of our... Winner bracket final. That's no one told her that she should stop doing that, yeah. guys. <laughs> no, she's trying to catch him. He's not being caught. Wow, indecision to indecision there, and it yeah. worked out in uh, Jarjim and Johns' favor. They had no idea who was hitting that third till oh, it was almost on second. them. Last second from Simone. <gasps> so far out. <laughs> And Pat knows it. He's he's standing on the sideline, reached yeah. out to hit that. <laughs> and just like that, the shark is in the yeah. water. Let's see what he does. Match point. There's there's Aww. the lob from the baseline. And I mean, if you're gonna. <laughs> It would not have worked had Pat Smith right. not, you know, s 
hit that straight down into yeah. the ground. Yeah. Uh, that's not the way Stratman and Smith hoped to close out this game, but what a match that was in our winner bracket final. Ben John, Simone Georgi moving on to the gold medal match, currently scheduled to be played at 5 p.m. Eastern. Up next, we have Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento, playing against Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be right back. Home financing doesn't have to be puzzling. Whether you're looking to purchase a home or refinance, North Point's low competitive rates, client-focused service, and streamlined process make sure you have the right loan for the right home. The Brandt team at North Point Bank works hard to ensure you have the best information to make the best decision to put all the pieces of your financial puzzle together. There's a better way to do financing. Connect with the Brandt team to learn more today. Pickleball paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Pico Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level.
all pretty obsessed with pickleball. We want to grow pickleball into all areas of the country. When you're in person, they can actually see you and they can analyze what you're doing wrong and, you know, correct it right on the spot. We do a pre-video and a post-video so that you can actually see yourself practicing something and putting it into action. It's just internally very rewarding. It's money well spent and if you want to get better, you have to do this. All right, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we had a little uh, misinformation earlier. Uh, just we're good, but uh, we we misspoke. Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento are playing Dekel Barr and Corinne Carr here next. The winner of this match will go on to play Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury, who. The winner of that match will then go on to play Pat Smith and Lauren Stratman in our bronze medal match. So we are winding down the bracket here, nearing the end, but uh, we misspoke. Sarah Ansbury and Rafa Hewitt are waiting for the winners of this match. Again, Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento playing Dekel Barr and Corinne Carr. I expect... An excellent match here coming up. There's nothing but amazing teams going on right now. And uh, I expect every match to be amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, you got. it's just fun to say car and bar. Let's start know, there. Right? It's like the Dr. <laughs> Seuss team. Uh, so that's awesome. You know, again, here you've got a matchup where Catherine and Steve are going to want to put the ball down at the feet because once again we have a big tall aggressive guy on the other side which is Dekel Barr and he has pro he probably hits his forehand harder than anybody and on the tour so short returns are going to get punished he is going to be all over the place again he wants to dictate what's happening in the match and Corinne is We've, we've seen her, we saw her Punta Gorda playing with Adam Stone, mm -hmm. setting the table. She has more offense in her game now. So that will be faced with just the precision of Deacon and Parento. And it'll be interesting to see which style ends up uh, taking this. And it's just going to be uh, me, Lauren McLaughlin, along with Dave Fleming for this match. Unfortunately, our, our third gentleman, Dominic Catalano's, Fighting a bit of a migraine right now, so he is taking a little break, hoping to get over that. So we certainly hope he is feeling better soon and can rejoin us. We're into the action here. This will be one match to 15. And why not start with an Ernie for a winner? Why not? Quick two points here for Car and Bar. No. <laughs> Deacon not calling a timeout. Just dropped his paddle. <laughs> we had over uh, 1,500 people watching our last match, our winner's bracket final. So. A big shout out to all you guys watching at home. Hopefully you guys are enjoying this as much as we are. So Catherine's going to be forcing the issue, bouncing the ball. You're going to see some interesting strategies with Dekel and Corinne. And that's, and that's one of them. They actually leave Corinne on the left side and have her sit on her forehand, and it's an effective strategy.
put a paddle on it. Deacon, good attempt after that massive Ernie from Dekel Bar. So this is interesting. So everybody at home, they are stacking Dekel to the right side. Uh -huh. And so just remember, it doesn't, everything doesn't always have to be the same with the guy standing on the ad side or the odd side. Oh, looks like they're mixing it up a yep. little. And I like the idea of mixing it up because it just keeps the team on the other side off balance. I'm always going to drop my third there. Wait, Deckel's there. Now i got to mm -hmm. change my mind. Oh, a third Ernie already. Oh, body shot. Yep. And, of course, uh, Steve Deacon and Deckel Bar paired up yesterday. Yes, they did. Won our bronze medal in men's doubles. And now friends become enemies. Yes. <laughs> Three, one, how this works. Of course, this is just one match to 15, 15. everyone. We'll switch ends at s eight. And this is to stay alive in the bracket. Loser gets to put their flip-flops on, Dave. Yes, they do. I get the privilege of losing and coming up to the mic. I so know, uh, at least <laughs> you had a purpose in your I loss, did. Dave. <laughs> I did, especially with our boy Dom. I know. Mm, Corinne Carr. So you can see all of the lobbing, which we've talked about quite a bit here, into the wind. So that's, you know, the direction and throwing it over the top like that. Beautiful shot. Set up another winner. Tim loves every once in a while that cross court lob. Because yep. you're trying to get it over the left shoulder mm -hmm. of the person to your diagonal. And she executed that brilliantly there. Out to a huge lead here early 7-1 kind of out of nowhere Dekel Bar and Corinne Carr got to be feeling pretty good right now just confidently continuing on whereas Steve Deacon Catherine Parent you can see them chat and strategy there clearly what they've been doing hasn't been working yeah. so they got to try to make some adjustments here because this train is leaving the station really fast and we're gonna of course get a get a little break as well once we get eight but of course steve and Catherine trying to hold off that happening for yeah, at least they gotta, a little while here they got to get back to what they did against uh other aggressive male players drop the ball and look for their opportunity i mean we've had ernie fest here and that mm -hmm. just gets deckled going So that's what I talked about at the beginning. You got this, you know, the big forehand's going to come. If your return is anywhere near where he can get it, he's being aggressive with it. Um, Corinne playing beautifully to uh, round out the team with lobs, with defense sitting on that forehand when they did. They've thrown all the strategy that they wanted at them, switching it up a little bit and... This is an impressive both execution and strategic start, but you got to get to 15. 8-1, mm -hmm. changing ends, current card, deco bar on the far side now. Deacon right. smiling because he got away uh -huh. with a ball to Corinne that could have pasted him, but uh, mm -hmm. Catherine turned on nice counter attack there so all right one eight let's see if team canada both of these players are from canada mm -hmm. can get it going sounded like a bit of a miss hit from yep. catherine there Oh, oh no! <laughs> okay, you don't see 
So that's that happened <laughs> very often. So that's called a burt when you run in front of your partner for the air quote, Ernie. Uh -huh. I've, I don't know if I've ever seen someone get hit with it like <laughs> that hard. It's hard to not see bar <laughs> coming <laughs> since she's so big. Corinne clearly dialed in. I just love this strategically. She is dictating it. Deckles just shrinking the court. It's perfect strategy right now. Stadium just reacted to that. Wow. There's two things that make people go crazy on points. It's unbelievable defense and balls that hit the net. And we had that on back-to-back -back shots right uh -huh. there. I mean, the only chance that they're back in that point is if it plopped on the top and then still lost the point. <laughs> Oh, Corinne Carr with the ATP. Beautifully placed right in that back corner. And uh, I mean, this is the Dr. Seuss highlight reel for Carr and Barr. Mm -hmm. It's uh, there. The wind is picking up now, Dave. Yeah, yeah. We can feel it up here in the booth. You can see it in the trees. It is starting to gust now. Same thing happened yesterday. Wasn't yep. too crazy. Got a little crazy and then died down a little. Um, so... It is possibly going to start affecting these points just a little bit more, depending yep. where the shot's going to go. That's interesting. They've been setting up this Corinne on the uh, odd side on defense, primarily, as you see her switching again right there. And it's easier to set up on offense because when you serve, you can put yourselves wherever you want. Here it requires some movement, but they obviously it's working and they like it. Just long. Beautiful idea from yeah. Carr. And the wind's Up a bit to her back, so that definitely pushed. That's why that other lob she hit on that side was so, so silky, because mm -hmm. it's hard to lob with the wind at your back. Just love, I mean, I've said this seven times, but she only has to sit on her forehand there. Deckel's mm -hmm. got the middle, mm -hmm. and she's playing it brilliantly. 10-4-1. Here in our match to 15. Winner of this match will go on to play Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury next. That was some wind right there on that return yeah. for sure. Held that up yep. from Deacon. Rare frustration from him as well. That's a fight that uh, Mr. Barr wants every time. You know, we all have heard p the kids say, come at me, bro. Well, <laughs> that's what he <laughs> wants. Mm -hmm. Oh, lucked out there. Of course, uh, Deacon and Parento have a huge mountain to climb here, being down 13-4. I think, you know, mentally might even be the harder thing to overcome at this point. Yeah. The frustration 
mounting every point that doesn't go their way. So that's two good aggressive points they've won in a row after that uh, sort of clunked return and the win that saw the rare frustration from Deacon. You know, gets 13-7 or something here, and then it gets a little more interesting. This pattern just is destroying them. They got to find, maybe go behind Barr's forehand, believe it or not, uh, and just put a stop to this pattern. Good effort by Deacon. Deacon like rolled that down his I don't know arm what and part of that <laughs> beautiful green head paddle it hit, but it because mm -hmm. uh, DeKalb hit that really hard. Uh, mm -hmm. Thought the point was over for sure. Good leave. I think Deacon might have pulled the trigger a little early, a couple shots before that, but. Catherine bailed him out. out. Yep, Catherine bailed him out. Wow, great job by Deacon and Parento staying alive in that point. And uh, the point started with Corinne thought they called off the chain. She ran almost into a DeKell's back on mm -hmm. the way to the net. And there's that uh, seventh point we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe it can be eight or nine now. You have to imagine a timeout's coming from Car and Bar here if this continues. Ah. Parento's got a couple of those opportunities where Barr's pulling her out wide, which she gets there. She just, she can't get the paddle quite yeah. on the way she needs to. 13-7-1. Two points away from taking on Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury next. I mean, that's defending the hardest hit ball in the, <laughs> in the game right there. And here they go. Okay. 13-7. 7-13-1. Held him off. Well, I've hit it 750 miles an hour 11 times in a row, and it keeps coming back. How about one that's half a mile an hour for a he, drop he shot He pulled winner. a DVA right he there. He did. Beautiful shot by Mr. Barr. What a rally, though. Oh, these are unbelievable points. Caught him up yep. on that right shoulder, a little flick up there. And that's the difference between if Corinne's dink can bounce, that shot isn't coming mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if he can take it out of the air trouble Point. 
This is and getting it is. Yep, very interesting, yeah. Dave. Yep, now mm. the Engage and Vulcan paddles have suddenly hit the, hit the ground on the other side, so. I mean, it was 13-4? Yep, it was. And now it's 13-9, and Deacon Parento still have the serve when we come back from this timeout. We uh, predicted there was probably one coming from Bar and Carr, as, I mean, they've just been able to come out on top of some amazing yes. rallies, which that just really can fire a player up. Uh, and take the life out of your opponent, too. Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, I talked about how we've got Corinne on the on the odd side here. She'd won all of the all of the dink battles. She would kept them low, missed one, left one just a little high that Deacon took advantage of. So mm -hmm. uh, our bar and car thinking about maybe we we want to stay out of this now or maybe they're on to us a little bit um if i'm them i'm up for i wouldn't change my strategy it'll be interesting to see what they choose to do here. Mm -hmm. all right we're back 9 13 deacon and parento serving oh corinne caught him mm -hmm. Good time out. Get the ball back with no damage again. I mean, that's what they needed. They're staying in this. Yeah. So they've switched back to having Barr's forehand in the middle. And now, um, now their tried and true strategy, they're, they're now questioning it because they're changing. Now they're going back to it. Uh, it is 11-13, Dave. Yes, it is. The Canadian <laughs> duo is coming. Maybe they must have drank a little like maple syrup, yeah. which is like Popeye's spinach to uh, them. Holy cow. They have gone on a. <laughs> Corinne's just I had some unexpected missed nine forehand point volleys. Run, there. Dave. Yes. It is tied at 13 now to stay alive. This is. Ha th if you're Dekel Bar and Corinne Carr, are you just. How, how do you mentally come back from that? Well. You just lost a nine point <laughs> lead well on your way to cruising through into the next round and now it's go it's gone it's gone i can tell you that uh, corinne went to her box and was laughing after whatever they said to her to settle her down so that's good because her forehand volley is so good and they went there three times in a row and got three mistakes so mm -hmm. will bar and car switch back so that the bar forehand is on that odd side or not. I mean, it's 13 all on a one, I believe, right it here. Is. And this is. They're two points from I, a match. I mean, uh, the match is never over till it's over, but this is unexpected. <laughs> There's a Canadian match if point. If Deacon and Parento pull this off, this will be maybe the best comeback that we have seen of the tournament. I agree. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh my 
my gosh. Wow. I. Yeah. That. An 11 0 run by Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento. That was unbelievable, Dave. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I talked about when it was 13-4. Can you get three, you know, get to seven? I know, you're like, come on, just try to get like a couple yeah, points. Like just, just stay in it. Scrap it out. Their strategy was working beautifully. And then they won some of those manic points in the middle of that, too. Just, you know, Dekel was flying around, smoking the ball. Catherine's digging it out. Steve's digging them out. And... You know, when it's 13-10, it's suddenly, oh, this is believable. This is believable. And they couldn't score. And on, on their side, they never switch to the mm -hmm. receiving posture that they tried. For whatever mm -hmm. reason, mm -hmm. I'd love to hear. Um, and I'll, I'll talk to them later. Um, Do you want to go interview them? Well, I'm more interested. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm interested in, yeah, yes, I would yes. love to actually go interview them. Who, which ones? With the winners. Oh, yeah, yeah. go. We're going right. to go. Dom's out, but Dave Fleming, he's rocking it down in the studio. We got to talk to them about that comeback. That was bananas, B-A-N-A-N-A-S. Don't go anywhere, guys, and we'll be back with another amazing match. Practice makes perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans, and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out coachmepickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership. All right, everybody, we are back with the Comeback Kids. Uh, 
Okay, let's get right into it. You're you're trailing 13 to four, and I said on the broadcast, well, maybe if they get to seven, this could you know get get two or three. What were you able to do to come all the way back? Just unbelievable. Tell our viewers. You know, I I, I told Catherine at like 13 four down. I said, let's just chip away one at a time, one at a time, one at a time. And I you know every point that we got, I kept saying to her one at a time. And uh, it, it, you know, I knew if we, we cleaned it up a little bit um, and, and cut the errors way back, because we, we started slow again, right? Yeah. We've been the slowest yeah. starting yeah. team of this tournament, I think. <laughs> um, but at, at the end of the day, you know, I, the hardest thing to do um, for an opponent is to close you out. Yes. You know, that was back from my tennis days, right? So I just knew if we kept strong and I never give up, I think uh, we, I like our chances. Right, and I think we kind of stayed in the present moment instead of thinking, on oh, this is not going well, you know, it's 13-14, I mean, 13-4, like, what are we doing? But we stayed positive, and then we were cheering up. I mean, like, every single uh, point that we were making, we were kind of like just a big fifth pump, and we were getting fired up, and that really helped us to, to come back in the game. So talk about your defense, because the, you know, Dekel is a big presence there in the middle of the court, why were you able to play such good defense against that onslaught coming at you? I think we were just trying to make one more. <laughs> like, we never know what's going to happen. You know, if you hit the ball over the net, you never know what your opponents are going to do. And uh, again, we were just fighting so hard to get to the, all the balls and just trying to make them play instead of letting them hit winners. Yeah. Well, and, and I think Catherine and I did a great job of bailing each other out. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes... You leave one up and you're like, oh, and then you save yourself, and that's great. The one strategy I was talking about throughout the broadcast was a choice they made. When they were receiving, they left Corinne on the ad side, and, and, and it worked very well for them. What did you do to kind of make that actually work for you? Because you had to score when they were doing that. Yeah, and, and, and I'm very comfortable on that left side. And so when we had even talked about it, when, when they moved Corinne over, we were kind of salivating, right? Because <laughs> like it, it's where I kind of do a lot of my work. And um, I, I thought we really exploited it well. And it, we, we were able to keep Deckel uh, out of the equation yes. when they moved uh, her over. So worked for you obviously yeah. coming up you've got a match with rafa hewitt and sarah ansbury i know as we walked over here to the studio i i, I believe salivating at the opportunity is what came out of your mouth so why don't you tell your the viewers why why you're excited to have this opportunity so we're excited because we lost to them earlier so they're the ones that put us in the the back draw and uh we're just really excited to to get a chance to um, to have a rematch against them yeah, we're hoping, and for do a, better. we're hoping for a little bit of redemption. Yes. So they, of course, another very aggressive guy in the middle. So what, what are you going to try and do to overcome that here in this match? I think we'll, we'll, we'll chat similar. about it. But I, I think we're going to pretty much the same game plan as before. Um, you know, try to try to go behind, uh, you know, Rafa, Rafa a little bit. He's having a great tournament. Yes, he is. He's playing really well. Uh, I, I've, I, his hands have improved substantially and even his dinking. Like, so we're... We're going to have to modify the game plan a tad, and, and uh, I think we'll, uh, we'll be okay, hopefully. Well, guys, here are the Canadian Comeback <laughs> Kids. 11 points in a row at center court here at the Delray Beach Open. Congratulations. Good luck in the next Thank one. You. Look forward to calling that one. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks, Back guys. to you. Pickleball paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. 
Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Pipo Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level. I think it's 120 milligrams. Let me check on that really quick. It's 125. Oh, it's 125 milligrams. UPS or FedEx for this one? FedEx, they deliver on Saturday. It's three minutes on high. It's pound, then the number. Orange evokes energy and vitality. Black shows soft. How does he know all this stuff? Strength. That's what was right. Yellow shows unknowns, things that are unclear. We need to, we need to dive into the yellow more. Happy birthday, Matt. Oh, thanks, Lucy. Oh, wow. And another one. Oh, you shouldn't have. I have one more surprise for you. Okay. Oh, come on. I love it, babe. My favorite paddle is the V520. It's more of a control paddle, which is great for my game because I'm certainly known as more of a defensive player, but it's still great for hitting a hard serve and drive the ball well. From the transition area and from the kitchen, go ahead and drive it at me. I'm ready to block it into the kitchen. I can roll it or I can slice it. Either way, I feel like it's gonna go in. With the soft feel of the paddle, I can dink all day. So go ahead and try it out, dink me. Welcome back to center championship court number one. I'm Lauren McLaughlin with Dave Fleming. You just talked to yes. Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento about their best of the tournament comeback match. That last one against Corinne Carr and Dekel Barr. And uh, no, no rest for the weary no. as they are back here on Championship Court, about to play Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury. And uh, I expect another amazing one, Dave. Yeah, you know, obviously they're riding high. Uh, they, as they said in the, in, in the interview, they were supporting each other even down nine. They said, just let's keep getting one more point. 
they were ready. I asked them, do you want to do the interview or rest? They said, let's go do an interview. Let's talk about this magical little comeback, not little, Holy huge comeback cow. that they had. The other thing that makes them want to rush out onto the court is, guess what? This is the team that knocked them down to the <gasps> oh, consolation they want bracket. Some so, payback. so they were the term they used was salivating about the opportunity oh, to get back that, into that. Drool. So, mm -hmm, so they're mm -hmm. they're excited. Obviously, you know they they didn't feel they played the cleanest start to that other match. <laughs> well, That's, I should think uh, not. <laughs> you know, uh, Mr. Barr was all over the place, um, but they. They found what they wanted, and mm -hmm. you know now. So now you have a confident team jumping right off the court versus a team that has been sitting for a minute. But uh, you know, I, I I talked to Rafa on the way up here real fast, and he's like, I I wasn't planning on him playing anybody till that match was over. I, he knew that yeah. you know comebacks happen in this sport, and mm -hmm. um, so he's ready for a big match. He's excited to play in a big in a big match like this on on the big stage. He deserves it. He's played amazing today. Uh, it, he's been one of the most fun, exciting, dynamic players to watch yep. so far today here in mixed doubles. It is our last day of the tournament. I'm starting to get a little sad as the bracket's winding down. We only have a few more matches left of the day, and then we will say goodbye until uh, the Cincinnati Open in May which is open for registration right now on pickleballtournaments.com. If you want to come join us and say, hey, we would love to see you. But uh, this has just been gorgeous weather, yes. gorgeous venue. It's just, just an gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> it has been such just ideal circumstances for a tournament. Everything's just been run so well by yep. Melissa McCurley, yep. pickleballtournaments.com. Uh, we've had... Amazing volunteers on our camera, getting you guys those close-up shots in between. And uh, I expect another fabulous match here in front of us. Rafa Hewitt, Sarah Ansbury on the near side, serving first to Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon on the far side. One match to 15. Winner goes to the bronze medal match. Oh, that one was well in. Yeah. So I think I think Sarah just kind of needed a. You're like, oh, okay, that was not nearly as far out as I thought it was going to be, or at all. Hewitt just asking for you know if yep. the ref saw it, she she couldn't make a call, so that one is ruled out. Wow, the Canadian train is, the maple syrup is still flowing. It sure is. I mean, after the, you got to be riding high after that comeback they that they are. just had. And it is continuing here as we kick off this uh, essentially consolation bracket final. Good leave by Ansbury there. Yeah, and Catherine just made the motion with her paddle, and if that goes down, it's 4 nothing. Short return, big drive off that head paddle by Steve Deacon, and they've won 15 points in a row, not in two matches, obviously. There goes the streak on a missed return unexpectedly.
It's easy to hit out when you're confident. Catherine's definitely doing that right now. Hewitt pumping up Ansbury there, encouraging her with that good leave. They didn't want to get this too far out of control, though mm -hmm, clearly mm -hmm. comebacks happen in this sport. But, uh, you know, the 4 2 is four much more comfortable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Four, two, one, Parento serving. Mm. Sales just long. You know, Hewitt and Ansbury were, were sitting for a little bit, you know, waiting for the winner of that last match. So Parento and Deacon are still nice and hot from that last match and See if Ansbury and Hewitt settle in here. Hot in many ways. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're getting the, the let cords. They're they're playing with confidence. It's you know they're gonna have to fight back here. Roth has got to get that big game. Get him yelling a little bit mm -hmm. going here. Been real good on letting those yeah. go long. Six two two Deacon serving. Again, short return and Deacon has no problem hitting as hard as he can at Roth. It puts him in a really rough place. Nothing good is gonna come at that other than just blocking it. So mm -hmm. it's a good choice doing it again. Mm -hmm. That was a good volley there. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, we got Steve Deacon yelling now, too. Uh, again, with those attacks, if you can get down, go down, go down with the feet instead of just hitting it hard, that's what set up the winner there. Well done. Oh. I think there was, I think it's Sarah misjudged where Rafa was going on that and kind of started... Yeah, it's hard when right. you're trying to give room and mm -hmm, then mm -hmm. and then suddenly the ball's at your feet. Oh, unbelievable effort. Oh, uh -huh. no. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing you. And of course, uh, we've mentioned before, but just in case you have any misconceptions about Steve Deacon, the young man just turned 47 last yes. week. And uh, he's running those balls down, so his fitness level is clearly in a good place. He's playing yeah. like a young 37, Dave. Yes, and I hope he remembers that he's 37 when he's three years from now. He would never consider playing senior pro. <laughs> You're like, no, don't but do I, it. <laughs> but I digress. I mean, 8-2. So we're talking about 19-2 mm -hmm. to two yep. over the course of two matches. Confident, running things down, dropping them in. Deacon's playing aggressive, driving, driving the thirds when they're setting up a short return. Haven't had a lot of the Rafa show well, yeah, so far. It's true. They've been, uh, uh, they've been able to neutralize that, and that was yep. one of the things in the interview. They said, you know, they praised his amazing play this weekend mm -hmm, as well they should. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
he hasn't been able to get that going because they've been dictating the pace. Even some of the points they've lost, Catherine has had balls on her forehand that she just pushed long. Good job by Sarah to let them mm -hmm. go. So, um, you know, this is a big mountain, doable for mm -hmm. Rafa and Sarah to come back on, but they've got to find a way for Rafa to maybe – drive and go get his own balls uh sarah again setting up like they did when they played before so let's see if they can get that All switched right, around switched ends here steve deacon Catherine parento now on the near court sarah ansbury and rafa hewitt on the far side nine two two parento serving here in our match to 15 the winner goes on to the bronze medal match to take on Lauren Stratman and Patrick Smith. <gasps> that was a miss oh, hit, completely. and that's why she just apologized. Otherwise, that was an amazing, perfectly placed shot, but... Uh, the Tempest Worked Rain out. is a little longer paddle, so uh -huh, if you need a, uh -huh. uh, need a little ad for why that matters, there it was. Oh, Rafa Hewitt is not upset happy. about that. Steve Deacon just fired that missile at him. <laughs> it was going in to oh, the into other section court. Oh, and in section N. There was no the way. way, and Hewitt just reflex reacted, but then just couldn't get his paddle out of yeah. the way quick enough. And uh, the Deacon Parento Canadian train keeps on rolling. It's going to be 12-2. When we come back from this timeout, still on their second serve, this is a make-or-break uh, moment probably for Ansbury and Hewitt to get this side out. I mean, if there's anything that they can do is just look in the, look in the window that looks across the net and see a team that just came back from an mm -hmm. obscene hole and uh, use that as motivation. Just long on that serve return. Hewitt. Something that he's he's not a happy camper. No. Just switch the hat. Maybe that's a rally cap. He went from backwards to forwards. Here we go. 13 2 2. I think it grazed. Oh, it I think did. it grazed her. Ugh. And this is match point here for Deacon and Parento. The train never stopped rolling from their last match. Wow. And 26 to 2 over two matches. That I mean, that was a very quick, decisive match. There was I mean Ansbury and Hewitt never really even got to participate in that match much, unfortunately. But a huge congrats to them. They just played absolutely amazing all day long, put on some unbelievable yes. shows here on Center Court 1 and Center Court 2 on our live streams. But a congrats to Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento, moving on to our bronze medal match for a rematch against uh, Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman. And uh, that winner will, of course, go on to play Ben Johns and Simone Georgim, who are waiting in our gold medal match, which is currently scheduled to air at 5 p.m. Eastern. We might be a little past that by the time we get this bronze underway, but we're going to take a break, guys. Don't go anywhere. Mixed Pro Doubles bronze medal match coming up next.
There we go. Pico Pickleball Paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Pico Pickleball Paddle handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome pickleball paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level. Pickleball is an easy game to play, but it's a difficult game to master. There's so much you can learn from the camp, the correct way to hit a dink, the ball, or the serve. Each skill that we develop within the students' games is then implemented into life play. They can take home easy, simple ways to remember how to execute a shot. Everyone is going to have a great time. It's going to be well worth their while. <laughs> All right, Lauren McLaughlin here, everybody. 
Uh, listen up real quickly. If you are watching on Facebook or YouTube, we just received information after we went to commercial that Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman have withdrawn and they have been awarded the bronze medal as a result. So as it stands, we believe we are getting confirmation about what happened and the timing. Um, we think there might be an injury or something happened uh, to Patrick Smith. We'll find out for sure what's going on. But uh, as it stands, it looks like our bronze medal winners are Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman who have withdrawn. And therefore we have just one match left here on center court one, which will be our pro mixed doubles gold medal match between Ben Johns and Simone Jarjim taking on Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento. We will have to take the stream down at some point because we're gonna bump up into the eight hour time limit on Facebook. So we're just gonna leave it up for now guys. Uh, at, as it stands, I think we're still scheduling our gold medal match for 5 p.m. Eastern, which is in just under an hour. Um, so please stay tuned. Uh, let anybody else know, you know, what the situation is. We'll try and get back on mic and keep you guys informed whatever the case may be about how we're moving forward. Um, and also just a quick note, guys. We know nobody likes to watch commercials and now that we live in an age of streaming where you don't have to deal with them, you know, they're not the best, but also all of those commercials are the reason why you're able to watch this amazing stream for free at home for eight to 12 hours a day, so. We get it, we get it, we're with you. It's not super fun, but we love our sponsors and we love that they support us. And you know, that's how it is. So we appreciate everybody. Uh, we appreciate you guys watching. Please stay tuned. We're just gonna keep it on court here for a minute until we get word about what's going on. We will let you guys know. We will be taking the stream down, uh, I believe. It will still stand that we'll come back with our gold medal match at 5 p.m. Eastern, but I will get confirmation, let you guys know, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks so much for joining us, everybody. All weekend long, of course, it seems like we have one match left here on the stream, so uh, a bittersweet farewell is imminent, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Don't go anywhere, guys. We'll be back.
All right, guys, Lauren McLaughlin here with an update. Open your ears, everybody. Um, so we just got word that they are going to call the bronze medal match. Patrick Smith is going to try to play. Uh, so what's going to happen is they're going to call the match to court. The ref's going to come. She's going to call the score. Patrick Smith is going to call a medical timeout. That's going to give us 15 minutes regardless. Um, so technically, we may be playing a bronze medal match coming up here. It will really depend on if Patrick Smith is able to play. But that's the current plan right now. Most likely what will happen, they're going to call the match to the court. They're going to come. They're going to call the medical timeout. That's probably when we will take the stream down during those 15 minutes. And then we'll see, we'll bring the stream back up. We'll see whether or not, you know, they're able to play or if they do start playing, how long they're able to play for. So s just stay tuned, guys. We, they're all, they're going to call it. We're going to have a medical timeout and then we'll probably be taking the stream dime down during that time. But make sure this is, this is why you guys, you know, subscribe to our YouTube channel, make sure and like, and follow our Facebook page. So that way, when we come back, up with the stream and we're live again you'll get a notification that we're live again and that way you won't miss anything but that is the situation if you're just tuning in guys we're going to call the bronze medal match to center court the referee is going to call the score patrick smith is going to call a medical timeout and then uh, we're going to have that 15 minutes where we'll probably take the stream down we'll bring it back up we will perhaps play our bronze medal match tbd uh and then it looks like we're still gonna have our gold medal match around five dave fleming yes. went to get some more info fill us in if yeah. we're missing anything no so i just talked to pat and lauren uh we we wanted to get just what are the specific things that they can do here so yep so the match has now been officially called so they've taken the court they can play they have to play one point okay and then they will call a medical timeout. Um, Pat's trying to get himself to a point where he can compete here. And uh, Do we, did we find out what what is the situation? Yeah, he's, he's he's struggling with some cramping uh, okay. and some other ailments that I'll I'll leave to to you know that's private with Pat. But yep, uh, yep, yep. Um, he's he's wants to play now. Whether his body is going to enable him, he's got you know got an ice pack on his back. You know, Lauren wants what's best. We all want what's best for Pat Smith, one of the great yep, yep. players and warriors that we have. So that's what's going to happen. You're going to see one point where maybe only Lauren sure. <laughs> is, on does the, anything. Is, uh -huh. is the only one that does anything. You know, maybe he will be able to rally and uh, get in there. But my expectation is we'll see one point and then some sort of medical timeout up right. to 15 minutes. And as I've already mentioned, guys, we will take the stream down momentarily. The YouTube stream, if you guys are watching on YouTube or want to get on to the YouTube stream, that one will continue to stream. That will not come down. It will just keep going. Facebook has a time limit for streaming of eight hours. So during this medical timeout, we're just going to take down the Facebook stream. So if you prefer to watch on Facebook, that's why make sure and like and follow the APP Tour page. You will get a notification when we come back up and are live again. We will hopefully have a bronze medal match. Um, we'll see how it goes, how Patrick Smith is faring. But regardless, that is all the information that we have for you guys. So stay tuned. Uh, we'll, of course, be back on mic here uh, as we do this first point, call the medical timeout. Just remind everybody we're taking the stream down and to come back or pop on over to YouTube. It's a bit a little higher quality over on YouTube. You're able to rewind points if you want live. So that's super cool. So if you haven't thought about going over on YouTube and watching there instead, it's APP TV is our YouTube channel. Uh, subscribe to that if you haven't yet. But uh, we're just going to mute our mics here real quick as some players are hitting a little as we get this going here but we wanted to always make sure you guys are well informed of what's going on and communicate with you guys so don't go anywhere guys we 
regardless, have our gold medal match coming up for sure. We'll have maybe a bronze medal, maybe not. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully we will. Hopefully Pat Smith's able to play. Uh, and this 15-minute medical timeout will give him enough uh, recovery time to kind of get back in a good place. But uh, we'll keep you guys posted. Don't go anywhere.
All right, quick update, everybody. Uh, it does not look like Pat's going to be able to play. Um, we're just getting confirmation of that. So uh, please stay tuned. We might just be taking the stream down with no attempt at a bronze medal match. Uh, and then we'll just be waiting for the gold medal match. We're getting confirmation right now, though. So stay tuned.
turn the other way. Let's, I gotta turn the other way. All right, Lauren McLaughlin back with an update, everybody. Thank you for being so patient and staying with us. Um, so if you're just joining in or you've been waiting, uh, we were waiting on our bronze medal match. We were uh, lots going on. Essentially, Patrick Smith is dealing with just 
an extraordinary level of cramping and what comes with that. So unfortunately, Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman will not be able to play in the bronze medal match. So they are our bronze medal winners. And um, everyone feel free to send, you know, Pat Smith and Lauren Stratman messages of uh, congratulations for just an incredible day that they had. Uh, this, of course, is not how they wanted to end their day here. But our bronze medal winners are Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman. We will not have our bronze medal match at all. We're going to take the stream down here momentarily. Uh, very shortly, however, we are still having our gold medal match at 5 p.m. Eastern as scheduled. That will be Ben John, Simone Jarjim taking on Rafa Hewitt. And, oh, sorry. I'm so, I'm so frazzled right now. I'm so sorry. Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento uh, will be taking on Ben Johns and Simone Jarjim in our gold medal match coming up in just about half an hour. Um, again, if you're watching on YouTube, that stream will not go down at all. We're just going to keep that one up live and running. So there's basically just going to be nothing going on on the YouTube stream for about half an hour. Make sure and come back at five. That is when our gold medal match is going to be taking place. But our Facebook stream will go down uh, momentarily. So make sure you're liking and following our page to get notified when we come back up and are live again. Uh, or switch over to YouTube, our YouTube page. I think someone put the link in the comments on Facebook. So thank you so much for being patient and staying with us, guys, while we we're trying to figure out what's going on. So we're going to take the stream down. We'll take a really quick break, guys. We're going to be back with our gold medal match, Simone Jarjim, Ben Johns taking on Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon. It will be our last match of the tournament. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be a great one. Thanks, guys.
Yeah. Welcome Welcome back, back, everybody. The moment you have been waiting for our gold medal mixed pro doubles match is next. I am Lauren McLaughlin, Dominic Catalano back in the studio along with Dave Fleming. It has been an absolute pleasure all weekend long, guys. We have one match left. It is our gold medal match. All the marbles. We have Simone Jarjim and Ben Johns. They are taking on Steve Deacon and Catherine Parentau. And uh, a bit of a, you know, a sad ending for Patrick Smith and Lauren Stratman, our bronze medal winners. They were not able to play to get back into this gold medal match. Uh, Patrick Smith, unfortunately, had to withdraw due to some serious cramping issues and other stuff related to that. So a big congrats to them and a shout out for all their hard work today. They played absolutely amazing and... Uh, Hopefully they can feel proud of, uh, you know, the work that they did. But gold medal coming up here, guys. Break us down just a tiny bit about both these teams and what we're about to see. Uh, so we have coming out of the winner's bracket undefeated on the day is Simone Jarjim and Ben Johns. Um, have been tested a little bit today, um, which is nice to see. Um, but obviously our number one seeds in this, they will be the number one seed anywhere they go. <laughs> at the moment because yep. they are the reigning number one team in mixed doubles. So um, look to them to take advantage of their power um, and Ben's presence uh, all over the court. And Simone, obviously the number one female player as well, she does her job when she plays with Ben and she loves it because Ben, she always says, hey, I just let the young guy take over. And uh, he does what he does and she just uh, basically cleans everything else up. So. Um, Look out for them. Obviously, our number one seed and coming out of the winner's bracket undefeated so far. And then, uh, Dave, why don't you break down uh, Steve Deacon and Catherine Parento? Well, I'll tell you what. You want to talk about heat. These two are on freaking yeah. fire. They have won, ladies and gentlemen, 26 of the last 28 points they've played. Yeah, that wasn't uh, – I uh -huh. didn't mess up my math. That's not made up. Nope. No. Nope. That's a They real were down 13-4 came back in that epic match against Carr and Barr and then played brilliantly again against Rafa Hewitt and Sarah Ansbury. So the Canadian comeback kids are ready to go, and I think what they've found is the ability to take each other and continually pump each other up. When they were in that big hole, they knew they'd made some errors. They knew that if they could find their game. And what is that, you might ask? Well, you've got Catherine, who's not afraid to rip it at anybody, but can play phenomenal defense as well. And then you've got Steve Deacon, whose backhand is one of the best in our pro game. Their hands are terrific. They're going to want to slow this down, not get involved with Ben as best they can. That's easier said than done. But they're going to want to bounce the ball. And then when they've got a chance to fire, fire at Simone, who plays wonderful defense. But... Uh, they have every chance in this, and they can't be more confident right now. So this is going to be fantastic. You've got, obviously, we saw Catherine and Simone play singles a couple days ago. They played together. So these, these two have been involved in a whole mess of gold, as has Ben Johns. And, of course, Steve Deacon was a medalist as well yesterday. So you got the cream of the crop. It is a gorgeous day. I can't wait to see what happens. Beautiful. One match left to play here on the stadium court surrounded by fans here at the Delray Beach Tennis Center. It's been an absolute amazing day. But guys, don't take, don't take my word for it. Let's uh, roll some of the footage of today.
what a day, guys. Unbelievable. And we could not carry on without a special couple of thank yous to all the people behind the scenes who make this entire thing possible for you guys at home here on site. A massive thank you, of course, to Boxcar Productions putting on this entire production and this live stream, making it happen. Kyle Salinko, Randy Coleman, Steve Taylor, just putting in all the grunt work, all of the cameras, that video Steve Taylor put together. A big thank you, of course, to Morgan Evans, Ari Shanock, who are our commentators on Court 2. Spencer, who is... Uh, just the coolest kid ever running the production on court two. So a big thank you to him for even making that second court possible and just doing an amazing job. Of course, we have Blake and George, our two volunteer camera people who are giving you all those close-up shots in between. So we couldn't do it without this amazing group of people in the booth, behind the scenes, putting on this production for you guys at home, trying to make it the absolute highest quality, highest value for you guys. Of course, a big thank you to all of our sponsors. North Point Bank is our title sponsor here at the Delray Beach Pickleball Open. Papico Sports and Head Pickleball are presenting sponsors. And of course, all of our amazing sponsors as well. Our vendors here on site, our food trucks keeping us fed as we are just cruising through these days our referees led by byron frezzo they have just done a tremendous job and uh a big thank you all the volunteers ken herman of course running these amazing app tour events but guys the main event is finally here you've put in the time ding, you've put in ding. the work and ding. thank you so much for joining us what's that from i don't know <laughs> Kyle. <laughs> the truck with he the dynamite knows, drop he in. knows all of it. <laughs> all right, guys. We're about to kick off our pro mixed doubles gold medal match. Last match of the day. Wrapping it up. Hopefully you guys have been watching all day and are excited for the culmination of today's events. Simone Jargine, Ben Johns on the far side serving to Catherine Parento and Steve Deacon. 0-0-2, game one. Ben has arrived and ready to go, already yeah, attacking yeah. that right shoulder of Deacon. Oh, oh Ben, uh, she, ben blocked her. <laughs> she hit Ben in the behind. We've seen a couple we, of I that know. today. That's yes. uh, It's an odd thing so to have Lauren Stratman see blocked, one of them. Little blocked one of Pat Smith's shots. Corinne Carr pegged Dekel Barr. Yeah. Wow. I, I love when Ben does that, yes. too. He winds up here. Watch his paddle, everybody. Winds way back in. I'm going there. Deacon thought he was going cross court. Zero, one, two. Oh, a little long. I mean, Had a bit of a break here before yeah. the gold medal match. So uh, both these teams are kind of going to have to get back in the groove, warm up, feel each other out a little, get back in game mindset. Oh my! God. Are you serious? Um, As you can tell, a little bit ben, of a wind, a ben little wind in happening here. Gold medal Ben mode. It's in right gold now. medal lob mode. And that's what his movement forces there. You you know right. you got to keep it away from that big forehand in the middle, and then you push it just too far. Bob Swiss helm. Our main referee here for our gold medal match. All right, Deacon and Parento, a little, little wound tight, yeah. it would seem. Uh, they just got to settle back in here. Four 
402. Jarjean serving. Again. Interesting. I mean, the lob has been here all day, and that was, you saw the flick of the wrist there. That was a topspin lob. Is that uh, Ben Johns or Stephanie Wayne? <laughs> no. <laughs> What's up, Steph? 502. She's at home loving this right now. Oh. Can't believe he missed that, but a heck of a start for those two. Now, the comeback kids have seen a much bigger deficit than this, so let's see if they can rein it in a little bit. A little ambitious yes. there from Steve Deacon. Trying to get five points back on yeah. one. Is there a five pointer? <laughs> <laughs> Not a rock and jock. <laughs> Remember that? Yes, that was <laughs> awesome. All right, and of course, you know, Parento and Deacon thought they had another match to play first before this one, so uh, they had to kind of change their mindset and mentality knowing that they were going straight into the gold now. Simone pulling the trigger yeah. there uh, off the low backhand. 6-0-1, Johns and Jarjean in trouble. Oh. Good spot by Deacon. That's all set up from Catherine uh -huh. Parento going behind yes. Ben, causing the pop-up. Goodness, let's, oh, look at that. Ernie from Ben that rolls mm. over the net. Some bird. Ben with there. the bird. Ben the with Bert. the bird in front of Simone. Wow. It's almost a dink bird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there oh it is. that nice. is gorgeous. That two handed backhand pulled it right behind Ben Johns, right into the back corner. All right, Parento and Deacon need to put some points on the board here, get off zero. That's a heartbreaking point to lose when they uh, both wow. pulled a ball off their ankles that was cracked and just and didn't leave an attackable ball out. Tremendous defense. On the board here. Yep. One seven two. Let's see if they can just put a couple together, gain some confidence. She usually defends with two hands there and just went with a one handed flick, couldn't quite get it through the wind. Just pure dictation of what they want this entire time, and then Ben is taking over at the kitchen line. Eight one one. Deacon comes out on top <laughs> of that firefight. Some quick hands. They got to keep that going. Eight one two. Simone Georgine serving. Just a shade late yep. getting there from Deacon. The 
the spot that he oh. hits right there Perfect. is ridiculous. I mean, he's splitting them 50-50 down the middle and making either one of them if they go for it off the end. A very quick game point on the line here. Wow. And game one, 11-1. Ben Johns and Simone Jarjim. We're going to take a quick break, guys, and we'll be right back with game two. Practice makes perfect, right? My name is Morgan Evans, and I have to tell you that practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes progress. That's why we've created Coach Me Pickleball. At Coach Me Pickleball, you'll find an extensive and growing library of lessons on topics covering every aspect of pickleball for every level of player. For one small monthly fee, you'll get access to every video in our library with new content added every month. Check out CoachMePickleball.com to sign up for a free seven-day membership. Back Eric, Eric to the Lang's action. Five, Eric Lang. 500 times. <laughs> I know. Everyone, that glitch on Facebook that makes it so it's like, mention someone that's watching like 30 times. <laughs> so <laughs> annoying. All right. So that was maybe one of the quickest game ones in gold medal history. 11-1, um, <laughs> yep. our first game here of the gold medal match, Simone Jarjean right there, Ben Johns making quick work of Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento. Uh, it was about an eight minute game there. So Deacon and Parento, we've switched ends. They're on the far side now. Starting us off, 0, zero 2 Let's see uh, if they were able to there we go. chat during this, the time between game ones and uh, make it a little more interesting here in game two. They've already got as many points. Oh. Oh. Deacon boy. will not miss that one very often. No. Exactly what they wanted to be have been up yeah. 2 0 and a serve. It's just Ben speeds up your game just a little bit. And you're either a little late or hesitant, and errors happen. He just, just makes you wants. think too much, right? Yeah, get in your head a little the bit, start overthinking things, or try to make it too perfect, and that's when mistakes happen. The old saying is don't think you can only hurt the ball club. <laughs> yes. Right, Kyle? That's a great read yeah. there from Catherine. She oh read yeah. that one she very well. She was waiting. She you can see it. it. Look at her. She, she turned her body that. beforehand. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Deacon called it wind. out. It ended up landing. Yeah. The wind kept it in. On yep. the line. Parento did a great job of listening to her partner, <laughs> though, and <laughs> letting that go. Just unfortunately, stayed in. 3 1 2. The lobs are back in town. <laughs> I mean. I mean, we're going to see a just huge surge of lobs all <laughs> right. of a sudden. Well, Simone and Ben do it. I know, right? And people say the pros never lob. Nice hands by yeah. Deacon. So I think my thing is, is that if Deacon and Parento are going to get back in this, they really need to focus on Simone. Yes. Um, that's what uh, earlier on we saw with Pat Smith and Lauren. And it yep. was successful for them, kept them in the game. But this trade and blows with uh, Ben Johns, just, you know, you're going to be put on the canvas yeah. every time. It's like going toe to toe in the center of the ring with Tyson. Good luck. 
Mike, not MacGuffin, just to be clear. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. I, I, I should say Mike Tyson. Well, I mean, that might be tough, too. Uh, he Tyson would. McGuffin. That's a wrestler. He would right. definitely mess you that's up. That's true. Four, one, one. The Deacon listen. Deacon and Parento need to get off one. <laughs> that is going to, it's a bad taste from game one. Uh, score of 11 1. They need to, they need to at least. Put a couple more points on the board here. There, there it is, right there. Yep. You know, push that sideline, keep it a foot in over there, and involve Simone. them kind of knew yeah, so they called it what in. call to make. Ugh, uh, it, it, it looked wide, it but they, they know, weren't sure. They right. weren't sure. It happened super fast. Uh, and that can happen. So point goes to Deacon and Parento. But yeah. these points are much better. Right, mm -hmm. correct, much mm -hmm. better right now. Now, do I think they should go at Simone? Yes. Do I think you should get into a firefight with Simone? No. Right. Oh, oh no. We have a... The water cooler is yes. leaking, and it is starting to make its way towards the yes. court in that corner. That's why we have two referees. Oh, oh God, it's oh. almost to the court. Yep. Someone's coming in with Squeegee. You got to get on the court. On the court with Squeegee. Oh, my. Didn't even see that. That's a, that that's is a broom. That is not good. But, yeah, that's, well, there we go. Wow. It is perfectly sunny, folks, so don't worry. This is yep. not uh, a... Yep, uh, yep. Isolated, tiny thunderstorm <laughs> here <laughs> in Florida. <laughs> Which happened just over that corner of the court <laughs> so it uh, it it's warm it's too. sunny once yes. we get it all spread out that'll dry up real quick Shouldn't and i can tell issue. you this is good news for Catherine and steve just settle well, this whole thing Catherine down. and steve over there b at before that match deacon over there pulled the plug oh he might <laughs> have <laughs> like there's Sabotage. a slow leak. yeah just like <laughs> let's let's we're going to play about five points, and then there's going <laughs> to just... There's going to be a convenient break yes. in the game. How can we cool off Ben? I have an idea. <laughs> 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 and I'll use the cooler. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> just to be Too clear, funny. that did not happen, but it's no. fun, to fun to talk jokes. about. Jokes. We got jokes, guys. Thank you again for watching, guys. I'm Lauren McLaughlin, Dominic Catalano, and Dave Fleming. We've been with you all weekend long. Uh, we love spending this time with you guys at home watching. We love doing this. It's so exciting for us to be able to watch these amazing matches. Hopefully you can hear our excitement and enthusiasm as we're commentating throughout the matches. But uh, we love hearing from you guys at home, watching your comments, and uh, rooting on your favorite players. So thank you so much for joining us all weekend here. Stop number two of 18 for 2021 on the app tour so we have many many more to come so we hope you will join us the whole time blake finishes playing right oh. on the camera blake back on the camera Unbelievable. what a guy what a guy all right we're back two four two catherine parento serving oh great get <laughs> oh, all right. Yes. Let's watch. Yes, uh, more, please. 
Uh, that was the shot that got a scream out of Simone. Yep. The cooler strategy worked <laughs> to perfection, Deacon. Played Good job. perfectly. Good job, Stevie D. Three, four, two. Oh, a uh, little overextended himself yeah. there. But he's he's picking That's the. I, I like yep. it. He's yep. picking the right spots. He's mm -hmm, keeping mm -hmm. it on that backhand, which is so effective. I mean, he's as we've said all day, he's got one of the best backhand, both attacks and blocks. And you know, you're right here at three four now, and four three servers. And you're watching him move to. When he's moving at the kitchen line, it's laterally. Yes, he's yes. keeping that chest to the ki square up to the net. Doing a great job up there. It's he baits you. He yeah. will goes down there knowing you're going to come back in the middle and is three points ahead to to win it. The great point construction by Ben. Five three two. Ben John serving here in game two of our gold medal match. Great little attack at about fifty percent yes. from Simone Jarzim right there. They're thinking she's going to kind of reset that, and she just a little slight attack. Causes to miss it and double up their lead. I did not see Steve Deacon putting a paddle in there on that. I, I saw Catherine hitting that one, and then all of a sudden, there's Deacon. It's it's that sliding out there with the backhand. Where's it going to go? You're not sure, and then fire comes on the next one. They got to get this stopped. Wow. Time out here. Cooler. To find another cooler. Mm -hmm. It's geo time. Yeah, it's now or. It it is I now don't or never. I don't want to say never, but it's, uh, it's got to be now, or G -E -A -U -X. right? G-E-A-U-X. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. That'll help. It's very unexpected. TPs on both sides. Uh, she's there. And it's she and just it's the actual <sighs> post. Yeah, it was in instead it was of coming a little more to the middle. It's the dreaded just HTP. They gotta, they gotta keep this going. Five eight two, Parento serving. All right, got a few back yeah. there. A couple now this is up. this is a key hold here. Eight, five, two Deeper holds. Critical. Two holds, and you got a good. Momentum builder. Ooh. There's one. One Ooh. that she got away with. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. sure. But you know. Risky. Risky. Oh, oh, something on the court. Get back on this zealous insole. Yes. <laughs> Rough mat. Stay nice and cushy. Nice. The Critical hold. hold. Yeah. Critical hold for Deacon and Parento if they want any chance of taking this to a game three. Five, eight, one. It's 
Excuse me, Bob. I'm going to cut right in front yeah. of you. Gee. Pardon me. I, I would like to borrow your zealous pad for <laughs> I'm zealous of your pad, so I'd like to use it. Oh, Dave. Yep. Here we are. I'm so excited for the people to see our first date that we went on, Dave Fleming. <laughs> Laughter abounded. Yep. If you're falling away trying to defend with the one handed cuts, just never going to make it. Got to stay down on that, which she normally does. This is, again, Dom, it's <laughs> got to stop from here. Yeah. With no points on the last opportunity, just as crucial. Well, wait, did you, did you hear Simone on the one lob? Simone goes, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, no. Ben Thanks shaking his head. He's like, that was the Simone Jargim highlight reel of defense, and then he rolled a backhand in the net. Mm. Well, one. Oh, no. Oh, jeez. Phenomenal hands. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I just So I'm in the Woo. middle I'm in the middle guys of these two over here. <laughs> I got Dave nudging me with his right elbow. Uh -huh. Lauren grabbing like my <laughs> arm like this during that whole point. <laughs> it's incredible. so fun to we share this. We, we don't have a lot of space. We don't have a lot of space. <laughs> it was awesome. Oh goodness gracious. All right, well. Unbelievable display going on right now in game two. Much better than our game one that was over before we knew it. 11-1. Uh, Deacon and Parento putting up a fight this game two with some unbelievable points, unbelievable exchanges. And, uh, the, I mean, they got to keep it rolling. We need a game three. Let's hope the net wants a game three again because when it did before, we got one. Just saying. All right, we're back. Nine five two. We desperately needed side out. Did not happen. We've seen that a couple times yeah. there. Ooh. Deacon getting to that spot. It is match point oh and no. the it. gold medal. Ugh, unfortunately, Deacon and Parento put up. Quite a fight, and uh, unfortunately, could not make it happen. So, a big congrats, gold medal winners, Ben Johns, Simone Jarjim, with a score of 11-5. A much, a much closer 11-5 than it would seem. You know, um, it has just been. What a match. Congrats to both these teams. Steve Deacon, Catherine Parento, our silver medal winners. Patrick Smith, Lauren Stratman, our bronze medal winners here in our mixed doubles pro event. And that's it. That's it for us, guys. We, we're, not, we're not leaving quite yet. We're going to take a quick sponsor break, guys. We'll be right back to wrap it up. Bye, Natalie. I got it. Oh, man. Thanks, Arena. And that's how you did it, Patrick. Ah, oh, cramping. 
Pick a ball cocktail. Thank you. Oof. Oof. We need a new sound guy. Are you kidding me? Oh, I got some. Enjoy. Huh? New people pickleball paddles have passed USAPA testing, which means our paddles are approved for sanctioned tournament play. Because of graphite's stiff nature, the ball does not sink into it, so it's easier to direct the ball, providing fantastic ball placement. New Pipo Pickleball Paddle Handle is perforated, sweat absorbent, and cushioned to allow for a better paddle grip for long-time play without fatigue. The edge guard maintains the integrity of the paddle and provides a covering to open the honeycomb interior. Awesome Pickleball Paddle for both beginners and players ready to take their game to the next level.